Hello everybody, welcome back to GSR's speedrun world circuit here today. We have a 16 star live time attack event here with some of the incredible runners in the Super Mario 64 community. Yeah, this is going to be one heck of a, a contest here, part of the world record circuit that's going on. And uh, I know last event was wild. We saw almost world records. We saw people beating their own, their PBs. It, it was absolutely intense. So I fully expect that again here today. All right, and as you can see, we have our runners here. Slippery Nip, Ouija, Trey Bordo, Flixer, Green Suiji and Cheese. Unfortunately, um, Tago was being held up at work today. He'll be an hour late or so, but he will be able to participate. He'll be coming home and taking uh, place as soon as he gets in, and we'll get him in. But for now, these are the runners that we've got. Uh, Meter, how are we feeling today? I'm feeling really good. I'm really excited to be here. I am excited to see these guys play. I have been a speedrun fan for an absurdly long time. I've, I've watched Cheese for probably a decade, and now to, to be here in the booth with you, Anime and Colin, this is, is massively exciting to me. Um, how, how about you? How are you doing today? I'm, I'm pretty hyped, you know? I was originally, um, I wanted to be able to get in, but I originally had work today. Um, but I was able to get it off, and, you know, I saw we still needed one more commentator, and I'm like, yo, I'm in. I, I very much enjoy commentating Super Mario 64, Super Mario Odyssey. So having a live event like this with just these top names and top players, it's it's going to be one hell of an event. It definitely is. I mean, when you're talking the best in the world, you're talking the people that we're watching right now. You have the top three times in the in the world in 16 star here. You have the 70 star record holder. You have the 120 star record holder. Um, it, it's absolutely incredible uh, to have the the runners that we do available to play in this format. We get to watch eight hours of seven, maybe eight hours of, uh, of amazing content. Um, something's always going to be going on. Yeah, that's right. As you mentioned, this is seven hours, but um, with the event being put on by Urban Arts here graciously sponsoring us, if we are able to uh, reach a $750 donation goal. This event will be extended by another hour for today. And who wouldn't want to see another hour of these incredible Mario 64 speedrunners? I could not agree more. And of course it all goes to a good cause. So that's what we're here today for. So we watch these guys getting some practice in. Cheese, uh, getting that, that BLJ going, uh, making sure he can hit that quickly because that a lot of times that can be a, a win or a loss right there by just what happens on that final staircase yeah there's i can't tell you how many runs that i've seen just straight up <laughs> die to the lblj specifically on the 50 star door that sigh made it sound like maybe that was a, a personal how many runs have <laughs> been lost <laughs> uh, you know i've definitely lost a few runs on the stairs but uh i've seen i've seen so many pacers yeah yeah I, absolutely um i mean when you're talking i, I want to talk green suiji for a second if, if i may while we're waiting for these guys to, to start one of these bad boys up he, obviously the current world record holder for 16 star 1448 is cracked as heck uh and that was seven months ago and then got a 1450 in a, in the uh double down tournament back in july two seconds off of pb literally he would he, he's he would be in second place right now if he wasn't already in first uh absolutely hey, insane he also holds the no lblj uh or uh record 1528 um three times 16 star winner uh all in 2021 and he holds a whole bunch of uh co-op first place records as well as super mario 64 on online so um absolutely incredible resume there uh, you know, three times with the 16 star, four times with the Noel BLJ 16 star uh, across all platforms, and the only one to hold the world record since 2021 when he got it four times consecutively. Um, so, it, absolutely incredible. This guy is came out of nowhere and uh, doesn't look like he's going away anytime soon. 
Not at all. Green Suiji just absolutely exploded into the speedrunning scene, and it's just incredible. I 100%. 100%. Uh, we got Slippery Nip on the, on the big screen here as we get the head for the Lakitu skip. Very nice dive skip. That was. That's, those are not easy to get when you're first practicing, but these guys have done these things so many times now. It's second nature to them. Both in the it looks like we're going to... Yeah. Um, Trey Bordo looks like he also was able to get the dive skip just now as well. Right, everybody uh, getting through Lakitu so far. Um... I think Suiji's gonna, gonna be dropping in here shortly. We head through Dark World pretty pretty cleanly. You know, Slippery Nip on the big screen here, not really a, a slouch, in, slouch himself. None of, the, none of the guys here could that could be said about. 16 star, two times he's held it, 2020 and 2021. Um, and that's a 1450 right now, second place in the category. And that was three months ago we landed that. Ooh, slip with the double first in Dark World. Super nice to see. 1.3 off of his 1450. Absolutely incredible. Just wild. The amount of the amount of consistency that these runners have because they have been grinding and grinding and grinding. It's just it's incredible to watch. It really is. I expect real big things from, uh, I'm expecting Slippery Nip to, to kind of come up with something big here, um, here today. I know at Double Down, he, uh, he ended up with a 15-17. That is not a, not a bad time. Uh, but for him, you know, 20 seconds off your PB, when everyone else was playing less than 10 seconds off their PB or beating their PB, um, it, just the level of competition we have here is going to push these guys to to really, really play at their best possible ability. And we see our first runner here getting into Womps. Slip with Ouija very close behind. Looks like... Uh... Might be having a little issues with Trey over there, but no worries about that. Slip, missing salt. Gonna be going for the texture backup. Interesting. There you go. Oof. Trying to back up the texture with the camera already changed, Sheriff. It's, it's a little difficult, so, you know, absolute props to Nip for doing that. Made a little sink for uh, Nip and Oh! Here. here they go. Nice. You love, you love to see a good sink when you're in a race setting. <laughs> Makes it's like, really oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice cannon Both list. runners getting a very good double jump owl list there. And looks like we've got Flixer into Womps as well, and Cheese. Green Suiji going to be finally taking out Bowser on this attempt here. We'll soon be joining the others in Womps Fortress. Early on in the run, typically when you're, you know, grinding world record like these guys do, seeing a lot of a lot of early resets, but um, get, get, you have a lot of time here today. You have, uh, you know, you're, you're talking hours and hours of playing. Uh, what what would be the uh, your preferred method when it comes to something like this? Is that a start out early and get a really good run going before you actually finish one or kind of get one out of your system early? Uh, I know for myself, personally, what I would probably want to do is at least get one run done, just so I'll have a time on the board, and then I'll have something to just kind of reference and be like, okay, I can get better. So here's my reference time. This is the time I'm shooting for. And does that mean you have a, a kill switch time of some sort? Exactly, yeah. That way you have a kill switch time for yourself. Ooh, there we go. Slipper Nip getting a Shy Guy list there. Very nice. VG did not. Fly Guy list, correction. Getting, uh, getting the backup here. I oh, have seen on this watch many a time having missed, uh, missed original Fly Guy or Fly Guy list. It's like Flixer's in as well. And Cheese all in. That's a cell. 
Team Suiji pausing out. Probably gonna get a reset here. Anyway. Very nice comma plus there from Ouija. Flicks are lining up for one as well. Looking good. And he's in. Very nice. Beautifully done. Yeah, we see cheese. Cheese landing on the fly guy. Not going to be doing fly like this here. Still very clean movement to grab that star as we see slip. Now heading into L L L L L L L L L. The more L's, the better. Yeah, first runner to do so. It'll be interesting to see what the first time put up, the first official time is going to be. Who's going to set the pace for the tournament happening over the next two days? Luigi missing a coin. Losing a little bit of time there. She's now heading in as well, taking a ground pound for luck. Excellent, and it looks like we do have a donation here to the Urban Arts Program from Cal Shar. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. As you all can see, as we mentioned, we do have a goal today. If we can reach our $750 donation goal for the Urban Arts program, uh, this stream will be extended another hour. And that means more top level Mario 64 action for y'all. Oh, slip. Getting a little too much speed there and just missing the star. Interesting. That's uh, these guys have have practiced all of these so so many times. They, the amount of runs they've done is absolutely unconscionable. But still, if, when it comes down to execution, at the end of the day, there's going to be mistakes here and there, and uh, saw one right there. Yeah, this is 16 star, no LBLJ is no slouch of a category, especially at these top times that they have. It is a very difficult speed run. Yeah, when you're talking top times being so, so close and so few people having ever hit a sub 15, uh, it's seven people, I believe. It's incredible. Uh, actually, maybe five. I think Suiji has three separate times. Uh, on the leaderboards. Oh, slip with the C upslide in the Hazy Maze Cave. Also known as the GTM slide for those of you out there. <laughs> oh, Ouija Ooh, missing the up. left side emergency exit. And getting trolled. Oh, not good Boulder RNG. Slip with the save and quit! <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that is immediately putting Ouija in the lead here between these two. Huh, I'm wondering, is he doing a, a no reset for his first run? Just clock in the time, get all of the uh, kinks out, and start from there because we don't get a reset. It might be. I mean, I personally, I love that idea. I think that's... I think that's very smart. Ah, this... Uh, these tournaments typically do open up with those with those no resets. We are getting getting word that's the case here. Starting off with a a no reset run across the board. Everyone clock a time, get the get the nerves out, and show chat what a full run looks like, start to finish. Yeah, the first run of the day can always be uh, really nerve wracking. So mm -hmm. definitely good to just kind of you know let the Mario flow, let the Mario move as you play. Get all that energy out. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're just starting here first run, but we've seen these guys uh, do this before. The same cast and crew back at Double Down uh, on the 8th through the 10th of July this year and saw some amazing times there. I'm interested in what you believe and what chat believes is going to be 
the person to walk away today alone with the best time? Who you guys got? Who do you think is going to have the best time here today? You know, I'd have to say probably my personal guess would be any one of the runners who've been just very, very consistent with their 16 star grinding recently. Um, Slip, definitely always a top contender. Uh, and again, as we've mentioned before, Green Suiji, absolutely no slouch. Yeah, I know Flexer's been been coming up hot uh, on the tail of people. You know, just uh, just eight months ago, clocking the 1521, getting into the top 20 there, and uh, making really making some moves. Uh, and of course, you know you have you have cheese on the board, the, the clutch king. The, what do you, you you can't count him out at any second of the day. Uh, but Ooh. nice chip clip there from Ouija. Ouija being the 70 star first place holder right now. You know, third place in in 16 star, um, second in one star, 45 star, 31 star. Uh, second in 10x cannon list, a, a kind of an extension there. Held two times 16 star world record holder 2018 2021. 16 star VC world record holder and 70 star world record holder. Um, still holding that record today. Uh, the guy across the board, no matter what category he's running, is just getting top times, showing that he. Mario is Mario 64 is just a game he is absurdly good at. My uh my boldest prediction here, slippery nap, is at some point very soon going to pick up a uh, another world record. He's right on the tails, and he did it in 2020, 2021. So far, he's averaging once a year since 2020. And, uh, 2022's just over half over, so still plenty of time. Both Slippery Nip and Ouija here having some good fire seas. We see them both on the Bowser throw. Ouija getting that clean first throw out. Got a, a couple of questions here in chat. Uh, how many hours are they playing for each day? Um, so many. West Dog with so, the exclamation so point format. Uh, that's why <laughs> seven. And then if we hit the 750, we get an extra hour added. So we get an eighth hour, and that's today and tomorrow. Um, and then another question asking why at Double Down we have the same people we do here. This is part of the world record circuit. So these guys are doing this. Um, every month they're running and they'll be doing so again in the near future and then uh, the next in-person event is going to be at glitch regen in uh, at the end of september um, in maryland with a three thousand dollar prize pool there and a bunch of other things happening a lot of smash happening down there so uh, that's why we're seeing the same people it's because they're they're part of this circuit and you know they said they don't mind because they're all swag and i think that's very well stated Ouija getting at some very awesome uh, um, BLJs and already into the sky here. Slippery Nip trying to close in that gap and get a little closer. Um, while Ouija's going through Dark World here, we do indeed have another donation from uh, Wes, West Dog. Thank you very much for that donation. Uh, with a little note there, it says, I love 16 Star almost as much as I love Enemy Arcade. And Wes, <laughs> I, I feel that's a little blasphemous. You have held one of the best 16 star tournaments in the world. I don't think, I don't think you could love 16 star less. <laughs> Final Bowser here for Ouija. First throw, very successful. Slippery Nip and Cheese and Flexer all in final Bowser here. All these guys pretty darn close to each other. Looks like Slip unfortunately took a death while I was looking away at the donations. And Luigi, gonna be closing out his first run here. Cheese having a little bit of trouble on the elevators. <laughs> and that's gonna be our first time for this event today, Ouija with a 1537.32.
not. She is yeah. now on the back of fight. Good first throw here. For a no reset, 15:37. You'll, you'll take that as your first run of the day. You got a lot of a long way to go. You got the rest of the day, a lot of opportunities. So now uh, let the resets begin. Beams with very very clean Bowser throws here. Slipper nip, not too far behind. Looks like Cheese is also going to be finishing with a 15 as well. That's going to be a 15-51. Flixer also on throws. Oh, I'm going to be missing one. Unfortunate. It's like Slip going to be finishing with a 16-34. Flixer finally landing that last throw here on Bowser. Going to be having times. Uh, Tago and Green Suiji going to be ne the people needing times at the moment as uh, Suiji pulling up Usamune for something. Flixer ending with a 16.30 as his first run of the day. As you can see at the bottom, the times will be updated as PB, or, well, maybe PBs, but as <laughs> runs are finished, times will be updated. It seems like every time we have one of these tournaments, no matter what the game is, when you put this many people in, together who are inarguably the best in the world at this game, you're going to end up walking away with some really tight times and with some a lot of the time, some world uh some pbs you know they were two at double down um and then uh you know 33 seconds separated everybody that's incredible that is absolutely wild that is very very tight runs all right as we see everybody here at the beginning you know, waiting for Lakitu to go through. I'm just going to quickly talk about our sponsor on the tournament, Urban Arts, a program that offers the multi-year college prep program to underprivileged students in New York, teaching them both the arts and technology of video game design, prepare them for college and careers in tech gaming. It's thanks to this, uh, these great, amazing people that we we're able to hold an event like this. And, you know, they're doing some great work out there. Uh, uh, yeah. Can't thank him enough. Can't thank him enough. Urban Arts has sponsored many, many tournaments here for uh, Global Speedrun, and we appreciate them a lot. Yeah, it's a, a, absolutely a great cause. I definitely highly suggest. And on top of that, we have the incentive. Seven, we hit 750. We'll be extending that uh, this tournament by an extra hour here today. We get an extra hour of all these guys playing. Uh, some Mario 64 16 stuff, and that's extremely exciting. All right, it looks like we're going to be going on a quick break here as these runners are moving and grooving. Um, sit tight, we will be back. This tournament's going to be here all day. We're not going to be going anywhere. Urban Arts helped prepare me for college by giving me a lot of experiences working both independently and collaboratively with other people to make really cool games and taught me how to put my all into creative projects and that helped me put together a very strong portfolio for college. The best part about being in the urban arts community is the people that you meet. A lot of the people here are have the same interests as me, so in the future, making friends here will benefit me and them and everyone around because we all benefit from each other by gaining skills that other people had that I may need. Urban arts helped me see myself differently by showing me that I can be a good leader. In the studio program, I was assigned the role as project manager, and fulfilling that role for the first time actually helped me realize that I have good leadership skills, and it really helped me to develop them.
All right, everybody, and welcome back from our short break to the 16th Star Tournament, once again being held here at the Global Speedrun Association. As you can see, Ouija coming up hot green out of Dark World here. Oh, but gosh, poor timing. I am so sorry, Caster's Curse. <laughs> Absolute worst way to come back from a break. My apologies to the runners and come. <laughs> I mean, when it, uh, these guys, I'm, when you are in the green, how much, uh, how much pressure do you end up feeling from, from yourself to not, you know, pretty much ruin your, your run, especially when you're from the world record holder? Yeah, I can't, you know, any anytime you're getting a nice run out, it's got to be feeling good. But again, as being a world record holder, or you know, just having these really tight times below 15, anytime you're green, that's gotta like really just kind of perk you up a little and go, oh, wait a minute. But also, <laughs> you know, depending on how long they've grinded and grinded and grinded, you know, uh, that can definitely have an effect. You know, maybe if you've grinded this game for so long, it doesn't affect you quite as much. Yeah, and if, you know, if you've already been to the top of the mountain, uh, that's that's got to be something as well. You know, maybe Cheese gets a little less, a little less nervous than uh, than somebody who hasn't had the world record or or held it <laughs> several times across several categories. Uh, ah, Ouija hitting the star, but unfortunately, did not look like a good angle there. Looks like we're going to be seeing a few resets. We got, uh, I think Green Suiji is still doing some practice. And then, as you can see in the bottom right, Tago is now here. Tago has joined the fray. He is back from work. He is ready to Mario with these top dogs. Add. Oh, Tag. My apologies. Uh, tag is right now in 16 star. He has a 15.03 PB. Uh, seventh in the world and he just got that 30 days ago before that he uh he had the same time that trey now has a 15 11. Uh, so he he bumped up and then just shortly after just three days later i picked up the 1503 um and then in vc over on virtual console he's second in the world in 16 star 15 15. Uh, so absolutely the grind is real uh and it's current he, he's out there making 16 star happen and, and we're seeing results because of it top 10 is amazing when you're, you have thousands and thousands of people competing against you well speaking of results it does look like in the chat we are having a question that he now has a 1501 so that's pretty yeah. epic when did he when did he get that Jeff? that is, that is closer and closer <laughs> to sub 15. 1501. Wow, that is impressive. Looks like that. Looks like Tag going to be getting through Bowser. First Dark World of the day for Tag. Very nice. Love to see green. And this is, this is Tag's first official run, no? Correct. Interesting. I see some green over on Slipperies. Improving on Dark World, too. A week ago, huh? Oh, fantastic. Good work by Tag. I'm looking at the screen. I'm looking over at Slip, and it looks like he currently has his uh, splits set to going up against his previous run. And actually, I kind of like that for an event like this. Yeah, I, you know, what? I'll, I'll be honest. I really do too. I know when I when I was doing some running myself, I like to have two scores up. One was the my PB, and the other was my uh, worst run of the day. So, so I could always be reminded, no matter how bad my run's going, at least it wasn't that bad. <laughs> That's fair. It's like Tag missing a double jump out of this here. Gonna be going for it one more time. Very unfortunate. Barely clipping the edge there. Not getting, not getting in there. There we go. Excellent. 
three on Owlis and three in Dark World. Looks like everybody is on actual runs now, not practicing. Reset conflicts it. Here we go! Alright, we're gonna see Slip and Tag getting out of Womps here, heading to the basement. That, the, the early game, how much practice goes into Dark World and, and Womps. Uh, I've, I've heard a lot of people say uh, Womps is pretty much the, the home base of Mario 64, because no matter what run you do, uh, you pretty much end up there at the beginning all the time. Get very, very familiar with that particular stage. And once you head downstairs, things a lot of these tricks become much more difficult. We see Tag 609 getting the blast. Well done. Yep, and again, speaking of the harder strats, we again see Slippery Nip have a very successful Fly Guy list as well. Let's see what... Chat reminding us, Slip is on one heck of a run. Yep, and that, as I mentioned earlier, that, yeah, all those greens, uh, he's probably going to be feeling good about that. Those greens are based off of that 1634 that you see at the bottom of the screen. So it looks like Slip just wanted to compare it to the times that he got already. Got to work that down, make his way back up to first place. We saw some green from Tag early on. Womp's Fortress, specifically that Owlless, gave him a little bit of trouble. Took away the green, but first run, getting a lot of these tricks is pretty great. It just keeps putting the pressure on. near sync here between tag and slip so a little little difference there in the timekeeping <laughs> all right we're gonna see cheese here joining slip and tag 609 in the basement Ouija gonna be taking out Bowser once again Oh. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, Flixer getting on the other side of the door. Very unfortunate. It is that. Very cool lava boost. That LBLJ. It's uh, a couple of, you know, any any small mistake there. You're walking through that door, or using all your speed, or launching out the backside. It's uh, very easy to, to mess that bad boy up, but luckily it's not too much of a time loss as long as you like watching Fly Guy or uh, Lakitu spin around for a little bit. Oh, we see Tag having a little bit of trouble with the Logless. See some green over on Cheese's side, Ouija's side, and Slippery. Up with a very clean ground pound there on the bully. See if Tag 609 can follow that up. Here we go! Ooh! Not quite Nine. as perfect, but still able to slap that bully right into the lava. Ooh, that looked like a big, big green split for Cheese. He's taking breaths right now. Might be on a pretty solid run there. Is that, is that a minus 12 I see for cheese? My oh, dang. A minus 10 for slip right now coming out of LLL. 
Holy cow. Here we go! Yo, Cheese having to take a second attempt on that side hop. That, uh, that one's on me, I think. <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> Flixer restarting. So Luigi looks like he's might be doing some practicing of Shy Guy less. Yeah, Suiji so looks like still just kind of been in the practice. No. Uh, I haven't quite started a run yet. Oh, you love to see it from both Tag and Slippery Nip. No toad violence here in this tournament. Love to see it. <laughs> You know, he's, he's just here to help you out. He's such a good friend. You know that? He's always there for you. Oh, Tag! Oh, you hitting the death plane! Oh, man. Super unfortunate. Is Hello, indeed. Jason. There's our awesome guy now, Jason <laughs> from Urban Arts, a wonderful helper here. Even as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we do have a $750 donation goal for Urban Arts, the program generously donating the prize pool for this live time attack event here. Some of the some of the things Urban Arts does is is incredible. You know, we've talked a lot about statistics here. I, I'm a big statistics fan. I love crunching numbers and comparing people based off of just numbers. Uh, and their numbers are extremely impressive. In 2021, Urban Arts served over 120 students in their game design program with 100% of graduating seniors earning college acceptances compared to a rate of 50% by their peers. That's, anytime you're looking at 100% anything, it's absolutely impressive, especially when you're, you're on that scale and doing things that are this, this good. Yeah. You know, 100%, you rarely ever see that in any program, and that's it's just one of the things that I personally like about Urban Arts. Yeah, I think there was a, there was a chip over there on Slippery side. Ayo. I, I oh, no. Wow. I'm going to have to go up for a second attempt on that front sub. Only going to be losing a little bit of time here. Still should be able to take over his previous score maybe rise up within the ranks on our leaderboard that we have at the bottom of the screen what what are these what are these splits right now? that's a uh, these are his last oh, his okay. last run his last run okay wonderful you did say that my apologies i, I for whatever reason i thought he was running against his uh his 14 27 or something uh this is an impossible run <laughs> Yeah, no, it definitely happens. There's a lot going on. We've got a lot of high octane runners here just moving the Mario. It's very easy to just kind of miss some stuff. Fire Seed ah. Mouser. Gotcha, Jason. The 1427 that's on his splits, my apologies. I was not trying to insinuate he has a 1427. <laughs> <laughs> the the double please at the end of his splits. That's great. <laughs> I love, I love looking at the splits when I'm watching uh, speedrunners and just seeing either the very clever or very silly names that people use. I, I love seeing, uh, especially at the end when you're in uh, in bits, because that it's just such a punishing stage. It, it, it kind of takes some of the some of the stress away from it when you're looking at uh, one of those silly uh, splits for for bits there. Oh, very unfortunate. Tag 609 taking a death there to Bowser. A slip, getting some great PLJs. Looks like we've got Flixer finally hopping into the basement. Cheese getting ready for that front sub and slip with again really great BLJs here. 
coming up to Bowser in the sky. So quick. Put him on the, the big screen here and take a look. <laughs> Good backup. Save a, save a small scuff there. We see a few of these guys heading towards end game pretty quickly here. Fire C. Yep, Tag 609 heading into the BLJ's cheese, hopping into the fire C himself. Slip coming into the tube, ready to crush his previous run. This is a, a very good marathon pace here. Or tournament, if you will. <laughs> oh, an unfortunate misthrow. Even still, a lot of wiggle room for him on his current time. But Tag finally... Go ahead. I'll say Tag finally going to be able to get into Sky himself as well. Beating PBs is what these guys do. It's what has driven them to, to get where they're at with their times. And that's what I expect them to be doing here today, is, is just planning to beat their PB, their daily PB, their tournament PB. Alright, there we go. Slip, gonna be finishing up with a low 15 here. 15, 29. And that is gonna shoot him up to first place. Takes a minute off of his last time. Uh, but his last one, I believe he had that safe and quit in there too. He d Indeed he did. As we see tag 609, ready to close out his first run of the day. Get a number on the board, give yourself a target. One, two. Use this to be okay. Beautifully done on the throws. One, two, three, and you get the big star. Stop the clock. 1647 for Tag 609's first run of the day. Again, honestly, not a bad first run, especially just coming straight back from work. It's impressive. It very much is. Cheese and bits. Himself. No trouble with the uh, elevators that time. Setting up for that right side here. Nice and clean. Love to see that. This time playing it, playing it carefully on the elevators. Looks like we had had green splits through HMC. DDD a little a little hiccup there, but not too far off on his split, so not a bad run. The cheese. Cheese PB that double down on day three, as as you do when you're cheese, and you pull out a clutch at the last second, 15-11, or 15-13. Uh, All right, she's going to be beating his first tournament time here. 15.49. Still in third place, but now with a better time. Third, 30, just over 30 seconds off of his, his PB. Um, and obviously crushing his, his splits there. All right, and with these high... Octane Bowser in the skies out of the way. We're gonna be going to another break here. Stick around. We've got more Mario action coming your way. Ladies and gentlemen.
Who's Come ready on, for some action? Go. There we go. Again, everybody, and welcome back to our 16 star tournament here, our live time attack event, from Global Speedrun Association here, uh, sponsored by Urban Arts. And I noticed we got a couple of donations during the break. I'm just going to read them off here really quick. We got an anonymous $20 donation that does, in fact, say, Let's go, Tago. Uh, <laughs> my bad on that one. <laughs> um, and then. We do have another donation here from Jason Esports. Still here to support the amazing students of Urban Arts. What an amazing match we have today. This field is incredible. Who you got? Who you got indeed. Today's event is a who's who of Super Mario 64 speedrunning community. Flixer, Cheese, Slippery Nip, Ouija, Green Suiji, and Tag 609. Just some incredible top runners here. Really is. Uh, you know, I want to, real quick, I kind of want to run run down something. When we're talking about who we got, 
Um, you know, I know we kind of posed that question earlier, and going back over over what I know and what I what I have here, I I don't know that I can't uh, that I that I can pick anybody but cheese. I think I that's where the safe money is 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 going with cheese. Um, you know, 14th in the world and 16 star, obviously number one in 120 star. He's held the 120 star world record 17 times. That's that number is absurd. That is an intense number. It's seven. That is 17. Not only is that double digits, that is in the high of double digits. It very much, very, very much. I mean, going all the way back to 2015. Uh, you know, holding it for off and on since then, uh, mostly on, uh, exception. Um, and looking at the chat here, it looks like I've actually, uh, misconstrued when Jason Esports said, uh, who you got. He's actually talking uh, about the caster. So, Meter, tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, okay. Uh, my name's Meter, and I do, I like to do commentary. Uh, more than anything, I've done a little bit of 16 star running, uh, but not not particularly good on that end. But love uh, love being part of the community. Love doing things that are that give back, uh, and and doing stuff with people that play at this caliber is is always absurdly exciting. So very happy to be here for all of those reasons, uh, and uh, and calling alongside you, enemy. Now I know, I I know on your end you. You currently hold a couple of world records yourself uh, in the SM64 co-op, um, the 16-star non-stop, the 16-star no LBLJ non-stop, and the 31-star non-stop. Three total first-place records is uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, you know, the the SM64 co-op stuff is it's really fun. It's really it's just really interesting to hop into a game like this and be able to play it with multiple people at the same time and. Uh, I don't. Well, I'm not like too. Uh, I'm not too serious. I'd say with it, it's it's definitely really fun to like grab a couple of your Mario speedrunning butts and go, hey, let's do this thing. Let's let's go have some fun. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I've seen a lot of that. Uh, oh, a bonk there from Flixer and into nothingness on the front sub. You know, I don't. I don't think I've actually personally seen a bonk on the sub yet. What on earth? Not that bonk specifically. I don't know if I've ever seen that one. It, he, it looked like he hit nothing. Uh, it was very interesting. I don't know if he hit some sort of hitbox for that red up top or uh, from the front of the sub, but very interesting. Very, very peculiar. You know, back in, in 2019, GSA did a 16-star league, a full season um, that ended uh, with a big finale. And uh, the final two in that were Cheese and Aki, uh, and Cheese actually ended up walking away with with that victory in a live event. Um, absolutely incredible. Uh, the the amount of accolades that that this guy has, you know, I, I mentioned a couple. There's countless more. Highly suggest go look at his page on Speedrun.com and just know that when people say say the goat, they're not just saying. Things. They, 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 there's a reason that he's considered one of the one of the best Mario players ever, and a lot of people consider him the best. All right, and it looks like Flicks are gonna be getting out of fire. See here, ready to go hit those BLJs. Now it looks like Flixer is also doing the splits to go up against the last run as well, so it's looking pretty good here. Yeah, Tech 609 is uh, in the green himself by good margin. Um, looks like we're still getting some practice from from Suiji here, I'm practicing some MIPS clip. Pretty clean on the last attempt I saw. Good. Good splits here for Flixer. Keep fighting those times down. Uh, I, I think we've seen this before in, in tournaments, and do feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but it, when Green Suiji pulls up and, uh, and starts playing, a lot of times he doesn't finish a run until he feels it's going to be very good. 
um, sometimes not finishing run for hours before deciding to, to actually clock something. He's just not satisfied to finish unless he he feels that it's a decent run. You know, and that's that's one of the that's one of the cool features here of the lifetime attack events. Is like you know you you've got some time if you're the type of player who just is not satisfied with you know your runs sometimes. The lifetime attack event is probably a good idea for you. Good choice. There's a reason that uh, that that you become best in the world and it's that not being satisfied until you know you have played exceptionally well not just for yourself but compared to every other person who's ever played uh, it takes a special uh, special dedication and fortitude to, to do something like that there you go flixer into the pipe here gonna be nailing those throws of course let's see if we can get a new high score as it were flixer yeah, it's always interesting. Would you consider it a high score or a low score? It's a really good point. Yeah, would you really, would you consider this to be more like golf because you're shooting for the lower score? Hmm. Oh, well, not score, Ooh. but time. Oh, Bowser are going to be falling off the stage there, unfortunately. It's just, it looks like you slipped, it, it slipped a little quick there. Right, and that's going to be the third throw for Flixer. Should be good. A new time for today's tournament here. That's going to be a 16 at 17. Luigi, Cheese, and Flixer all going to be heading into the beginning of their runs now. Looks like. Slippery is taking a, a small break here, and we'll probably see a reset from him shortly. And uh, Tag 609 is the only one right now on an actual run, as Green Suiji still practices, uh, but on a on a decent run. That's some green, red, green. A uh, lot of lot of wiggle room here to play with. This is a very nice slide there. Here we go. Uh, questions about Trey. Um, he will he will be back uh just uh, had some had some computer issues as as can happen and uh but he will be back shortly you know, once again while we're uh, while we're waiting here watching these runs watching this mario fly by before our eyes i'm gonna talk about urban arts again real quick um, program that offers a multi-year college prep program to underprivileged students in New York, teaching them both the arts and technology of video game design, prepare them for college and careers in tech gaming, a uh, wonderful program that is currently sponsoring this event that you see right now. Um, and just some very other interesting things about them, more than 90% of their students come from low-income neighborhoods, more than 90% of them are BIPOC, and 100% of their students graduate and go to college, which is just wild. I know you've said it before, but that's that's probably the one stat that just stands out to me every time I look at Urban Arts. It's, there's just very, very few programs who can boast that they have a 100% success rate. And what a good uh, match for, for something like this, where you have people who are very, very dedicated and uh, strive to be not just good not just great or excellent but the best and you can't do better than 100 percent and you can't do better than, than these runners here so it's such a good match to see gsa work with urban arts um and continue to to push to be better and uh, be the very best you know trey is uh, i'm i'm excited to get trey back when he's able to make it uh he double double down day two um popped his pv in. and uh that was that was extremely exciting and his first run on uh, on speedrun.com was uh, 70 star mu and that was back in december of 2020 so it's uh hasn't been too too long that that they've been on the scene and just making massive waves to break into the top 10 is very impressive um I mean, anything I think in the top 100 is impressive, but I guess I'm easily impressed. 
<laughs> I mean, look, this game is no slouch. Even me, who usually casually speedruns this game, like, it, it is hard. I cannot stress how hard it is to speedrun this game, especially at the top levels. And so many people run this game. It's one of the most popular speedrun games on Twitch, on speedrun.com. Top 100 is no slouch. X609, a decent run here. Ouija as well uh, in the green. And uh, some beginning the run uh, for a few of the others and still on practice is Green Suiji. She's flipped through there on the uh, LBLJ attempt. Take a reset. Ouija going for a Flag Atlas attempt there. Very good. Oh, tag. Unfortunately, missing that tail grab. Oh, and a second one! As long as Bowser doesn't teleport, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness. We got the throw off. Tag 609. Gonna be going upstairs, ready to get those BLJs out of the way. Plus for Ouija. And Dark World for Slippery and Flickter, and she's just getting through that intro cutscene. The amount of times these guys must have watched that cutscene. I've heard a fun joke before. Um, people who are, you know, resetting and whatnot in this game. Just the, the opening sequence. It's the uh, Princess Peach uh, letter-watching party. <laughs> Gets the VLJ at the end there. Very close. Might have been his last last jump there if he didn't hit that. Ooh, some jump dives there. Oh, oh an immediate VLJs. Very well done. Alright. Tag gonna be entering the sky here on pace to be. on pace to beat his last tournament time and it looks like we got an anonymous $100 donation thank you so much thank you so much for supporting the urban arts for supporting uh gsa here and just a reminder our dono goal for today is 750 dollars if we can reach that goal we will be able to extend the amount of Mario that you'll be seeing on your screen by an entire hour, a whole nother hour, of moving that Mario with the top speedrunners. A hundred dollars goes such a long way to do that, so thank you again. At 152 at the moment, and you know, even you don't have to do a hundred dollars, even a small amount from from each person watching goes a massive way. To, to getting us to that goal and getting some more Mario. All right, and Tag 609, a very clean three throws here. Gonna be knocking that first run out of the park. I believe their last Bowser as well, their last uh, three, three throws were also very clean, if I'm remembering correctly on their first run. So really clutch right. to close it out with big, big wins there. Always love to see a good three for three here in the sky. And with Tag's new time, that is going to put him in fourth place over Flixer. Flixer has not finished another run since then. Just took a reset. Head into HMC for Luigi. That triple box jump. Makes it look so easy. Very good. No toad violence from Ouija here. 
Gotta appreciate that guy, man. He's he's holding on to some easy stars for you, making the speed run just a little bit easier. Oh my goodness. Maxwell, thank you so much. Maxwell with the $200 dono. Thank you. Maxwell really wanted to see more of that Mario action. Who can blame him? That, uh, we are, we are about $25 away right now from being halfway to the goal. Uh, less than an hour and a half in, so keep them coming. Thank you and so much. See if we can hit that early. I think, uh, you know, Slippery Nip and, and Flixer probably coming into this event feeling like they got the, the most approved after Double Down uh, coming in, in the, with the top two lowest times. Uh, but even still, 15.23 being the lowest time in the tournament is just incredible. But gives them a lot of, a lot of opportunity to, to come in today and say that, uh, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna show you guys exactly why we're here. We're, we're contenders and we're here to play. Elixir was only two seconds off of your PB, like, <laughs> exceptional. Yeah. We'll chat with the door for Ouija. Maxwell saying they just appreciate some good SM64. Love it. We Absolutely love it. Well, we appreciate you. Thank you. Very Another clean. chip. Chip there from Ouija. He seems to be going for that one every time. And uh, I mean, I guess at, at the point that uh, you're, you're top two in the world, that's what you gotta do. Gotta do what you gotta do. And you know, Chip is a chip is a very interesting speedrun trick. It's one of those dangerous ones where if you nail it, it saves you about a couple of seconds. If you miss it, you're gonna you're gonna lose quite a bit of time. Yeah, I I do not remember the exact numbers, um, but I know it's it's very big versus very small. And uh, I remember hearing, I believe it was here from the commentary team on GSA uh, during that 16 star tournament that uh, movement saves minutes and trick saves seconds. So uh, when you're just learning, it's all about getting better at the movement. But when you're at these guys' level, you have to you have to be saving one, two, three seconds anywhere you can. Yeah, that tip is a tip that I take to heart as well. Movement is so, so important, especially in a game like Super Mario 64. Mm. Comfy in chat saying it saves about a second tops and loses about second seven. So um, very high risk, high reward type of trick. Indeed. Oh, very nice Ouija there with the three quarter circle turn. Very nice. Oh. Slippery up against. Dark World Bowser gets a little gets a little dance going. Dance party. Hey. We love the dono from Maxwell. The 10% dance party. Very <laughs> nice. I can't say this is 100% certain and true, but anytime there's a dono, I've happened to see Bowser dance. That's all I'm saying. Hmm. You, correlation doesn't mean equal causation, but <laughs> I'm just saying. Just saying, this might not be Cheese's crowd control event, but, <laughs> but. Cheese looks like he's having a chat with Lakitu while on break. Luigi missing. Ooh, no right into the clock there. <laughs> also looks like uh, we've got two slippery nips on the screen at the moment. Oh, not anymore, but. <laughs> that was kind of funny. Those slippery nip enjoyers. Ooh, a little sink there from Flixer and Slippery. Might have been a fake sink. At least time wise, that one is. 
Looks like we've got another donation here from Isom, $25. Squeegee, unfortunately, missing right side there. Uh, it's in this world, it's either a slippery nip or a nippery slip. I, I do believe that was uh, that was Ouija. Easy. Uh, I, I may have uh, have misheard you on that either way. Pretty sure. Hmm. Avoid avoiding out was uh, was Ouija. Maybe we were looking at opposite things. <laughs> their their names are very similar. <laughs> um, yeah. So we'll be we'll be streaming. Uh, the 16 star tournament for today and tomorrow, 1 to 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, both days, and uh, we can go over the 8 o'clock for by an hour if we hit that 750 fundraising goal today. And we are cruising right along with that, getting uh, get get any donations you have in because we all want to see more of these great runners. I want to see more of these amazing runners, more of that Mario moving just at the highest speeds. Oh, Flixer with a very nice frame jump there. Mm. Luigi in Dark World. Green Suigi still doing some practice right now, uh, doing Fire C. Plus, slippery. Flicks are picking up his own star, the top of the pyramid there. That that star when you're first learning it, to get to the top of the pyramid, jumping over that sand hill is surprisingly difficult. It looks so easy. These runners make it look easy, but that third jump, for me, gave me a little bit of trouble. I don't know about everybody else. I think um, the, the key thing that you got to remember for that third jump is to dive. You got to dive at the right spot. You don't want to dive too late. You actually like dive a lot earlier than you think it is. That's that's also another one that I've had trouble with as well. here for Flixer and Slippery. Slippery. Very nice side pop. Both of them have I have, have some uh, red slits there, but not not devastating ones. Queen lava boost there from Slippery Nip. Gonna be going up to grab that star with no issues. Flixer hopping into the volcano. Oh, Ouija grabbing that ledge. Luckily not dying, but looks like we're still going to see a reset from him. I am very interested in what chat and yourself, enemy, feel is the, the hardest stage in... Uh, in the 16 star room. Mm, that's a good question. I think as far as like speed running and speed running tactics and the things that you absolutely have to nail, um, Bowser in the Sky is very, very, very tricky. As well as Dark World, a lot of the Bowser stages just require so much movement, so much optimization, and you just can't make small mistakes. There's a lot of people that, who say, you know, Womp's Fortress, if you're doing a no LBLJ route, is just absolute reset heavy. Hmm. We got some votes here for a lot of bits. Uh, Fire C, uh, uh, that's, I think that's a pretty decent one. LLL, um, you know, BLJ, I think that's, uh, that's also a good one. Uh, Dark World, uh, lots of votes for Dark World. And uh, I, I definitely agree 
after Ravioli, you do have to be wicked clean on those Bowser stages there. Uh, they'll, they'll get you if you don't. I know she's dead once that uh, Bits, Bits No Reds, he believes is the hardest stage in all of Mario. And that's coming from the 120 star world record holder. Um, so uh, that's, a, that's a pretty safe bet if, if that's the case. SSL, Maxwell saying JRB. Um, I'm not familiar with the JRB routing in in the 16. <laughs> I know these. Oh, uh, and slippery nip with a little bit of toad violence here. Very unfortunate. Goodness gracious, slip. I don't know, looks like Flixer gonna be heading out of HMC here with a very nice green for his last run. Absolutely beautiful. To start out in those reds and pick up the green. Good Mips. Looks like Slip gonna be heading for Mips as well. Both runners on a pretty decent pace. All right, it looks like we've got another donation here, this time from Jonah. $10. Thank you very much. Jonah is rooting for Ouija here. That's, uh, that's a very safe bet. Like I said, I still believe at some point uh, Ouija's gonna, gonna break through that, that 1453 he's been at for a bit now. The guy just holds so, so many records in every category. It's exceptional. Looks like Flixer. Looks like Flixer lining up for back sub here. Gonna be playing it a little safe, trying to make sure he can get a better time. Looks like we've got another donation. I really hope I don't push and ruin this name. Uh, I love Atar. Forty dollars. Good luck and have fun to all the runners. Thank you very much. We appreciate that donation. Here. Four twenty-seven sixteen cents on that tracker right now of the seven fifty. Uh, so we are. Cruising along here over halfway at this point. Looking at about 323 left. So let's keep that moving forward and uh, get some extra Mario in today. You know, I gotta say, I don't know if they'll allow it, but I do know uh, many of the runners in the Mario 64 community do happen to like the number that comes up if you donate a dollar. What is a dollar? <laughs> 53. You do that, people People seem to like that number. We're getting some, uh, a whole lot of love here in chat for, for kind of, kind of a history lesson going on. Dowski <laughs> and, uh, Kano and D whatever. Um, Benji, of course, is simply, the, I mean, it's, it, we have, uh, a lot of the greats that have, have staked their claim in Mario 64 and pushed this category forward. Uh, absolutely exceptional. Right, Flicks are here getting into BLJ's slippery nip, not too far behind him. Oh, it was like connected, but then lost it. Very unfortunate there for Flixer. Even still, uh, doing, you know, oh, the second one. It's rough, slippery, right there with him. Immediate. That was Aki, Aki esque, if you will. I 
know, before most people were consistent with that BLJ, Aki was paving the way and uh, kind of kind of showed people there's a way to, to hit this consistently, um, more consistently at least, and kind of revolutionize things with that. There we go, Flixture finally getting in. The slippery nip coming up to that slippery slope here. Ooh, unfortunate. Should, should, fortunate commentator's curse there. Slippery heading up to the final elevators here. Looks are close behind and finish out the run either way. And Flicks are going to be hoping to be in his current time in 1617. Should be able to do that. Nice quick grab there. No fear. Two good throws from the slip. Flicks are going to be nailing that first one as well. And that's going to be three for three for a slip uh, for slippery here. I, my mouth decided to not say his name properly. I apologize. Already with first place and doing what we see a lot in, in Mario 64, and that's improving on what's already in first place. Beautiful fits there. Slippery Nip ending with a 1520 is Flixer ending with a 602. Both runners improving at their current times in this LTA tournament. And it looks like we're going to be heading for our next break here. And it don't go away. We're going to have more of this Super Mario 64 action throughout the day. Urban Arts helped prepare me for college by giving me a lot of experiences working both independently and collaboratively with other people to make really cool games and taught me how to put my all into creative projects and that helped me put together a very strong portfolio for college. The best part about being in the urban arts community is the people that you meet. A lot of the people here are have the same interests as me, so in the future, making friends here will benefit me and them and everyone around because we all benefit from each other by gaining skills that other people had that I may need. Urban arts helped me see myself differently by showing me that I can be a good leader. In the studio program, I was assigned the role as project manager, and fulfilling that role for the first time actually helped me realize that I have good leadership skills, and it really helped me to develop them.
Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to our live Time Attack 16-star tournament being put on by the GSA and sponsored by Urban Arts. Looks like she's uh, having a little bit of trouble with the sub there as we're coming back. Um, as you can see at the bottom, our current times for our current runners here. Slip just clutching out that 1520. Ouija with a 1537. Cheese a 1549. Tag 609 with a 1551. And Flixer just improving his recent time to a 1602. This, of course, part of the world record circuit for Super Mario 64. We do these uh, hey, once Mario. about once a month uh, right here on speedrun twitch.tv slash speedrun um and the last event being double down where the the times ranged from a 1450 by green suiji who uh, who else uh and uh to all the way down to 1523 which is a, a great time so i definitely expect to see a lot of these times continue to be fought down as we're two hours into a, a two-day event question about where donations go donations go to urban arts uh they are the the sponsor for this event here uh, as they have been many a time for uh, sga here we go. gsa yeah, very... my, my apologies <laughs> i knew something it's was all wrong good there. there there's you know there's so many acronyms out there a lot to remember <laughs> Yeah, something great about Urban Arts. Urban Arts is a program for underprivileged students in New York, teaching them both the arts and technology of video game design. Prepare them for college and careers in tech gaming. And in 2021, Urban Arts served over 120 students in their game design program with 100% of their graduating seniors earning college acceptances which is just fantastic absolutely wild e exceptional uh very well done um, by by urban arts and really happy to have them as a sponsor so on top of that we do have the incentive down at the bottom left of the screen here 427 16 is where we're at out of 750 and if we hit that 750 uh before 8 eastern tonight we will extend by an extra hour we'll get an extra hour for these runners to try and fight and get their times down and uh, if we're able to hit that not only can you say i was there when uh undoubtedly one of these guys <laughs> breaks their pb but you can say i'm the reason they were able to they wouldn't have been playing if i hadn't been there sharing sharing the pride Flixer with, uh, Flixer looks like he's in green. It's an LLL here. It yeah, looks like he's doing pretty well so far. One more star to grab. After a very clean, uh, elevator star. Tag 609 in the green. And green Suiji, I'm, I'm putting together now. It looks like they are running through the entire run and doing all of the bits of the run. Uh, didn't, didn't mean a pun there, but I'll take it. Uh... <laughs> Back to back, just bust them all out early and then uh, put together a really good run once you practice everything. I, I kind of like this batching together of um, things versus having large breaks between uh, practicing bits, for example. So Ouija and Trey have not done, finished a run yet. Um, Trey does plan to be back here in a bit today. But technology wanted him to, to take a breather and uh, make a big late entrance uh, to the to the scores. So he will be the the surprise entrant uh, in a little a little bit later. Looks like just having a lot of trouble with that triple box jump. Mm, rough to see the the run kind of falter there. Oh. Right into the. Right into the middle of that stage. Take the reset. Nothing these guys aren't used to. Resetting. Deck 609 here. Just going to be grabbing one more star. And SSL is currently ahead of his tournament time. Uh, 
had to be. Oh, hello, yes, man VR. Um, the commentators in here talking are Anime and Meter. Hello. I'm really glad you're here. Yeah, you know, thank you so much for all of the people here um, coming out to this event, watching these people move the Mario. Uh, it's just great to see such a turnout for the speedrunning community and all you great supporters out there. Here we go. It's it's amazing the speedrun community and what they do together. Um, you know, there's lots of lots of events that happen all year round, and uh, it's almost always charity related, uh, serving other people, and just creating general goodness in the world by playing video games uh, and doing it really fast and really skilled. Uh, so huge, huge shout out and hats off to everybody who gets involved in some way, um, be it the watch or uh, donating or playing. You know, there's a lot of... I've I've mentioned it before. I'm a, I'm a stats guy, so... I like to go back through the history of Super Mario 64 and, and all the different categories. Um, especially the 16. That we're looking at here today and, and kind of crunch numbers and see where things are at. And there's just so much data on speedrun.com that has historical data and spreadsheets. And it's really cool. If you're ever looking to, to kind of get a snapshot of anything jump on there and take a look because it's very impressive and uh, i think you'll you'll be surprised by a lot of what you see and a lot of the, the statistics you can pull there and how good some of these guys are is absurd yeah having all of these top sm64 runners here in one sitting all together just having a good time speed running mario together for a good cause is just it's so fun to watch Ag 603, 609, heading into uh, HMC here. Looking pretty clean. Got a nice lead over his tournament time already. Good, solid 30 seconds. Going for that camera slide. Looking great. She's heading you know, I think LOL with in green as well. I gotta say, I find it funny. Um, that it's either it's either the C up slide or the GTM slide, and it's very, it's very very person to person basis. <laughs> like if one person says C up slide, they're not gonna say GTM slide. They say GTM slide, they're not gonna say C up slide. And it's a bit interesting. Yeah, I mean the the different phrasings for things and how specific you get or or where you first learned what to call a thing, a lot of times can can make the difference there as well. It's like um, it's like Wilco clip, you know. It's just it's just LBJ, uh, LBLJ, fuck <laughs> English. I'm so sorry. It's just BLJ through the 50 star door, which you literally do all the time in 16 star. But for 120 star, it's just called Wilco clip because Wilco goes for it every time. <laughs> hey, some some localization there, depending on the category. If you run multiple categories, do you call it different things depending on which one you're actively running? Um, hmm, I know me personally, I, I haven't read it. Usually most of the tricks, I just keep the same names. <laughs> Cuts down on a little bit of the confusion. Tag there with a very nice standing nips grab. Lots of lots of tapping. I, I do like somebody had mentioned it earlier as well that you know you can see see what they're doing with their controller, um, and I feel you can learn a lot by by watching a lot of that. Um, as can someone watching back on their own run, but has a little bit of wiggle room right now for to make make a couple of minors like what we saw there. A little bonk into the wall, missing the, the quick flip through that second door. Yeah, getting a very nice chip clip there. She's talking to Toad. 
Uh, it looked like a clean talk. I don't think I saw any toad violence, but he is, he is at a strange angle. <laughs> maybe, maybe something to hide there. <laughs> is standing the preferred position for Mips Clip? I believe it's the fastest, right? Because you don't have the animation of standing back up. Is that incorrect? Um, I think the fastest one is the glitchy wall click. Wall click? Click kick? What is my mouth doing? <laughs> the glitchy wall kick, I think, is the fastest method. Um, but I think the standing method is usually a little more consistent. Uh, but also, I, I think don't they take my word on it. The, they might have been talking about the first grab. That's oh, the first thing. grab. Yeah, standing oh, yeah. versus yeah. diving. Yeah, a standing mix clip is faster. Er, the grab, standing mix grab is faster. Tag 609 along the edge there in Fire C. And I know a lot of, uh, I've, I've seen some players, I, I can't quite remember who it was. It might, might have been D whatever, but when they do that specific trick running along that edge there, uh, doing the jump dives instead of the super jumps and doing it with camera facing like towards them that to me i incredible the being able to, to position yourself properly that way every time having no visibility on what's going on um, and doing jump dives all at the same time is wild oh yeah that is that is indeed the fastest um i think doing the camera facing yourself if i remember correctly is the best for, mm, for lag, lag reduction, reduction. And then doing the dive and dive roll out instead of the long jump is like, I think a second or two faster. Interesting. And again, the amount of optimization that goes into this coming down to, you know, even when you jump and what way you jump is uh, incredible. Uh, showing why after all this time, having people just continue to make this game better and better and faster and faster. Yeah, if I remember correctly, like, Chip Clip was just discovered, I think it was, like, earlier this year. I do believe that was very, very recent. I think it was uh, a GSA event that was the first place I actually personally saw it. Um, I took a, took a small break when I was running myself from... Uh, watching a lot of the current stuff and was learning some of the some of the routing stuff through tutorials so it was consuming a lot of that content instead uh thank you wes uh chip clip was discovered in october 2021 and as we see here tag on a very nice run standing right that's going to be a better attempt there not losing too much time Yep, running out. Uh, Chi's going for the, the very rare 17 star run. Mm -hmm. Oh, unfortunately. Having to reset would have been great to see the cursed 17 star run. Got one for tag here. Two. Tag, and that is three for three. I don't think we've seen them miss a bits throw yet today. Wow, look at the split on that. Holy Tag cow. time. Coming in hot. Going to be the new first place time here at What's the GSA's that? live time attack event. 1514 for Tag 609. 13 seconds off of their PB. Wow. Coming in an hour late due to work, but now coming in hot with the new first place time. Exceptional. What What is that? Like 15th best time in the world right now? Somewhere in there? Why? <laughs> For a tournament? Uh, I 100% agree. We got uh, Slippery on a... Very good run themselves as they're heading into HMC. And these guys just continue to push each other to be better and better because every time someone gets a takes that first place spot, everyone else wants to come in and 
I take it right back. We've seen it countless, countless times in the speedrun community, and especially in Mario. Just in case, thank you very much, not only for the bits, but also the gifted subs. Thank you. Slip, gonna be getting a clean triple box jump there. Uh, it looks like Ouija uh, going for LBLJ here. Gonna be getting inside. Elixir currently in Womp's Fortress, and she's getting the Lakitu skip. Green Suiji. Wow, what a be Holy cow, that was beautiful. One of the cleanest bit starts I've seen in a very long time right there. Holy cow. Taking the first practice in a way. Taking the first quarter of the day. Green Suiji not finishing a single run, instead just practicing. Very interested to see how that turns out by the end of the day and by the end of the tournament. But wow. The pace he was on in that bit that bits just previously is exceptional. Slippery still. Pushing pretty well here. Flixer and SSL in green. As Cheese and Luigi both take a reset. Luigi slowing way down for us. And Tag 609 taking that first place spot with a 15 14, beating six seconds off of Slippery's time. Now taking a well-earned quick break. Flip here, not going to be going for Chip Clip, which, to be fair, makes sense. He's trying to make sure he has a comfy time heading out of here, wanting to try to take that first place back from Tag. Here we go. Another improvement there. Very well done. Lexer looks like they're going to be getting out of SSL with still on the green. And uh, Josh saying in chat that Suiji practicing hypes them up for when they're actually going to do a run, and I, I genuinely have to agree with that wholeheartedly. I think it's really, really hype because when he finally starts, you know he is taking no prisoners. He is absolutely not accepting anything less than his best at any point and uh, it's, it's always very exciting and we've seen him continue to dominate by doing it very very clean dives there from nip i don't think i saw a single dust cloud fire seed bowser jumps bits and final throws left for slipper Quick throw. Dispatch Fire C Bowser. It's time to head upstairs. The final wave over on Tag 609's side. Luigi and Cheese at the beginning of their runs, and Flixer in LLL. A pretty decent clean run. Love to see all the prages in the chats, all of the blessing emotes slip. Gonna be clipping through that door, luckily getting enough speed off of that. Ready for the second VLJs. Beautiful. 
What do you think? Are we going to see any uh, wet dry world here today? Ooh, honestly, I would like to see that because that's just really funny. <laughs> it's always yeah. interesting to see an accidental BLJ into wet dry world. Very, very good run right now. Possible with the sub right. Slip into throws, potential sub fifteen pace here. And an unfortunate missed first throw. The reaction says it all on that. Very reserved, but you know exactly what he's feeling right now. I mean, regardless, this run is incredible. You know, I wonder, I wonder, maybe that's one of the reasons why uh, Slip grew that large beard. Just kind of hides his reaction. That's a very good. I mean, it's it's beautiful with the, the curly hair and everything matching. Exceptional. Well, well done. He looks great. As does this time. Slip, unfortunately, not uh, going to be able to pass tag 69, uh, 609 for his previous time, but still going to be getting a low 15 at 22. A very good run. Top 25 run in the world right now. Right there, and uh, won't be his first or his last. Really good run here today. All right, and with that, with that amazing run done by Slip out of the way, uh, that is going to be the end here for myself and Meter. We are going to be swapping out. Thank you so much for your time. And just a quick reminder again, this event being sponsored by Urban Arts Program. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you guys. And we will uh, we will talk to you soon. I'm I'm gonna stick around, like check out this amazing uh, run for flicks there. I'm gonna be in chat. You see that? I think the game should have been Super Wario 64. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like we've been pulled in here. Hello, everybody. Welcome into hour three of the SWRC 16 star tournament here on twitch.tv slash speedrun. My name is West Dog. Joining me in here from the booth today, making his, uh, I believe, professional commentary debut is the one and only Zeus VA. Zeus, welcome in, buddy. How are you doing today? Yo, Wes, I'm doing good. I'm having a lot of fun. I woke up an hour ago and I'm ready to go. <laughs> Honestly, you probably could ask for it any other ways. Just everybody knows that when you're awake, you have that last voice. You have to eat. Good commentary here at VR. We're going to a very hot run here. Mm, yeah, Flex's fire seat right now is a little shaky, but the rest of this run's been looking incredible. Minus 14 out of DDD. You couldn't really ask for much more. 15 10 best possible time. Wow. That's well ahead of his PB. Going for that one burn approach there. Kind of got worried he was going to possibly get on the edge of the funnel, but decided to play a little safe and get on the bridge. Honestly, can't blame him there. For anybody who was around in the double down tournament, Flixer finished last place. And I shouldn't even phrase it as last place. He got a 1523, which just happened to be last place on the leaderboard, but still a top 20, maybe top 25 run overall. And I didn't even realize until you said it, Suze. Yeah, 1510 best possible time. Flixer's not only cooking up a good run, he might be cooking up a fresh new PB, uh, knocking on wood here, hoping there's no caster's curse. Oh, what do you mean? Caster's curse isn't real. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. Yeah, you know what? The, this run is garbage, anyways. I, I can imagine. I can imagine a better run in my sleep. Yeah, it's always the runner's fault. Actually, on that topic, um, one of the thing as as a runner myself, one of the one of the things that I always find entertaining about Caster's Curse is that 
most of the time you've already you've already made the mistake before the casters say anything so you, you know you can chalk it up to casters curse after the fact and chat can always do so as well but in the end you know you didn't hear them you didn't hear them say anything until after the fact that is true there is some delay between uh the user's stream and what we're getting even here live through the discord feed so it is a little hard to tell but it's not hard to tell here that Flixer is on a 15-1x pacer now going into bits. Oh, boy. Yeah, this is possibly PB pace going into bits, actually. I mean, this early on, very, very nice turn out for Flixer. If he can... Oh. I was just about to say, if he can hold it together. <laughs> oh, no. Every 120 runner ever has felt this pain of the elevators. Yep. Uh, the backup is honestly not as easy as one may think. It's n the, That p elevator pull there isn't just a standard pull where you can wall kick off of anywhere. You have to hit the right half of the pull in order to get the wall kick off. Otherwise, you get zero framed or collide with the object, and it just doesn't work. So, indeed, very painful. But unfortunately, while PB might be dead here for Flixer, he is still looking to bop Ouija for third place here, provided he connects on all three throws. Yeah, that's really the hardest part of Bowser in the Sky is hitting all of those throws. Because the moment you miss one, it'll, it might start getting to your head, and if it does, that can be where you melt down. And we've seen plenty of runners miss, you know, one throw, and then suddenly that turns into two, three, four throws on any pace, really. But we're not seeing that here. Flicks are hitting all of his throws very nicely. Beautifully well done there, despite being, I'd say, five to six minutes into their debut, already cursing this run. It looks like Zeus is not going to be hexing this completely as Flixer does get <laughs> the third place bop on Ouija with a very good 15.32. Very respectable time. Very, very respectable. All right, and with Flixer's run coming to a close here, we are going to take this moment to uh, take get a word from our sponsor. So don't go away. More 16-star action coming up here soon. That's right, Flixer. Flex them guns, baby. We'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen.
And welcome back, folks, to the GSA Speed Run World Record Circuit. We are competing in 16 star Mario 64 speedruns here today. West Dog joined alongside Zeus VA here in the commentary booth. We are looking at the same roster of guys we saw here at the Double Down, our World Record Circuit roster here. Last go around, we've seen we saw Green Suiji get uh, first place with a 1450, but has yet to complete a run so far today and has gone a little ham on practice. Zeus, what do you think we might be able to see from uh, Ouija today? You think, or not Ouija, Suiji, a 14 maybe? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you got to remember last time he put hours and hours into practice before he started doing runs, and we saw how that paid off with that 1450. Uh, Ouija with that long jump cannon list. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it, it's Suiji. He's the world record holder. He, he's always, you know, he can always get a 14. You, you, it's almost expected at this point. I think like, la yeah, of course, you know, last time he got 1450, I believe he got one or two 14s prior to that as well. And after, but yeah, I mean, Suiji and 14 are about is conjoined as bread and butter so i don't know i think we're gonna see another one from him i sure hope so because for those who may not have known last night green suiji was on not just a world record pace but i'd say a world shattering pace going into bowser in the sky the final stage green suiji was seven seconds ahead of his world record he was on pace for a 1441 uh 16 star run 1439 capable this wasn't just going to possibly possibly bop his world record but destroy it absolutely make a mockery i'm talking nelson Muntz. point the finger <laughs> at that disgusting world record unfortunately the pressure hits in bowser in the sky and the run did not follow through but perhaps he's able to carry that mojo with him here today as we see unfortunately ouija decide to reset before he even decides to go into the basement was not getting good vibes from that basement. Yeah, and I mean, like, the th we, we, we've seen things similar to this before. I mean, we've seen Ouija be on, I believe it was the first ever 14 4X pace into, what was it? Was it Bits or Fire Sea? I can't remember. Where, um, of course, he, he fell to the pressure as well. And... It's it's really hard to finish out those kinds of runs. It really is that those nerves, uh, th you know, those nerves can kill, and the runs unfortunately end up being the victims of them. Yeah, I believe I was commentating with Bedronis for that uh fourteen four X capable run. He lost the fourteen uh forty seven possibility on the final throw, going just wide left but still finished with a 14 i think 59 or 14 58 out of that run remarkably the first ever 14 mm. collected with a missed throw yeah it was ridiculous tomka asking when am i gonna join the competition um maybe maybe in like five years once i once i can uh do runs Maybe can we see some uh, Tom Carr in some upcoming GSA action here? This is the world record holder in uh, I don't I don't know the formal name of the star, but the single star world record for essentially the double jump Alice star here in Womps Fortress, relentlessly mm. grinding it out at the European speedrun assembly uh, just a week or so ago, down to a 1086, I believe now. So Tom Carr, probably more like Tom Cracked, is what we uh, have come to see from him. Yeah, otherwise known as the least angry Scandinavian runner. The least angry. Because th th there was there was there was the meme going around on Twitter of his uh, his focused face, and uh. the joke was that he was uh, he he looked incredibly angry, like he was going to cause someone grievous harm, and then in the next and then in the next image you see of him, he's just smiling. But it, it was it was quite it was quite a funny moment uh, seeing that first go uh, going the rounds on Mario Twitter. And it looks like we've got some dish in the chat here as Tag straight up calling Tom Car fake or at least maybe that world record fake here in the chat. 
So you're supposed to get runs going. I don't... It looks like Tag might be on hiatus. They're just not on the screen right now. So Tag, oh boy. Well, what would we do without Tag? I mean, last time Tag pulled the train along, got it, got got the show moving with all of his runs. And I think he needs to he needs to focus more on doing that again. We all would we all would like to see more runs. I know I do. I'm feeling a little bit on the uh, sickly side today, but uh, to take away from that Saturday Night Live skit, I've got a fever, and the only cure is more 16 stars. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. And, um, I mean, you know, and then actually going back to Tag and Tomcar, both of those runners are pretty much next in line alongside GTM and Gamero to get a 14 and 16 star. Mm. You know, we've got four runners fully capable of it. And, I um, yeah, Tag is, the, Tag is the only one present here, but... Hopefully we'll get to see him turn out with that uh, at this event. I do forget about Gamiro being 14 capable. Uh, I've, I've just been captivated by Gamiro as of lately with his uh, with his discovery of... I'm, we're going to keep the language family friendly here, but buttless, essentially, oh, in yeah. Rainbow Ride. For those who don't know, uh, to pull, in order to get to the cruiser ship in the Rainbow Ride stage, which is what you see in 70 or 120 star runs, there is a tactic called the Lakitu Bounce, where you perform a uh, w typically perform a wall kick off of a sloped platform, bounce off the Lakitu, and then go up to the pole to get your way to the cruiser. However, Gamiru, with the help of Kano, recently discovered a new tactic where, with the right angle, you're able to get a triple jump that gets you at just the right height to bounce off Lakitu without having to wall kick, and gets you to slope kick and then grab the pole without having to use your butt at all, hence the term buttless. Now we have a more colorful term, colorful term, as we see weak Frank and Oroz here in the chat saying what it should be called, but I don't know what the language barrier is here on speedruns, so better to be safe than sorry. I would presume the language barrier is English. <laughs> <laughs> that was poor. <laughs> I apologize. Um, I'll, I'll find better jokes. Oh, Gold Rush but, was involved in it too. I didn't know that. And Bog Kano, Gold apparently. Yeah, did say Kano. Kano was the first to get it ten times in a row. I thought Gamiru was the mm. one who did it, because that was the first post I saw, but... Gold Rush, the infamous world record holder of 70-star CCC list. That has got to be one of the hottest categories that, like, exists. I, I, couldn't, I can't even imagine completing a run without grabbing a single coin, let alone also no caps or cannons. It is a, uh, it is a, uh, it is a complete mind, mind tricker. Uh, playing the category myself, I am an absolutely below average speedrunner in that meme category, but you don't even think about it. Just guys, take a close look as uh, the next time you see these guys going for stars, just even through Dark World, they're just casually blazing through the stages. Coins mean absolutely nothing. Now imagine trying to have to literally treat coins like they're the bubonic plague. If you touch them, you're dead, essentially. That's what a ccc -less run is like, and it's, it's, it's horrible. It totally messes with you. Isn't that just every Mario runner when they have to touch grass? Also true, yes. I can't remember the last time I touched grass. I think it was 18 years ago when I was born. So you, you're telling me you were born and your parents brought you to go touch grass? Yeah, because they knew I wasn't going to later in life. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is some great uh, foresight into parenting there, if I've ever heard it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure one of them's psychic. I mean, I also distinctly recall my dad once upon a time saying, Suiji will get world record in 16 star. So, really? I, think, I, think my dad might, I think my dad might have the ability to tell the future. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, considering they both gave birth to a child named Zeus, it would not surprise me if they possessed some godlike powers themselves. Oh, absolutely. I believe I also, I believe my dad also said, um, I, I believe, yes, yeah, my dad also said, um, more people will donate to Urban Arts. 
That is true. How many more, though? We will keep that to ourselves as uh, we want to uh, not spoil the script for anybody. But on that note, guys, do you know about Urban Arts? If you're a fan of the GSA Mario 64 events or just GSA in general, I'm sure you do. But for those of you who don't, allow me to explain. Urban Arts is a pre-college program that teaches underrepresented students the art and science behind a video game development. So I've gone on to see here before. Uh, the kids that go through the doors of Urban Arts could be the future game developers of the next up-and-coming speedrun. So do you want to help out the kids? Do you want to perhaps be responsible for the next big wave of great speedrunning video games? Then donate to Urban Arts. One dollar, one dollar, and one penny. Anything and everything helps out the kids. Link is in the chat at exclamation point donate. And it, uh, this already hasn't sold you here before. May I remind you that 100% of students who go through urban arts move on to higher education. I can't think of 100% success rate in anything else besides urban arts. Truly incredible there. Yeah, honestly, 100% success rate is ridiculous. Like... There's not even a 100% success rate in losing a run in Mario. Like, that that's that's how incredible it is. Like, imagine taking that kind of success rate into Mario for, say, canonless. Like, people would think you were the Holy Grail. Like, a gift from God being able to do that. And Urban, just... and Urban Arts is able to pull that off with the, with all of their students. Or even some success rates like that in LLL. We've now seen both Flixer and Slippery Nip back-to-back -back lose runs in Lethal Lava Land. Let's see if Tag is able to break the streak here. Break the cycle. Overcome it. Evolve. Adapt. Overcome. Now, now it just sounds like you're naming off uh, gaming events here. Break the cycle. Evolve. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a marketing enthusiast here, folks. Yes. Yes. Oh man. And then I believe, yeah, and I believe the next, the next one in line is is uh actually at a major event in Glitch Region. So, yeah, I mean that'll be that'll be a good one to watch in September when that rolls around. As for right now, of course, we've got Tag still on LLL. A little bit red, but of course, the the Delta splits that you see in front of you are only part of the story. You've still got the best possible time, and of course, you can never really predict how a run's going to follow out. I mean, you could see a runner, again, be pl like, say, plus 10 out of HMC, and then they play almost perfectly for the rest of the run, vice versa playing almost perfectly in the first half and then breaking down and falling apart in the second half. Anything is possible. And I don't think Nintendo ever expected this to happen. I'm pretty sure Nintendo, I mean, unless unless Nintendo has the uh, foresight of uh, Zeus's parents over here, I do not think they imagined people would still be very actively playing this game. Uh, 26 years after its initial release date. It's just honestly incredible how this game has evolved over time. I still can't believe that this game is like eight years older than me. Yeah, I want to say this game is probably older than what, 95% of the audience out there? I'm not going to be asking people to dox their ages out there, but <laughs> like based on our uh, demographics in the community, it looks like this game is probably older than a good chunk of all of all us. Hmm. Is definitely an old game and still considered to be one of the greatest games of all time. Most definitely. I think, unless this was a complete troll, I think I even saw an article come out from uh, Psychology Today that said uh, Mario 64, when played by the older generation, helps uh, keep their brains more active. So, Mario 64 not only making a, a difference in the uh, children of today, the children of the young adults today in speedrunning, but also keeping the brains of those older than us uh, active. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't, that doesn't apply to me. I'm too young. But, I mean, I still play the game. It still makes my brain have uh, certain chemical reactions. I can't confirm whether or not they're positive ones, but... <laughs> Say, give it's it another. Speed, uh, it's speed running. It's give it, speed running. Give it another four to five years. You will. Um, you will. 
most likely uh, be starting to think about how old you are or how quickly time goes. Look, my my only goal in life is to be is to reach my true inner zen, like that of uh, Luna Jump. Truly the calmest speedrunner in the community. All right, I will make this disclaimer here from our uh, from our Twitch staff member here on chat, Weak Frank. Guys, uh, remember, age is an actual is very serious around here. Even if as a joke, please don't go around and uh, treat it as such. I guess I made a slip up there in the booth talking about uh, just the age of this game overall. But please, no more uh, no more spamming of the uh, ages, please and thank you. Yeah, especially underage, because of course. You know, you can't be you can't be under 13 on this platform. And if you're going to advertise as such, you, you really shouldn't be here. Like, of course, we, we love everyone that comes and watches, but, you know, there are still rules that need to be followed on Twitch. Tag, unfortunately, missing chip clip. And uh, if we take a look on the right side of the screen here, Zeus, Slip got the BLJ into WAP's Fortress. Shoot, I was hoping he was going to try to continue the run. He just decided to play along with it, unfortunately not connecting on Salt Canalus. So we're not going to be seeing some alternative hijinks. All right, and while we've got our runners here uh, restarting and still coming back from practice, now may be a good time for a word from our sponsors, Urban Arts. Don't go away. More Mario 64 action coming here soon. Urban Arts helped prepare me for college by giving me a lot of experiences working both independently and collaboratively with other people to make really cool games and taught me how to put my all into creative projects and that helped me put together a very strong portfolio for college. The best part about being in the urban arts community is the people that you meet. A lot of the people here are have the same interests as me, so in the future, making friends here will benefit me and them and everyone around because we all benefit from each other by gaining skills that other people had that I may need. Urban arts helped me see myself differently by showing me that I can be a good leader. In the studio program, I was assigned the role as project manager, and fulfilling that role for the first time actually helped me realize that I have good leadership skills, and it really helped me to develop them.
All right, and welcome back here, folks, to the hour three and a half, I believe, now of... Wait a minute. No, we're two and a half hours in, but still in the third hour slot here of the Speedrun World Record Circuit 16-star tournament here on Twitch.tv slash speedrun here. West Dog along with Zeus VA in the booth as we see Cheese cooking up a delicious run right now here in Lethal Lava Land. But while we were at break, it looks like we received a quick uh, donation, Zeus. You want to give that a little bit of a read off? Yeah, so we have a $20 donation from one of the previous casters, Mita, who has said, Did you know that uh, fellow caster West Dog currently holds five different world records across three games? Uh, Super Mario 64 co-op in three different categories. Uh, Sunset Overdrive, he's got one record, one world record. And Super Smash Bros. Uh, North American and PAL N64, one world record. Very impressive. Glad to see that Meter was able to do a quick little uh, deep dive into the speedrun.com page. Thank you for the $20 donation, mm -hmm. Meter. We appreciate it. I believe I'm actually involved in one or two of those, uh, one of those co-op records as well. I, I know you do have some, oh wait, yeah, that's right, I think you were in, uh, the 31 star world record before you had to go to bed? Yes, I was. So yeah, Zoo, oh, yeah. so yeah, three out of your four casters so far today all share a world record in Super Mario 64 co-op, Wes, Zeus, and Anime. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I guess, um, mm -hmm. Mead Super Mario 64 co-op world record win. At this rate, we need to start making it a requirement that, uh, casters hold some form <laughs> of a world record in some kind of Super Mario 64 category. Yeah, you're not qualified otherwise. You don't have one, you can go home. <laughs> Actually, you're, prob <laughs> you're probably at home, let's be real. Yeah. Uh, not really going anywhere. I mean, we can't really discriminate against our audience who is surely watching this uh, on their phones in their car somewhere. Mm. Unless their car is their home, then in which case I'm really uh, caught with my hands behind my back here. I mean, to be fair, if you if you live in like a motorhome, that's pretty cool. Speaking of pretty cool, Cheese's run is looking very, very cool right now. Like, he's definitely. on a he's on a very nice run, 15:06 best possible time in HMC, and he's just finishing up here. Now we see we did see cheese. Wait, is this gonna? Oh, it's just almost golded. It had to have just tied gold because that best possible time did not move even a little bit. Hmm. Very nice performance from Cheese out of HMC. I believe that's a 10-13. We did see Cheese uh, get two personal bests during the Double Down tournament not too long ago. Going from an mm. uh, unofficial 15-31 down to a 15-23 or 15-22, then down to a 15 13 and she's normally when you see uh runners uh doing like 70 or 120 star categories they typically tend to stay in those categories but now that cheese has uh more than just dipped his toes but fully taken the dive into 16 star he feels ready to compete and i mean he's just showing what he's got right now although not oh, going absolutely dip, but can we get some uh, sad chests in the chat for no chip honestly on this kind of pace can you even blame him i mean Chip clip is chip clip is very risky, and on this kind of run, that 0 0.8 uh, that 0 0.8 seconds time save that you get from it might just not be worth it for you, especially in this kind of event. I mean, even if I mean, if, unless he was getting if he was getting these kinds of runs all the time, unfortunately, failing to get the jump for front sub. You know, if you're getting these kinds of runs all the time, you know, sure, go for chip clip, but. You know, these runs aren't easy to come by for most of these runners. Some of them will get them more than others, like, you know, Slip and Ouija and uh, Suiji, but, you know, for Cheese, any any opportunity to stay ahead of PB and, you know, get that, get get another one, like last time, you gotta take, you gotta, you gotta pick your chance, you gotta pick your shots. Yeah, yeah. 
definitely makes sense in a format like this too. She's still only sporting a 15-49, even if, uh, yeah, you're, oh wow, I cannot believe he saved that as he's still getting some very shaky movement. Yeah, he was not able to get the jump dive off, the frustration coming out from Cheese, unfortunate reset. Yeah, I was going to say, I was wonder I was about to say it's a little bit risky going on the left side after taking the burn. You have to get the one burn onto the bridge or onto the uh, the edge of the uh, the entry, but unfortunately, you know, it, it's it's very hard when you've only got that one burn window. I think, yeah, the, the, it would have been a little bit slower, but perhaps the safer op option would have been to move on the right side. But at the same time, this is about speed and consistency. Uh, and slip, Slippery Nip really embodying both of those things right now, entering DDD minus 10.9 on his 1520. As he's going for chip clipped. Oh. oh man. Chip clip has not been particularly friendly to the runners today. Well, nonetheless, it is only well, I mean, it's still quite detrimental. It's still quite uh still quite bad. An eight second time loss, but slip already with a minus double digits. Uh, advantage coming into Dire Dire Docks. I think this run is still salvageable as long as he hits the front sub. Please, no caster's curse. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Here we go. Wes is finally breaking free of the cycle. I want to break free. <laughs> well, um, yeah. I mean... It, yeah, the 8 seconds is very unfortunate. It means that a 14 is sadly impossible. Oh! Oh, man. Missing pole glitch and the immediate reset. Yeah. Oh, man. Missing pole glitch really hurts. Something that you only do in 16 star, 1 star, and 0 star. But... Man, like, it, it, it is brutal when you miss. And at this level, yeah, you can't afford it. Alright, but we got Ouija here uh, on a run for right now. Touching the basement door, deciding not to reset this go-around. Uh, we'll have to wait and see how this one plays out for him in the Saging Sag land. I mean, Shifting Sand land. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think uh, we, Ouija is definitely one of those runners that's very, very picky. And he has every right to do so because, of course, he is, much like Cheese, one of the greatest runners of all time, unquestionably. He's the world record holder in 70 star. He's third place, I believe, in, uh, in 16 star. He's second place in one star. And he's had world record pace runs for zero star. Mm -hmm. He is unquestionably one of the best runners. Of course, the only category that he really is held back by, and it's even hard to say that he's held back by it, because he doesn't he hasn't really picked up the category in a while properly, is 120 star, which of course the other incredible runner, Cheese, has most notably got the world record in. Yeah, and that's the incredible thing about uh, Ouija. It's that uh, despite not having, I mean, he, he has a he posted time in 120 star of one hour 39 minutes and 42 seconds, which is quote only good for 13th place on the leaderboard. But if if I'm not mistaken here, Zeus, if you take a look at all the best paced runs through. Uh, Bob on Battlefield. Unless Liam has recently uh, taken over uh, Ouija, his early game is so beyond next level. He has all the fastest pace times the through the first 20 to 25 percent of the 120 speed run. So I could just imagine it must be a little more difficult because we see him through here with a 16 and 70, where you just absolutely need perfection to keep everything going, and it's really hard to as, 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 to keep that kind of a mindset in a category as long and as frustrating as 120. 
Mm, absolutely. And, of course, like, in, in 16 Star, you really see Ouija's mindset come through with, you know, he's going for every, every possible hard strategy that he can think of and find to save every, every fraction of a second available. And he does it in spectacular fashion. But, of course, the trade-off with that does come down to being much more inclined to reset and given that he has a bit of that speedrunner's perfectionistic um expectation from himself as you know which is understandable from some of his caliber in this game you know he is much more prone to resetting at at more what many would consider to be more simple mistakes this one was not such a mistake. <laughs> right on cue there. Yes, unfortunately, uh, making a mistake. Definitely not a simple mistake, as pole skip is one of the more difficult strats to go for there in the volcano. Unfortunately, there's going to be the reset for Ouija, but now we take a focus on tag. And just to remind everybody at home, this is tag 609. Unfortunately, we do see the similarities between the G and the 6, but this is not... Tago, who is another big named Mario 64 speedrunner. This is Tag. I think we would all love to see Tago in one of these events, but after uh, after 70 star BTR, I don't think I don't think he wants to do 16. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, we did see Tago uh, grind out 16 star for a little bit last year, getting it down to a. Uh, 15 3x but it's a it's a it's a completely different beast the uh, constant resetting is, is, is it, 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 play, it takes a toll on you mm, absolutely you know some people like these runners have the ability to just sit there and reset without much issue but you know i've i've talked to many runners who will say that you know i th you know like paraphrasing so they'll say something along the lines of, I just can't handle 16 star. You know, they, they'll, they'll opt to do 120 star instead because they'd prefer to play for an hour and 50 minutes, give or take, as opposed to 15 to 16 minutes just because they don't like resetting a ton. And, you know, I'd say... I'd say, I think it's fair to say that a majority of runners that move beyond 70 star end up in that kind of mindset of, I just want to do, I just want to keep a run going rather than reset every five seconds. And of course, 16 star is still the most played category in the game, but it's also, I mean, for a long time, it was the and still it still is the most accessible uh, category. Oh, absolutely! Not the not the not at least the category we're seeing here today with the lobby backwards long jump, but the no LBLJ approach. It's the most beginner friendly uh, way to come into this game, in my opinion. Absolutely. Oh, I'm I'm personally uh, still a, I'm still one that would say. It's better to opt to start with 70, in my opinion, just for the movement that you get from it. But, of course, 16 is the easiest, the shortest category that you can pick up the easiest. Mm -hmm. We'll say, yeah, the time difference between 16 and 70, it all depends on how much you really want to uh, get into the game. If you know you're going to be invested in Mario 64 for a while and want to explore as much of the castle as possible, then by all means, go into... 70 but if you're just still wanting to make sure like if this is the right game for you if this is something you are interested in then 16 is the uh more adaptable category for that kind of mindset yeah and then there are the uh the people who i don't want to say that they're insane but they have um interesting tastes and they'll start with 120 star <laughs> and i've met people who've done that and it is one of the most unbelievable things that I've ever heard is starting this cat starting this game with 120 star. The only thing I can think of that would legitimately be more absurd is starting with zero star. Oh yeah. I honestly wonder for someone who's never played the game before, what would take longer for them to complete 120 or zero? Maybe not zero, but maybe just one star even, because zero star, I mean that DDD skip is brutal. 
DDD, it's not just DDD skip either. If you've never played, if you've never played the game, you have to learn LBLJ. You have to learn Dark World No Reds. You have to learn DDD skip. You have to learn BLJs. You have to learn Fire C. No Reds. You have to learn Bowser in the Sky. No Reds. There's less that you're doing than 120 star, but zero star is just incredibly difficult in an entirely different way. It pushes your limits for optimization, while 120 star is pushing your limits for just finishing the run without falling apart. A lot of, in, in fairness, a lot of people that do end up uh, getting 120 star runs actually do it by accident uh, in the middle of a one star attempt. All right, we see Tag coming out with a 10-17 here. I believe this is still 14 capable if he's got a clean end game. We're now coming well, to the beginning of the end. Let's see how this all plays out. He's got one and a half seconds to work with to get a 15 flat for the second half of the run. So I don't think it's realistic that he gets a 14, but a 15 OX is still very, very doable. I believe I have seen some... 14s come out of 10 one x's before but yep and there we go just like that unfortunately the 14 is dead mm. yeah you will you probably have i mean a 10 like a 10 11 a 10 12 those are usable for a 14 but a 10 17 i mean like it, it you would have to have probably the greatest second half ever run and ever run by any runner ever in order to get a, uh, in order to get a 14 of that kind of HMC exit. Oh, and Sweegee started runs. All right. He's come out of, he's come out of the practice den. So Sweegee's now tuned up and ready to go. We look forward to seeing him here on the big screen soon. Speaking of which, guys, I mean, notice we have seven names on the board, but only six screens up right now uh you may notice that uh trey bordo is currently not showing here and as a uh loyal one month subscriber of trey bordo i've crafted this little message here for anybody in the chat who needs to know what's going on trey bordo has smoked one too many bordo packs and cannot compete <laughs> nah i'm trolling no cap trey's experiencing some technical issues and he's not able to compete this time yoshi <laughs> So if anybody is wondering where uh, Trey Bordo is at, just know uh, you can copy and pasta that. But only it will only make sense if you are, a, of course, a subscriber to Trey Bordo. <laughs> that completely caught me off guard. I was not expecting to hear about the Bordo pack yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's looking like some of the uh, secondhand Bordo is probably making its way through the booth as commentators cannot stop laughing right now. Oh my <laughs> Military grade laughing gas. He hates his hands. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but what's no laughing matter here is Tag is getting out of Fire C, the 1303 exits and is still potentially on first pa place pace, but we'll have to see how BLJs go. Mm. Yeah, we'll have to see, because BLJs, of course, is... Would, do you think it would be fair to say that BLJs are the most... is, like, the most iconic speedrun strategy ever? I am unfortunately not too familiar with many of the other... Uh, notable speed running, uh, like, communities or strats, perhaps, maybe outside of Minecraft, just because of how big it is. I definitely say it is, uh, I, I would have to say it's definitely up there in terms of, like, iconic status, or just in terms of groundbreaking, mm. yes. Unfortunate for, uh, 50 Star Door BLJ for Tag. But, yeah, no, I, I think... Because I, I think I'd say it probably is like it, it's got to be one of the three most well known. Because like if you were to ask somebody, what do you know about speedrunning? There's a good chance that they're going to say something Minecraft related, 
something Zelda related, probably Ocarina of Time, or they'll talk, or they'll bring up the BLJ. I know that before I ever, before I ever did speed running, even I, you know, I didn't when I didn't even really know what it was like two, two and a half years ago. I didn't, you know, I, I still knew what the backwards long jump was. Unfortunately, Tag's run coming to an end here. I just was caught in amazement that uh, Tag fell all the way from the top of bits, but landed on top of the amp there to get shocked. That mm. was uh, probably Incredible. the greatest the greatest accidental uh, pinpoint accuracy I've ever seen. Mm. If I, I think most runners would, would give an arm and a leg to have that kind of pinpoint accuracy with Bowser throws. Amen to that. Myself included. Um. <laughs> Squilliam Fancy Sun Live, love the name by the way, does also, <laughs> does also bring up a good point. Uh, Super Mario Bros. also has uh, been very iconic in the speedrunning scene. Even early on mm. in speedrunning, I was aware of uh, people out on the grind for the sub 5 in any percent. I honestly Absolutely. didn't even know that Warp Zones existed until I was a kid and somebody showed me how they could beat the game in less than 10 minutes. And I thought that was incredible as a kid. Yeah, honestly, it, it is amazing. And especially, like, in, like, you look at now compared to, say, 10 years ago in terms of speedrun popularity, like, it, it's it's getting closer and closer to being considered a, a fully legitimate esport, I would say. Like, it's becoming more and more popular by the week. I mean, even now you've got people somehow speedrunning subway surfers, and I believe it just recently passed Mario 64 as the most, uh, the most played speed game ever. Really? Yeah, I was, I checked it last night on speedrun.com, and I went to, uh, most runs submitted and yeah sort by most runs and lo and behold number one is subway surfers yeah i guess apparently i don't even know where like that's that's kind of a weird like i guess i just don't know the full story but i guess brazilian tiktokers or like brazilian tiktok influencers challenge their viewers to do a subway surfer runs but from the sound of it it's not even a speed run it's uh how long can they go without collecting a single coin, which that doesn't sound like a speed run. You're not trying to reach an end goal in as quick a time as possible. You're trying to, it's a survival challenge. So why it's on yeah. speedrun.com, I don't know. I must feel so, I gotta feel sorry for all those moderators. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, like how long is it, how long has it been around? Like, I want to say maybe three weeks that it's been like properly popular, maybe a little bit longer and it's nearly, it's at 45,000 total submitted runs. Good gracious. Like, in comparison, Super Mario 64 is at 36,000, and Minecraft Java Edition is at 27,000. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. It's got over double the amount of runs submitted than Super Mario Odyssey. She's looking at a very nice... Uh, Fiasi exit right now. Yeah, he did unfortunately lose a little bit of time on uh, the pole glitch, was not able to get the triple jump off, but he still is looking like he's on a good pace. Hard to tell right now because for some reason Cheese doesn't have a fire C split. He splits once he gets into bits, so we'll have to pray mm -hmm. if he gets some good BLJs going. He's still looking at these splits, it's looking like he's comparing to a 1539 with his best turning time of 1549. So this is still going to be a good run here, perhaps in position to make some leaderboard shifts here. Let's see how this plays out. Oh my word, I have never seen such a long list of moderators. I mean, yeah, when you're getting thousands of runs a day, I can imagine you need all hands on deck. Five, six, seven, eight. Right, and while... Right, and while Cheese is uh, coming into Bowser in the sky near the end of this speed run, guys, we are nowhere near the end of this event here. We're just now about to reach the halfway mark, or I believe the 40% uh, mark here, and we're more than halfway to our goal here of $750 for the students of the Urban Arts Foundation. 
Folks, Urban Arts is a free college program that helps uh, teach the underrepresented students the art and science of video game development. 100% of kids who go through the doors of Urban Arts walk out moving on to higher education. The kids that walk through the doors of Urban Arts could be the future speedrun developers of tomorrow. Exclamation point donate in the chats if you'd like to donate to the cause. Exclamation point UA if you'd like to learn more about Urban Arts. And on that note, let's see if Cheese can clutch out these throws here. For potential, looking like, yeah, he could potentially take third place here with some perfect throws. Mm. Yeah, if taking that from Flix uh, would be a nice, would be a good step up from his uh, fifth, current fifth place. Adding $80 to his prize winnings. Provisionally. Oh, no. I believe he did this in his, uh, he did, he had the same issues of grabbing the tail in his 120 Star World record as well. Oh, oh. no. Unfortunate. Mario. You hate to see it. That's just how the game goes. All right, well, as we come into the top of the hour, we're now going to be going into hour four. On that note, it looks like it might be a good time for a potential commentator shift. I won't leave Zeus hanging, though, as we await the word of Electric. We'll see if he's uh, ready to come in here. But, uh, Zeus, through, through, this, uh, ver, ver, through this first hour, what do, you, uh, what do you think of the events here so far? Oh, man, it, it has been absolutely incredible to watch. I mean... We've had great performances from pretty much every runner. And of course, you know, Suiji's been practicing for most of it, but we've been able to be in the booth as he started. And you can't ask for much more than that. The world record holder on the front of the screen right now. And on a ridiculous pace. Plus just about plus ten, and he's still fourteen he's still fourteen pace in five C. Yeah, plus 10 comparing to a 16.01 finish time. I don't know what these splits are, but uh, this is absolutely crazy. It mm. uh, looks like you're getting actually some, uh, you're getting a specific uh, request here from Nils in the chat. Can you talk about why Emulator is so much worse than Nintendo 64? No comment. All right. Uh, with no comment, we now see Electric coming in to the booth. So that's going to do it for me here, folks. I will be on later tonight for commentaries but we hope you've enjoyed hour three get ready for hour four with zeus and electric zeus pleasure buddy uh, good luck here electric take it away buddy here we go. Yahoo! oh looks like electric hasn't popped in yet anymore but um i can carry on commentating for a little bit um, so yeah, we've got Suiji here, minus 32 out of Fire Sea on the 1601. But, um, yeah, 1455 best possible time into BLJs. We could potentially see the 14 here. Alright, welcome back to the booth electric. And there we go, we're gonna be a geostation about this booth. Yay, we can hear you now. Alright, hello everyone. And uh, how are our standings looking? It looks like an attack with an early lead here. Uh, were you here for that run, or...? Um... I... I believe I was. My, my short-term memory is failing me. <laughs> I, I can certainly understand that with Suiji on the left-hand side on a... Looks like potential 14 pace? Definitely very low 15 yeah. pace. Oh, yeah. Without question, first place pace. Without question. And Suiji, we'll see what uh, comes out on the ending here, but really been making major strides on upgrade in this ending. Oh, almost oh, getting oh. the circle, but... Yeah, like, what, I mean, Suiji going into BLJs, I don't think anyone can be particularly nervous for him. I mean, when, when you're named after good BLJ, when, or rather, when good BLJs are named after you, you probably aren't going to have issues with yeah. BLJs. Not, not unless you're going for that 3x pace where you literally need perfect BLJs every time. Yeah. But, uh, but of course, this is sweet. This is Suiji. He's the world record holder. 
you know, people people call BL good BLJs, sweet GBLJs. Like, it, right. it, you can't ask for anything more than what he delivers. And uh, delivering and a very that, nice low 15 for that just easy mm, first place here by 13 seconds. Slightly early split, I believe, but that should still be a 15 2 that's what what a run and I, within just a few hours of starting this event too like sweet sweetie in both of these events just really showing that on any given day he's capable of at least a 15 x within a few attempts you know just just give him some warm-up time first of course yeah it it really goes to like he he's not the world record holder for no reason we can say that right I, I i certainly don't think anyone else has spent as much time at least on stream grinding out blj's and and like really just trying to do as much as you can because I, I think most people would mainly focus on the actual blj's and then whatever castle movement you get after just who cares you, you got the hard part over with but sweetie would sit there and practice and try to maintain speed through the staircase and i i think now it's like relatively well understood in the community how you maintain that speed like into the uh tippy lobby room but Back uh, during that era before, Sweetie just just completely revolutionized this category. Uh, that, that that was that that was the biggest thing. I I feel like it's like BLJs weren't really a thing that you focused a ton on. But yeah, I, I would watch his stream and practice like an hour would be dedicated to BLJ sometimes. Like it was, he he was just he was on that grind set in a really particular way. But it, it's certainly paying off for him with runs like that. Yeah, I I, I still I actually need I need to learn how to how to get that how to get that lob that tippy lobby movement because i haven't figured that one out yet yeah but, I, I still um, just rock the the basic side flip dive <laughs> like yeah no need to make I things hard i don't even do that I do, I do a i do a slightly different movement where i do a double jump kick i get a little oh. bit of running speed do that double jump kick and then side flip uh side flip dive slightly Ooh, faster than those side flips really clean uh, first PLJ from slip there just has a second on his uh, event PB so far, but we'll see how the second BLJ goes. And third try catch, still gonna be good. Nice ledge grab cancel. We're getting into Sky's three is... seconds ahead here. Probably this is probably not gonna be a an improvement over tag to get him into second, but very oh, ledge very grab doable. On the long jump. Yeah, nice nice. Uh, cast long jump, cano assisted long jump. <laughs> um, I, I remember the very first time I heard someone call it cast on on like a commentary. I thought that they just I, I thought I misheard them at first. Oh, nearly getting the wall kick there, but having to take a little extra mm. time in these elevators. It's gonna be tight, but I, I think improvement is still possible even after that mistake. Yeah, it'll be very close, but yeah, no, it looks it looks like that that should be the case. Forty. 40-ish second throws. We could be looking at potentially a 15-17 here. And the Mario cam for the first throw. Kind of uncommon. Mm. And, then and then there's Kano. And then there's Kano who goes Mario cam the whole time. Oh! oh, oh not even getting the, the right out. Grab and... Yeah, that's going to be a reset. It's me, Mario! And with that, we're going to take a quick caster break, but we'll be back in just a moment. It's me, Ladies and gentlemen.
All right, and let's see how Tags Sky is going to go after a beautiful second set of BLJ is going to preserve this run just slightly ahead of his event PB. As meanwhile, other runners just trying to work their way through the lobby and basement area. I'm Electric joined in the booth by Zeus. So how, how are you feeling with the, these runs just like continuously popping out? First, we had like that slip attempt getting to throws. We have the Suiji attempt in Sky. Tag, unfortunately, going to be taking a fall there with that angled uh, jump dive, but still like yeah. all these pacers coming out. Yeah, no, it, it, it really is incredible. I mean, I, I fully expected to have a, a couple of, uh, you know, Womps reset time, uh, you know, some Womps moments, as you usually get in, uh, in 16, but not having that yet. Tag barely saving the, the elevators, but yeah, at this the... rate, it doesn't look like this is going to be an improvement on event PB. Yeah, Unfortunately, I mean, of course, that. Of course, going into uh, going into Bowser in the Sky, this wasn't going to be able to. This wasn't going to be able to uh, to dethrone Suiji and his 15:02. But it would have made it exceptionally hard for anyone else to take second. Uh, but unfortunately, of course, having a bit of a Bowser in the Sky melt meltdown, and now looking at probably another one X, but a little bit higher. Yeah. Right, and, and this is kind of about what we saw with Actually, the double no. down too. Not going to be a 1x. It's just narrowly gonna missing be... the 1x yeah. threshold there. Yeah, going to be slightly slower than slips. Uh, slippery nips 1520 with a 1523. It's still a very slow no reset attempt. And that, as we saw, a double mm. down tag got a ton of these like uh, pretty low HMC exit uh, runs going. Like I look like this was like a 10 10. Uh, yet again, and, and so it's only going to be a matter of time uh, throughout this couple of days where we're seeing Tag just get a bunch of those paces. Something's going to get through Sky on uh, some really, really good pace. So we got Cheese mm. advancing through the MIPS here, trying to improve that 1549 on the leaderboard. Yeah, and then of course, not to take away from Cheese's run, but also we've got Suiji just coming out of LLL. Uh, I can't quite tell how green he is, but I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I think, some double digits in there. And it looks like 14 on event PB, which already the event PB is a 15.02, so a 15.01 on the splits from that early split. So, I mean, this is a, yeah. quite a pace, and pulling out the just ludicrous emergency exit strat. Like, I can't yeah. really overstate how much harder that is than the normal strat, and you're saving, like, maybe 10 to 12 frames with it. Like, it, it is very little time save for how much harder you're making that star on yourself. Like, in HMC, yeah. you've already... Watch for Rolling Rocks to worry about with the RNG. You've got the uh, Dory star to worry about with, like, that box triplet can just be so finicky. And, like, that's not normally a star you want to make hard on yourself. But Suiji just says, I want the time save. Give me he the time. He wants the smoke. He wants the smoke. <laughs> but, yeah, no. Suiji, I mean, he, he, he just proves why he's the world record holder and doesn't hold anything back. And, and getting the first C off the, the C upslide to boot, like that's just, oh, just man. hyper optimal. And, and a lot of this is fully intentional. You'll watch him do PB attempts and like he'll miss the second first C in Dark World and reset. Like he's one of the only runners I've ever seen reset a Suki over like not getting double first Ds. Yeah. Like, it's, he, he really takes Ouija's infamous like reset heavy mentality to, to another level at times with just his expectation for absolute perfectionism. And yeah. beautiful Dory triple. Of course, he's not going to be happy with the ledge grab at the start of that, but a, a picturesque HMC for any other runner. And a beautiful, a beautiful uh, fire C throw from Cheese. Looking at a sub-13 exit, it seems. We'll see how Mips goes for Suiji. A 10.01 HMC is absolutely nothing to sneeze at here. You're going to miss 12. the punch, 56. though. 12.56 fire C for Cheese. And this very, year, very I, nice. I, I feel like Mips has been just giving Suiji a lot of issues on paces recently. Uh, I've been noticing yeah. on his stream, like, I've been seeing him have to grab Mips in the hallway. And it's un unfortunate yeah, it, it's how much unfortunate. time that one is. But a beautiful glitchy wall kick entry, at least, to get into VDD. Very, very nice run from Cheese thus far. Does get a little bit of a slower clip, but still first try through the 50 star door. And Suiji's gonna go ahead and uh, miss 
a chip clip, unfortunately, and that's going to be the end of this run. Looks like he's going to continue. Might just want the front sub attempt. And I really wouldn't blame him if, if he just wants to continue mm. this just to kind of get a feel for another front sub attempt. But Yeah. Um, and that's kind of the way she goes with chip clip. Like, it is that nice second time save, but if you miss it, it's really devastating with the time loss, especially from, like, when you swim against an upward-facing slope like that. Mario just gets propelled upwards. Oh, yeah. And that happens, like, I mean... Mo I think most walls in DDD, you swim into them, you're either, you're either going to get propelled upwards, or you're going to pretty much just downwalk. Yup. I mean, you see, that, you see that in DDD right chests. Like, super clean backup. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the very end of chest. That's the worst, like, when you swim under the star, and then you just get slammed to the bottom of the stage, and you're just like... Yeah, up. and then you try to swim back up, but you have to, like, swim out a little bit to actually be able to move up again. Yeah. Cheese, yeah, Cheese went into Bowser in the Sky on PB pace. I don't think this could be still, but this is definitely still going to be a big leaderboard improvement if we have good throws. Oh yeah, this, given that he hits all of his throws, this may well be a third place. And of course, oh, as I say hard. that, as I say that, he misses the final throw. We still have time for a little bit of an event PB, but... Oh, uh, that's... Uh, uh. Just had to go for the quick one, but I not think quite. it's still possible. Yeah, I think that should still be an event PB, but it'll no longer be a third place performance. Yeah, and you can see it on his face. He just he he wanted that that like really nice real PB, but just the throws just not quite letting it through. But let's still see, like his leaderboard standing a little bit. How much how much time would he have lost from that? I want to say. 16-ish seconds? Like, this would have been, without question, at least a 15-16. Missing the backup throw is approximately 8 seconds, and then the first one I think is 9, so maybe 17 seconds time lost there. So it's still a very, very good run from Cheese, just unfortunate that he missed those last two throws. Oh, and he's tied Flixer again! That's like the seventh time! She's in Flixer rivalry lives on as we got Flixer in Dark World now. And, and Flixer, you know, is going serious. I've seen so many world records and PBs with shirtless uh, cams, so you, you can tell Flixer's really in full focus mode without the shirt on. Yeah, Flixer notably hasn't really been playing as much mario uh, in exchange for going to the gym to get jacked yeah those uh progression pictures on twitter are definitely proof of the hard work mm, i think uh, much like much like flixer i think many people were inspired by ouija who of course did his own uh did his own uh my brain is short circuiting his own uh gym his own little gym um Oh my word, I was with my English today. He, he had his gym journey. He's had his own gym journey. There we go, there we go. I finally did it. That's my speed run over. Hopefully Slick will get this speed run through fire scene. Oh, I had to, I had to read the teleprompters in the end. Slip and Fire Sea looking very nice. We do love it when runners get to Fire Sea, because then we have something to talk about. Yep. And so we are going to have to go with a standard long jump ending here. Oh, Slip just going to go with jump dives instead. And yet, yet again, <laughs> oh, no. this is kind of showing like why you don't really tend to go for jump dives on the railing there. Even though it is a mm. bit faster, like it is much harder to actually hit them with the right timing. Wilco in chat hitting the nail on the head saying Zeus looking at the pictures right now of Ouija's gym progression. <laughs> Absolutely true. How could you not? Oh, and oh I'm missing, missing the, the tail grab. grab. I, I'm oh. not sure exactly uh, whether that was like too early or what what exactly happened. There, he but... was he was too far to the left of the tail was mm. the problem. He didn't actually get over the hitbox. Yeah, and that's a weird quirk of how you actually grab Bowser in this game. With uh, You just have to run over his tail, and then from then on, 
All you have to do is be facing towards the same direction he is and be close enough to him, and pressing B will register a grab. And so that's, like, mm. sometimes if you've seen a player face away from Bowser in front of him and, like, punch and then just grab him mysteriously in the sky, that that's why. It's mainly useful for mm. backups, but if you want a really fast first grab on uh, the Fire Sea throw in particular, it's really useful for that as well, since a jump yeah. dive does also count as the uh, grab input. Yeah, and the the reason why people will do that is because because you have that momentum going uh, going towards the bomb. When you grab his tail, it actually pulls Bowser closer to the bomb, so you can do a shorter spin, and you're more likely to hit the throw because you've pulled him closer than he normally would be. Yeah. And people what... also use this method in Bowser in the Dark World as well. Yeah, like, that's how you're able to get those really, really quick throws, because, like, otherwise, like, trying to spin him in only one rotation and have enough speed to reach the bomb, like, it would just be straight up impossible. But, like, with, with that extra, like, little bit of a nudge towards the bomb, like, you, you don't have to spin the stick quite as counter-fast. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, now we're seeing Slippery Nip and Bowser in the Sky with a best possible time of 15-13. Unfortunately, again, failing ultimate. And gonna be missing that cycle and falling down from the elevators because of that wall rub. Hey, my. Unfortunate. That's gonna be a GG there. Just had to go for that last platform just for the extra speed, but couldn't quite make it over. And like, like all from that, I, I, I want to say it was slip. I saw earlier have issues with that same wall rub on, on trying ultimate like that. Ultimate's triple jump is just you can't understate how hard it is. Like it looks kind of easy, but it, you you have to remember that like these players are doing that triple jump towards the camera, which is very unnatural movement for most Mario movement. Mm. It's absolutely a difficult thing to pull off. Like I've, I I think a lot of people would probably consider to me, consider me to be a pretty decent runner, and I I'm not too different from Ouija in that I'll just sit down and practice and grind these ridiculous strategies that save only you know 0.2 seconds or something just because i can and even then i still can't get ultimate i can get just about every other trick but ultimate is just one of those things that is genuinely one like incredibly difficult and is probably the hardest thing to actually pull off in bowser bowser in the sky no reds i i would consider I would consider um, ultimate the ultimate ending to be harder than the task long jump. It's me, Mario. And that's uh, I, I think that pretty much speaks for itself with how long it took even the task long jump to be implemented at the world record level. Hmm. I think the main thing with that is that with all with ultimate with the ultimate ending, there's multiple moving parts to it. With the task long jump that we all, or that, you know, the, the runners do, it's, it, it, you're, you're aiming for a particular point. It, it's, it's a timing and placement thing as opposed to, and, and it's something that, it's not even really a timing thing. It's more so just it's a just placement thing. It's just one very thing. precise movement instead of having It's to just a particular a long jump. It's a particular yeah. long jump on a set, on a certain angle. And it's much easier to get something like that consistently than something that is very timing based and position based because of course they're both they go, they're both they both rely on posi on positions but the ultimate finish is also timing if you're too fast you're gonna fail it if you're too slow you're gonna fail it that, that's what also makes things difficult too is there's a little bit of like how you're having to account for how the elevators have moved like like you're not going to be on exactly the same elevator cycle every single time and so coming out of that wall kick you know you, you need to have a little bit of awareness of like how is the elevator platform different this time from like, like is it earlier or later than what i'd normally be expecting and how do i need to move mario differently to account for that just like all sorts of stuff like like in dark world for instance when you get to the like uh elevators here and like you see okay i'm too late to still go for suki let me go ahead and do the oversight movement and go for chia instead now stuff like that rather than well like and you, you have to do that sort of mental accounting if you don't want to be just constantly burning attempts to having things not go exactly your way like the, the strats are going to end up having things look a little bit different every time because like no human is going to play like 100 percent perfectly every, all the way through these stages and so like having that just sort of awareness of like 
how you can save attempts and slip unfortunately there like just barely missing a ledge like little mistakes like that are already going to kill so many of your attempts and so if you can notice anything throughout your runs and in your next attempts try to watch out for that thing and you know try to do something a little bit differently to maybe save the attempt only lose a second instead of losing the whole run you know it's going to go to your advantage in the end when you just have two days to get a really really good attempt and anything throughout this run can kill a good pacer at any time yeah exactly and of course like and i think one of the things as well is like this game is not like it's it, conventionally it is not easy and when you've got the pressure of a time trial um and i i, I think this is worse uh, when you have a typical bracket style race it it is very difficult to keep your focus up enough that you don't make small mistakes and of course, at this level, when you make those small mistakes, they're going to get in your head. Exactly. Unless your name is Slippery Nip, who can just shrug off everything. Like, you're not, it's going to take a toll on you, and those things are going to slowly snowball. Until eventually, you know, you hit that one mistake where you're just done with the run. Even if it's technically fine, you might, you might just decide that you need to refresh yourself and you reset. And I think that's a lot of what, say, Suiji and Ouija will do is, even though they know that the run is usable, and you know that the run can still get, can still be a pretty solid time, you know, they, they don't want a solid time, they want a good time. And if they accept anything less than what they're looking for, they can set a precedent. Exactly. And so, and of course, it kind of like yeah. reduces the focus when you don't care as much about the pace. You, you really aren't as focused on each of the individual stars. And, and mm. you know, a lot of these runners, they, they kind of know, like, okay, I'm finishing out another 150X. I don't really care in the first place. So, like, wh why would I bother finish this out when I'm not even going to be really giving it my all at these stars? You know, if I succeed, great. It was just like unfocused muscle memory. If I fail, like, it doesn't count because, you know. And it's like, like, the, the mental aspect of running this game is something that, like, you really, really can't understate. Like, it, it's mm. any little weird mistake that... If you have something that you do all the time to fail a star, and you stop doing it for a while, and then it just pops up when you're not expecting it, but, like, you'll just have this PTSD every time you approach that star for the next, like, five days, where it's, like, you'll be so concerned about missing the star that particular way. Even though, like, the previous 100 attempts, you never were concerned about it at all, and you never missed it that way. Like, it, it just takes one mistake on something that, like, you're not really expecting, and then you just kind of groan, and you go, like, okay, great, like, there's another mental block I've got to get over. Yeah, it, I think I think one of the biggest ones that many runners will find in um, in seventy star, for example, will be that TTC one hundred. Oh, uh, a lot God. of people, a lot of people struggle with that one. You know, I've seen people on all kinds of paces. I mean, most notably, I believe it was last year it break the record for seventy. Benji went into the last star of TikTok Clock Reds, and you know he was on world record pace, and even then. Like, you know, he, he, he fails the star and then ends up losing the run at the very end. And, and then you've got, you've got, you get so many runs as well that will fall to TTC 100, especially like TTC 100 is just one of those stars that like in practice, it may not be that difficult, but the moment that you apply it to a run, suddenly it's like, you're trying to traverse a mountain yeah. and not everyone's built for hiking. <laughs> hence exactly why right. hence why you have 16 runners that don't touch 70. yeah but, but but of course you have your own mountains to climb in 16 star it's just they're yeah. not entire stages worth of uh just some of the most insane platforming that 3d games have to offer like whose idea was it to make a totally vertically oriented stage and then design a physics engine with random invisible walls in vertically oriented stages <laughs> yeah <laughs> And then, of course, there's the fact of the camera, which, yeah. I mean, the camera's its own thing. Like, you talk to any casual player of the game, and they'll say that the camera is either the best or the worst thing in this, in this entire game, without question. Of yeah. course, as a runner, you inevitably get used to the camera and will find it pretty comfortable after a while, but so many people... You know, I've, I've seen so many people that pick up the game and they go, what the heck is this camera? Yeah, How do you even make this warning, function? 
fair warning to someone who's looking into like speed running this game if you get too used to the camera in this game you'll start needing to use inverted camera controls elsewhere like whenever <laughs> i play fall guys i have to use inverted uh x camera controls oh man that was that was fun when i was playing elden ring that one yeah i camera controls i'm used to playing mario with the uh with the mario camera then I go into Elden Ring and I try to do a C lift and suddenly the camera actually turns left. <laughs> You're like, wait, wait, wait. Press left. And I'm like, hang on a minute. But, but at the very least, though, I, I want to say Sunshine does work identically to this game. So if you get used to this game, you can still play Sunshine. Although I, I'm sure a bunch of SM64 runners have a problem with me encouraging people to play Sunshine. Yeah. Shout out to Drogi. <laughs> Beautiful lava boost from Tag, the double pulse Neil's skip Neil's giving some, sh throwing some pretty hard shade to Emulator, acting as if they didn't come from Emulator themselves. <laughs> Never forget your roots, guys. Never forget your roots. It's like the biggest thing with this game is you always got to remember where you came from. No, everyone. Everyone started out as a as a slow runner. Everyone's been bad at some point, or beginner. Yeah, absolutely no judgment for anyone who like is is still grinding for like a what. I, I remember when I was grinding for my own sub hour. Like I kept thinking like, oh, it shouldn't be this hard. This is such an easy time that like everyone gets. Like it's it's still hard, even though it's like a pretty mm. far time from record. It still is hard to get a sub hour time even in this game. And so, yeah. like, it's, like, you're exactly right. Like, you can never forget where you came from. And, like, e even when you get to, like, this kind of level and you look back and you're like, geez, I, I can't believe I ever thought, like, getting a 16 was hard now that I'm fighting for a 14. Like, yeah. you know, you, you, at the time that you were fighting for that, like, early time, it was hard for you then. And, like, it, you know, it's, it's important not to forget that kind of aspect of it. And, like, like, yeah. I, I feel like there have been some times in the past where there have been, like, people in the community that have been a bit elitist, especially about, like, platforms and stuff, but I feel like, especially nowadays, like, there are a ton of people with that have, like, made that journey themselves that, like, they just like seeing other people play the game and get good at the game. Like, I, I will yeah. never not feel happy for someone getting their first sub hour. Like, I'm never going to sit there and think, like, oh, you could do so much better than that. Like, I'm going to be happy for them for achieving a really big thing. Like, it's just yeah. awesome. Like... I think the, I think a perfect example of like people people kind of would of course you know throw shade to emulator runners and I think a big part of that is the fact that most of the time you know the top emulator runners never really compared that much to the top N64 runners mm -hmm. uh, for quite a while. Of course, you had guys like Sagoto who have always been who've always performed very well even in comparison to the to the um, N64 runners. But now you know you've got. You've had you've had Taiho on um, on emulator. You've got Sagoto again. You know those guys both have incredible times, even by the standards of Nintendo 64 on in, in 70 Star. Like Sagoto on emulator has the record of 40 of a 47.38, um, a typical time conversion that most people will accept as around 28 seconds. You know you apply you apply that conversion to it. And you're looking at around a 4806, which is a top 20 time on the N64 leaderboards. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and, and doesn't Sagoto also have a 139, or am I thinking of a different? He player? does. He does have a 139. Which, which and like, he's on 139, keyboard. I think is really yeah, like a 139 on keyboard. You're good at the game. No one can argue with you at that point. Anyone no one's gonna argue just... that a keyboard runner with a good time is not good at the game. Yeah, like, it's... <laughs> and, and, like, I, I guess the craziest part to me, with, with how angle-dependent so many things can be on in this game, like, playing on keyboard just increases how timing-dependent everything is. And, yeah. and so, like, being able to get a top-level time, like, a 139 is quite possibly one of the most difficult milestones, like, beginning to end to achieve in this game. Just from how tall of an order that is, like, like from how many things you have to learn and get right throughout a run. And, and so, like, in order to do that on MU, on keyboard, like, like, that would take more work than, like, a top-level time in some categories on N64. And I, I feel like top-level runners on N64 wouldn't have a problem, wouldn't dispute me saying that either. Well, like, it's, that, that's a hard time to get. Like, just period, bar yeah. none. Absolutely. And, I mean, yeah, like, 
you, those those runners that pull off those kinds of performances really are just ridiculous. I mean, even going over to virtual Wii Virtual Console, you've got Finny, who has the record in... Is it three? I think it's a 14, 58 and 16 star on all these games. Uh, no, it's a 52, I believe. Oh, it's a 52. Oh, Finney. I, I, I believe he's got a 52 now. Um, but, yeah, like, I'm pretty sure Finney has three of the VC records. Uh, 70 star, 16 star, and I believe one star. I'll double yeah, and, check like, people that forget now, too, but... like, especially in a category like 16 star, VC does have, like, a couple disadvantages. Like, the way that the, uh, stick is mapped, like, inputs that are close to the dead mm. zone are harder to, to, are harder to do on virtual console. So, like, getting a 14 on VC, like, it's not just free time save from less lag. Like, you do actually have to, like, do some of the strats a little bit differently in particular. Absolutely. Yeah. 1452 uh, for, from, a, from from Fanny on Wii VC, which I believe it's a 20 second time conversion to N64. So that's still like a 1512 if you were to have that same run applied with those time conversions, which is just incredible. Like, that's a really good run. Yeah. Now, you got to remember, like, last event. Last event, Trey Bordo's PB was a 15-12. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we've got runners in this event with, with like, uh, PBs, just, like, right around that, that sort of uh, conversion threshold. Mm. And uh, actually, and... speaking of Trey Bordo, I believe we've got a question of where he is. Uh, Trey has had some technical difficulties and, as of right now, isn't able to stream or do runs. So... While that's being fixed, unfortunately, he won't be uh, he won't be competing right now. We got tag moving into BLJ. Or in uh, in layman's terms, he he had too many Bordo packs. <laughs> tag gonna maintain speed through the door on uh, I think that was a third try catch. So ultimately, still is kind of possible, but needs a really really good endless here. And we got a second try catch coming. Not quite getting the ledge grab canceled, but. Still getting a decent sky entry, but we're going to have to pull out all the stops. We're probably seeing an ultimate ending here. Oh, what is this? His fifth 15.0x bit, bits entry? Like, just yet another 10.12 HMC, oh, and then unfortunately oh, going to miss no. the triple jump starting out from Animo. Mario. And that's, that's going to be it for that one. Unfortunate, but like you said, like, Tag is just a machine for getting these, like, 10.1x HMC exits, taking it through into sky, and, and like, eventually one of these is going to, like, really get it pulled straight through. And I mean... You might be sitting there in the audience going, like, if Tag keeps having issues with Sky, why doesn't he just go practice Sky? It is a totally different thing to complete a run through Sky when you know you're on pace to get an event PB compared to just practicing it. And so, like, he's really at the last phase of the grind where you're really just hammering runs through on the best pace as you can and just trying to get that one where you're able to play with the nerves intact just well enough that you're able to go ahead and get that event PB. Like, it really does, just comes down to bang your head against the wall until eventually the wall ceases to be yeah slippery nip going into bowser and fire c with 1453 best possible time and let's see if he can up. finish out this run cleanly that we could see his first 14 of the speed run world record circuit and this is some beautiful pace for ultimate let's go ahead it's gonna be tight what... Yeah, no, it's not going to be. He got a too. He got too much dust. Still a very, very fast rail. Probably going to be a single burn entry. Yep. I believe oh, that. Oh, it was. Time. I was going to say. I believe that's around a two-second time loss taking that. Uh, taking that route, but that extra slide on there is probably going to be about another second or two as well. On top of that. And uh, so looks like we've got uh, we've got a we got a fifty four dollar donation from Vanya forty second saying go cheese let them fly in the breeze. Thank you very much for the donation. <laughs> Slip definitely not forming a mental block after that last run having the issue with uh, the uh, the Bowser grab. Just uh, going for it yet again, but this time having it work just picturesque because we're going to be moving upstairs 16 seconds ahead of a Ben TV. Mm. 
So yeah, 1457 best possible time going into backwards long jumps. Once again, probably the most iconic part of Super Mario 64 speedrunning and speedrunning in general. And nice for that fast setup, but does get a first try catch, and that's getting through the door. Oh man. Mm. 14 probably not still on the table, but I, I think no. we're still seeing a 15-0x potentially. If he can get a clean finish. That's a first try catch there, and a ledge grab canceled. That is a beautiful sky entry. First place is BPT. possible. First place, Suiji Bop is possible here. Gonna We're be going not going to see a Tass long safe. jump. No Tass long jump this time. He's gone for it in almost every run prior to this one. But not here. Down about four seconds compared to Tass long jump having to take the pro cycle, but still beautiful sky so far. Moving right into ultimate and does land the triple jump. We got the wall kick this and time. Okay, he got a side. He is. got a side <laughs> ledge grab, I should say. Uh, but overall, still getting a very solid ending to it. 15.04 uh, best possible. Yeah, 15.04 possible. Not quite first place, but most certainly second place. And that's a beautiful first throw. In theory, could even afford to miss one throw, and I believe still uh, improve upon tags 15.14. Just one more. And but that's we're gonna not going to see that. That there is it. Is. That is the second, second place. X. Beautiful finish from Slippery Nip. What a solid ending. Just Looking really like a holding 15 it together. 5 I believe. Beautiful yeah. stuff there. GG's to Slip. 15.05 for a beautiful second place improvement. Yeah, GG's. And that is mad Very impressive. good run. I mean, you got to consider, that is with imperfect BLJs, that is with Pro Cycle in Sky, that is with non-ultimate ending in Fire Sea. Like, holding it together throughout all of those little things, that is a testament to mentality right there. But, like, all of those little mistakes, a runner's going, man, I messed that up, I lost so much time to that. It's so easy to get in your own head, and you're not playing the game anymore. You're not just seeing what's in front of you and still trying to go fast. But, but Slip just brushed every one of those little mistakes out of his head and was able to still go ahead and pull off this beautiful pace. Just GG's there for that beautiful run. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know I'm using that adequate too often, but... Yeah. And, uh, and with that incredible performance from Slippery Nip, we're just going to go to a quick word from our sponsors. Urban Arts helped prepare me for college by giving me a lot of experiences working both independently and collaboratively with other people to make really cool games and taught me how to put my all into creative projects and that helped me put together a very strong portfolio for college. The best part about being in the urban arts community is the people that you meet. A lot of the people here are have the same interests as me, so in the future, making friends here will benefit me and them and everyone around because we all benefit from each other by gaining skills that other people had that I may need. Urban arts helped me see myself differently by showing me that I can be a good leader. In the studio program, I was assigned the role as project manager, and fulfilling that role for the first time actually helped me realize that I have good leadership skills, and it really helped me to develop them.
And welcome back, folks. We've got a few pacers for you here. Looks like a Ouija sitting here on going to be about even with this uh, 1453 coming up LOL if things go right. And meanwhile, a number of racers on a um, basically a race in Womps right now. Yeah, no, honestly, it, it's looking pretty good. Um, unfortunately, you know, ta tag was a part of it, of course, but unfortunately having to reset and now Ouija resetting as well. Very unfortunate. But... Yeah, lava boost just not quite playing nicely. And that that pro lava boost mm. is really prone to just failing like that. Like like the the easier setups that lose like a second and a half, two seconds, they, they're a lot more forgiving on like how exactly you're moving the stick. But in that pro setup, you have to have a really really good sense of timing and like how exactly you're you're moving between like the I, I think it's like up to then upright and then to right um, while you're trying to traverse the waterfall. Yeah. Like, those burn physics are just super, super bizarre. Yeah, like, you kind of have to go with the direction that you've been burned, otherwise you won't move. Right. And Squeegee having to take a backup off Fly Guyless, as she's unfortunately gonna be, uh, having to Taking probably reset death. this one. Hmm. Actually, and isn't it, isn't it crazy that... We're not even finished with day one, and outside of Trey Bordo, who hasn't even been able to do runs, like, everyone that's finished a run has got now a minimum, like, a, a slowest time of 15.37 from Ouija. I mean, that, that's that's such a, like, just blowout start to this event. In, in particular, like, Slip and Suiji both getting 15 OXs within the first few hours of this event. Like, it, yeah. it's certainly going to be something to watch how they approach attempts for the rest of this event. Because they're really going to be pushing, basically, for four, 14s exclusively. Like, yeah, and, and that, that's that's going to be something to see. You know, I, I'm sure we'll have some times that they'll kind of get stuck on, on Clus for a minute, but... But, like, they, they've just been insane. Every runner really has been really consistent with, with the pace to today, especially, like, Tag as well, with the really, really good, like, 15 1x capable, like, just every single run out of HMC. Yeah, and then, like, you know, Tag's had, like, three or four runs into Bowser in the Sky with the ability to get a 15 0x. And you've got Cheese, who, uh, in his 15.32, was, uh, or did enter Bowser in the Sky with a 15 08 best possible time. So like, there's potential for a couple of a couple more, and of course you've got Ouija as well, who could at any moment pull out a 14. Like, you know, we could potentially be seeing five people sitting in the 15x range to 14, no, and that's without Trey Bordo. That's without Trey Bordo. When he comes in, who knows what'll happen? Plus, last time he got a PB of, I believe it was 15-10. Who's to say he doesn't do it again? Squeegee. Single pull yeah. skip, like, like, just completely maxed out. Like, it, I, I, it, it's just so wild to me, like, having watched this game for so long. I remember there being a time where, like, Dowski was gunning for the 16 record, and, like, he wouldn't save a gold if he did that strat. Because, like, he, he was just like, that's so ridiculous for me to try to save as, like, a comparison. Like, I would never want to run against that as, like, my definition for my best. And now we yeah. see runners just go for that as their main strat. Like, they, just mm. the, the level of progression at even the top of the mountain over the past few years has just been, like, really insane. It is just ridiculous what these guys are doing now. Even just in the last year. Like, when I got I mean, into this game, when you would go on your Kickapedia to, like, look up how to do the Bowser stages, I don't think there was a page on the Bowser fights. Or, like, if there was, there was one for the Sky fight that told you, like, here's one bomb order, here's the other one. If you go there now, there's a page for each of the Bowser fights, like, in the Dark World, in the Fire Sea, and there's, like, four or five different strat videos for each one for just the throw. Like, for nothing else. Just the throw. <laughs> Like, it, it, it's just crazy the, the amount of time people put into just improving community resources and, like, really pushing, like, all the different ways you can do everything in this game. Like, th th there's, like, like the very top level has gotten pushed super far, but also, like, there are just people exploring, like, all kinds of different strats for everything. Yeah, and actually, oh. on the topic of the gold that you were talking about in regards to Dowski, you've got Suiji, who got an LLL gold himself. 
and is now unfortunately having an HMC meltdown, but very good stuff from Ouija, oh, Suiji, rather. Um, but I was just checking speedrun.com, and yeah, like, a, a year ago, the world record was 10 seconds slower, like a year ago today. Yeah. It was a 14.58 from Kano. And like, if you remember, Kano didn't even do Pro Boost in that. Like, right. I mean, I'm pretty sure he just did uh, Elevator Tour instead. Just yeah, he did. He did Elevator. Like, even back then, you know, you had so much more potential. But, you know, I think the limit back then probably would have been around maybe a 1452 or something. But it's like, like, like strats like what Suiji just did for Emergency Exit. No one did back in like the Kano World Record era. Like, like no one was bothering mm. with stuff like that. I think Luigi maybe, but like. It, like, people would look at strats like that and just be like, there's so much other hard in this run. Why would I want to try to do that for a third of a second? Are you kidding? But, but mm. like, now it's it's just mandatory if you actually want, like, a 14-4x. Yeah, exactly. Like, there's just so much that people do now just to get a 14. And it's like, you know, you take some of these guys that have these ridiculously low times you've if you had them going in a year ago with the with the regular strats they might be upwards of you know five ten seconds slower which is just insane and so now we got suiji going in for myths does get the punch grab this time still a I 10 think before 14 exit despite the mistakes in hmc yeah, like that's that's the pace the tag has pretty much always been on on like good attempts and so like that kind of just goes to show without that mistake on Sweetie's side that would have this potentially could have been at, at the very least like 10 x pace if not like potentially nine. oh yeah i think then, it probably would have been a nine because like if you look at it because what was his hmc there a 54 he typically gets around about maybe 10 seconds ahead so maybe not quite a uh, a sub 10 but yeah, at least like a mid 10 x And we see the practice ROM getting pulled out. Something something about oh, yeah. MIPS, uh, I, I guess Sweetie just wasn't a big fan of. And I, I feel like this is an integral part of how Sweetie has gotten to just such a hyper-optimized level. Like, I have seen no other runner practice this much. Like, dear... During these attempt sessions, especially, like, during Double Down, mm. like, Suiji constantly had the practice ROM up. But, like, if you're going to be going for these insanely optimized times, I feel like it's just a necessity at a point. Yeah, absolutely. Like, and then you've got runners like Cheese, who will do a bit of practice at the start for 16, but once he's started, he's not stopping. Once he's started doing those runs, he's going to keep doing them runs. Yeah, some runners and just the same of... goes for the same goes for most runners, really. Yeah, but I, I feel like it's with, with how wild and out Suiji goes with some of these strats. Like, it's he, he probably feels like it's necessary to make sure that he's put at least like five or ten minutes into every single star before any given session of doing runs. Otherwise, like, mm. you're just not going to quite have the muscle memory quite as precisely as you need to. Yeah, absolutely. Let me see Flexi here resetting in Womps after failing single jump Wild Blue. One of the, uh, I'd say one of the less difficult strats that you can do in Womps, but still not easy by any means. Yeah, and yet another, like, more modern, uh, 16 star edition that, like, used to mm. not, like, no one would even bother with that in 16 star even. Like, that was just kind of yet another one of those, like, you got through OG and double jump Alice, why would you want to make this star hard on yourself too? But, you know, eventually, I, and I'm pretty sure it was either like Kano or Aki that I first personally saw like doing single jump wild blue, and like like from there on out, like it was like something that just more and more people just started picking up until it just kind of became a de facto standard. I want to say like TJK's tutorial was really the thing that got a lot of people to really start messing with it. Mm. <laughs> right. Well, uh, now that we've hit the uh, the next hour mark, I'll be uh, I'll be heading out of the commentary booth for a bit, and in my place we will have the one and only Mita joining Electric in the commentary booth. I'm super excited for that, but it's been a pleasure commentating with you for now, Zeus, and uh, we'll catch you around. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. Enjoy the next hour. We'll do. Hopefully, uh, I don't I don't get any pains as soon as you leave the booth, but you never know. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? And now we've got a meter in the booth. How are you feeling today? 
It's a little bit hard to hear a uh, co-commentator. My apologies. Let's see if I can fix that for you. There we go. I think it's getting a little better now. All right. How is that? There we go. Sounds perfect. <laughs> I said, I am fantastic, and uh, just kind of raving about Green Suiji here, 1502. What, What is this man? <laughs> I, I, I know, and the newest one of these runners, I, I think, out of any of these runners, like, he, he's been running the game for a couple years at this point, but, like, some of these runners, like Cheese, has been in the game for the better part of a decade at this point. And so, like, seeing a runner like Suiji get involved, like, in, in, in relatively short time, get to this type of, like, just upper echelon level it's insane and like like the fact that he's the only person in the world with a 14 4x time at all like it's just a testament to how much dedication he's put in on, on like just really optimizing every corner of this game it really is it, and it's it's fantastic like the amount of every time he's he's in one of these events he is walking away with really close to if not a sub 14 which what five people in the world have ever done that's crazy right it, and it's just kind of like another day in the office for him almost like on any <laughs> given day like he's not guaranteed to get a 14 on any given day but there's a good chance and for most runners that that's just unheard of like for most runners a 14 comes like once in a blue moon if ever but but then for, for sweetie it's give him enough days like one one will come eventually but you, you watch his stream with PB attempts and he'll regularly get like 14 5x paces in sky that he'll go ahead and reset Unreal. He's built for this, and he spends the first two hours of a, an eight-hour tournament uh, just practicing, not doing a single run, and uh, it probably comes down to that that old old quote of, you know, you give me however long to chop down a tree, I'm going to spend the first three quarters of it sharpening the axe, and uh, that's what we saw. It. We see it work. It works every it, time for him. Exactly right, and, and, and with some of these strats that he's doing, they really rely on such tight timing that you have to have had that recent muscle memory experience. Like, taking that extra five minutes to practice the star before runs just kind of gives you that sense of like, okay, I need to make sure I'm timing this kick like exactly this far after this jump. I need to make sure that this jump is exactly this high. And it just kind of like shows you before you start doing attempts like what timing issues you might want to look out for. Because on any given day, you know, you, you might have a tendency to do one input slightly earlier than normal or something weird like that. And giving yourself a chance to identify that before you're in the middle of an attempt is that could easily be the difference between uh, being able to maintain one of these like sub 10 HMC exits or, uh, you know, ending up having to take an early reset. Crazy hype development right now. Trey Gordo is live. on the screen. Let's get some hype in chat for Trey. It looks like the uh, the technical issues have been Bordeaux packed out of existence. <laughs> I mean, the just real quick going back to to what we were talking about there with with Suiji and his practice. It was really interesting to watch his practice too, because he was systematic about the way he did it. He didn't go through and like you know jump from here to there and kind of jump around and maybe start with the hardest things and then go to the easiest or vice versa. It was starting with the tricks that happened in the beginning of the game and pretty much going through run uh to the tricks that that he wanted to practice as and doing them three or four times each before moving on or however long it took for him to feel comfortable it was an interesting way to do that and uh, kind of a, a little a small little peek into the mind of the greatest 16 star runner in the world uh, exactly right there and as we see like after that last attempt had some issues in hmc like like he's really putting the grind time in on this star and, and yet again like you can see right here the proof uh he's getting like 1103s on, on that star with a like insane strat with a normal strat you could get a 11 for something like as like the maxed out time i think so like the strat that Suiji failed that ended up causing that last run to go ahead and end up being a reset in the end, it's only saving 0.4 seconds. That, that's it. But like, it, it's its not the difference between getting a, a 15 1x or a 14. It, it, it's not like, you know, some other massive... It, we're talking about four tenths of a second that like <laughs> a, a, on a star that otherwise is considered a freebie star to most runners the normal strat that you use for that like that that's considered a freebie star that like runners will save that for after rolling rocks and after um the dory star just because you're not worried about it. It, it, it you practice it a little while you get it under your fingers as muscle memory the timing is lenient enough that it's just not concerning but Suiji isn't content with 
a star being free, he wants the time save. And so it, that that's what's good. That's what it's going to take to get that extra uh, four tenths of a second. That's what he's going to do. I mean, that's the thing about all of these guys, right? Is none of them are just an average runner. None of them are normal in any regard because they're all excellent. They are all top tier at what they do. Um, exactly. It's absolutely fantastic to watch and be here uh, to it, commentate for it. And the really impressive part about Suiji is just how consistent he is at some of these like really insane strats, because that's really what a lot of these other runners bring to the table to make up for not quite playing quite as optimally, is that they're just more consistent in some of these things because they're allowing themselves, you know, okay, I, I don't need to save this quarter of a second here. I, I'll go ahead and like use the easier strat that I'll get 100% of the time on this star. But like, like for Suiji to pull out these hyper optimized strats and still be consistent enough to finish 14 pace runs with them, like th that's just insane. Like, like there are so many other runners that can do many of the same strats that Suiji does, but just don't quite have that consistency. And their PB is like a mid 15 or something. But like, like to be able to play like just that perfectly for even just 15 minutes, like it's it's insane. It's absolutely amazing to watch. Uh, and uh, the type of content that, that GSA puts out uh, consistently is fantastic. While I was uh, while I was away from the booth, I was listening and I was uh, playing in some spreadsheets and kind of custom crunching some numbers to take a look at the amount of time people have spent in each position um, in the top 10 on the leaderboard for 16 star. And who would have guessed it? Uh, the most months spent in the first place of the group here uh, Green Suiji, eight months, um, with the next closest being Ouija at seven and, and Slippery Nip at six. So, uh, you know, those guys are, are just so top tier for a reason, and it's because they stay at the top. Exactly. As she's going to be continuing on this attempt, uh, remember seeing Miss a Red uh, traversing up Dark Lord, but I guess still able to hit like a, a decent shape cycle and. Uh, narrowly hitting that throw this the angle certainly looked a bit iffy but meanwhile we've got flixer in the basement with a beautiful tama plus a little bit of a rightward angle but you can definitely still get up the pyramid with this there we go it's yet another this used to be the sort of trick that you know people like as soon as you got past cannonless like this was the the big focus of like will the run get past pillarless or not in 16 star but, but like now that this trick has largely kind of gone off the wayside of world record attempts for fly guyless like you know most people just kind of accept the inconsistency of plus but now you're just focused on like will fly guyless work or not like it, it's just so weird that like this star used to be kind of like the pinnacle of like this is the hardest strat you're gonna see someone do in this run like like tama plus is just so insanely precise and hard and now like it, it's in the top five i'd say but like it, for some of these runners that have put this much time into it i don't even think they'd put it in their top five hardest yeah i mean when when they're playing at this level it's absolutely insane even two years ago right you would you would look at uh, doing the backwards long jumps and doing uh even mitts clip but definitely tama plus uh and people were missing these things uh and that was top tier runners. That was, you know, Aki, Cheese, D, whatever. They were missing it in in situations like this in tournaments and and competitions. These guys don't really miss that stuff anymore. Like I, I in the last, first two hours, I think I saw like one or two misses of Owls. And I know in the uh, first ever 16 star season, it was pretty much every race. There were three races back to back, and pretty much every race there was at least one person missing. Um, Owlus, so it was completely different, uh, and how these have all become so fine-tuned, and people have found different setups and, and ways to make this work. Exactly right, and we got Flicks from just a couple stars left in Lethal Lava Land, but comparing pretty well to this event PB so far, we got just a few other runners just kind of uh, trying to work their way through the lobby section here. Him and, and Cheese, uh, you know, the speedrun did mention in the chat that both of those need to be officially retimed since they have the same the same exact time. Uh, figure out who's who's in the lead there unless someone you know, comes out on top between now and then. But uh, I think almost any runner that's sitting on that leaderboard would be honored to have a spot even close to Cheese's, let alone literally tied with, with one of the best runners uh, Mario's ever seen. Uh, exactly right. 
especially like a, a runner with such a long and storied uh, history of records. Exactly. Here we go! Now we'll see. Flixer just five seconds behind the event PB, moving on into HMC. But we could still see a 10 1x HMC exit here. Mm. So it, are most people using their event uh, PB right now, or the event PB? Um, how, what are they using for their splits, typically? Do, do we know? Uh, it, it's always up to the runner in these cases. And so, uh, like, earlier I was seeing, uh, it looked like, I, I remember someone was running against their real PB, I, I think Ouija. Um, but then, like, you see, uh, like, Suiji, uh, Slip, Cheese, uh, Flicks are all running against, like, their event PBs. Um, and I think, I think Tags is his real PB there, the 1501. Um, but it, it's always, uh, like, like, up to the runner, how exa as long as they're just, you know, using normal splits, of course. Right, right. It's, uh... Um, and, and you, you also do have freedom of, like, how exactly you handle, uh, each individual split. Like, some runners will go ahead and have, like, an, an LBLJ split and then a Dark World split, but then, like, you see on Flixer screen, like, he only has, like, the Dark World split to go ahead and start things off with. It, it just kind of depends on the person and, uh, how exactly they want to approach it. Yeah. Well, I... It's, uh, it's probably safe to say that regardless of what splits you're using, if they're beating the split, you know they're going to be beating whatever their current time is. Exactly. Uh, when maybe beating what the top time is. And I can certainly see the appeal for a case like Ouija, where like if you're running against your real PB, where it's so much more improved, where it's so much better compared to your event PB, like, like even if you're pretty significantly behind on your splits, which would be compared against your real PB, like that takes a bit of the pressure off yourself, even though you're still well ahead of your event PB, you know? Like you, you can kind of mentally trick yourself in that way. Like your brain keeps seeing red splits and you go, okay, bad run, I don't need to be stressed. But in reality, like the run is still pretty ahead of your event PB. And, uh, you know, comparing to the last event too, uh, might be a nice thing to say, you know, I'm improving over the last time I did this type of race. Cause it, it kind of, it's, it's a very different format. You know, you're running Mario. That's, that's what you do, uh, when you're these guys, but doing it in front of, uh, an audience of this size and doing it with people commentating and against the other people, uh, where you guys' times are one for one. If you have an off day, you know, you, everyone else is, is watching that and seeing that. Uh, it's it's kind of a different environment, puts different pressures, and makes you play a little different sometimes. Exactly. And it, it certainly does feel different than, than PB attempts. Like, you're having to continue something even if it's not, you know, the, the perfect attempt. So, like, you do have that, that little bit of leeway and li wiggle room, but at the same time, like, it, it's, a, it's a unique kind of stress that you feel, where, like, even on runs that in PB attempts, you just say, oh, this is a bad run, I'll just continue it as a no reset. Like, if you're still on pace to beat your event PB, you'll still feel a bit of nerves as if you're on, like, a real PB pace. Yeah, that's true. I mean, uh, we're we're getting chats pretty pretty apt here, saying that the last event you know was in person, which is even even different because then you have the energy of the crowd and everything here. You know, you're you're at home. You're you're chilling with your own com your own comfort, your own setup. This is where you normally play, uh, and uh, you can you can dress however you'd like, um, as we're seeing here. So. Definitely a different environment in that way, and, and a little more comfortable. It'd be interesting to see if that reflects in the scores at the end. I'd be certainly interested to see if the times end up being a little low, because it certainly seems like we've gotten some really, really good pacers a bit faster than uh, the last event. Like, uh, I, I think it was day two that Suiji ended up getting the 14 at the last event. And so, like, already for us to see, like, 15 OX times coming out within the first few hours of day one, you know, maybe that's got a little bit to do with uh, just the more familiar home environment. Yeah, I mean, and Cheese PB uh, day one of the event. Um, and then he PB'd right after that, and uh, Trey Birdo PB'd at that event. So, like, these guys are, these guys are playing at top tier at all times and constantly improving. It's just, it's really impressive. You're exactly right. And we got Flixer getting through the fire sea throw here. We'll see how BLJs end up treating him, but there is some room here for a good event PD. There really is. I'm, uh, we, we have left, what, three, about three hours? Um, 
till the eight o'clock time, and then if we are able to hit that 750, people can get get a couple of donations in here uh, and hit that 750 today. We'll be adding an extra hour, and another hour could be the difference between uh, someone hitting PB, someone taking the the event PB, and someone maybe breaking something even better than that. Exactly right. Yep, and. Uh... We're just $250 away from that uh, donation goal. So if you'd like to see an extra hour of attempts today, you know, if, if your favorite runner's on a hot streak come 8 o'clock and you want to give them an extra hour to see if they're able to go ahead and get that 14, you know, go ahead and uh, put those donations in. We're just uh, a third of the way left to get to that goal. And uh, it's, your favorite runner's track. Exactly, yep. Trey, uh, get it, getting the short end of the stick there, the, the Bordeaux pack getting in the way of uh, his internet connection for a bit, it seemed. But, uh, Looks like uh, he was able to go ahead and start practicing, and uh, we're going to be hopefully seeing some attempts from him fairly soon here. But, you know, if, if you're one of the uh, Trey Bordo fans out there, you may want to go ahead and get those donations and just to go ahead and give him an extra hour, maybe even the playing field a little bit. Looks are voiding out in bits and taking the reset. He was already red splits, so surely he's... Let's just start this one fresh. She's Mrs. Lakitu, and uh, looks like he's going to take a quick walk. So, uh, chat's asking who started the shirtless Mario trend. I, I want to say it was Simply. I, I could be wrong on this, but I think Simply was one of the first runners that would do runs without a shirt on pretty regularly. He was the first I saw do it. That is. Yeah, he, he's the first that I can remember when I'm racking my brain, and I, I feel like it was either after his first world record or, like, just some other attempt that he got a really good time without a shirt on, like. Other people just started trying it, and something just happens. Like, I've never done it personally, but I've seen so many runners that, like, they'll be struggling really hard to get runs going, and then they'll just take the shirt off, have an attempt PB, or have an attempt get world record. Like, and of course, Kano got world record shirtless. Like, there are multiple other records and other PBs that have happened shirtless now. Like, it's just a thing now. I, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's just... Uh, le less restrictive, right? The body can breathe. Something. Yeah, yeah, there you go, yeah. And get those Mario endorphins going. We do have Trey back. This is very exciting. I, I, I'm very, very excited to see Trey put up their first time um, so we can get them on the board. Yeah, we'll see if he ends up going ahead and uh, treating this as a no reset or if we'll go ahead and see a, a couple of attempts from him before uh, he goes ahead and finishes one out. And Tag, this is interesting here. See, Tag has been the master of 10 1X HMC paces at both of the LTA events uh, GSA's had so far. But right now, we're, we're looking potentially at a 10 OX HMC exit. Oh, and, uh, as soon as I say it, of course. That's the uh, start just not quite working out. Them's the brakes. Man, I yep. do not like that little spider guy right there. Yeah, the the scuttlebugs are such a pain here. And, and like, like, thankfully, he doesn't really get in the way at first when you're going for this star. But when you're trying to, like, do some sort of backup movement, it, it can pretty easily uh, go south. Or when you're first. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That boy likes to cause a whole lot of issues. Yeah, either of those stars, uh, yeah, the, the ones that really cause issues are like the Christmas Miracle Star, the, I think the actual name is like Metalhead Mario Canoe or something. Yeah. Um, like, like, he's always in your way for that one. <laughs> like, it, it takes a minute to really figure out. And, and like, it, it's kind of weird, like, like, something that took me a moment to learn is like, once Mario leaves a door, right, if you're holding upright on the stick and you want to kick as soon as possible, if you kick on the very first frame, you'll get, like, an ever-so-slightly different angle than, like, if you kick, like, a quarter second later or something. Mm -hmm. And so when you're trying to figure out how to navigate around that scuttlebug or, like, just do some other bit of movement like that right out of a doorway or any other sort of, like, animated thing like that, well, like, it's really frustrating at first before you realize little things like that where you're like, how come I, I missed the wall on this attempt, but then I bumped the wall on this attempt? Like, wh why, is, why are there these different things happening even though I'm doing the same thing every time? It is like, it, it really, like, like, when you're learning this game, there are a lot of just little things that you really have to pay attention to and, and kind of notice, like, hey, wait a minute, like, like things actually get different if I time this slightly differently. Yeah, I mean, the, the controls on this game for the age of it feels very tight. Feels like, especially when you're at this level, but 
Uh, even when you're, you know, just just getting into the runs, it feels like when you make a mistake, it's usually your fault. Uh, and that's that's a good feeling. That that's a good feeling game compared to some where it's kind of slippery and, uh, you know, can can make you feel kind of gross when you're like, Ugh, I feel like I did everything right and there's just nothing I could do different. Yeah, exactly. And I I feel like there, there's a good comparison to be made with like the the movement and tech available in melee, like. It, it, there is a very high degree of precision that's being put on the player to go fast in this game. Like, a lot of different moves re require you to do things very precisely if you actually want to maintain Mario's speed and not end up, like, bonking all over the place or, or just going generally slow. And, like, it's kind of similar to, like, in Melee. A lot of the advanced tech, like, you've you got to be pretty precise with how exactly you're pressing buttons. Like, you're having to hit very, very narrow frame windows in a lot of cases. But once you practice enough that a lot of that stuff becomes more or less muscle memory, like the doors that open up to you just it's really crazy. And like, I, I really think it really shows how much of the development time was spent on just the movement in this game. Like you look at Sunshine and they largely ended up copying a lot of the code for the movement from 64 and just kind of tweaking it a bit as a base. And you can kind of feel like it, it feels like a looser controlling game. Like Mario doesn't have as much of a sense of weight to him. And like the moveset that he's given feels kind of awkward sometimes where it's like very reliant on like dives and continuous rollouts. But like this game, like it's just such a like well-made bouquet of like movement options. Like you, you see a pretty much even distribution of like long jumps versus jump dives versus standard dives at top level play in this game. Whereas like most speedrun games, like Odyssey for instance, you power roll everywhere. Like there's some movement thing that just becomes the fastest thing. But the movement that you have available to you in this game is so well balanced that like, d depending on the situation, there are a lot of different things that could be the fastest thing for you to do. Like sometimes the fastest thing could be to glitchy grab a bomb on and clip up here in the top. <laughs> yeah, not like, a lot of games can say that that's the case. And yeah, I mean, it's a lot of really precise inputs, but it's also just constant inputs. You're almost never not hitting an input or like holding a steady input. It's always uh, constantly changing and, and adding things. And oh, Boo yeah. and Chat making a good point too about camera movement, adding a whole nother thing, playing with the camera, making it work for. Yeah, the the camera system in this game, like it's really adept for speed running, but it's kind of a shame that like there will probably never be another camera quite as good as this, just because like the static button camera doesn't make sense for casual play. Like it's. Yeah, um, but um, with, with that, we'll be taking a quick caster break as uh, Trey gets through LOL, and uh, hopefully without any commentators cursing the run, uh, we'll be able to see this one get pretty deep. So stick around. Ladies and gentlemen.
right, and welcome back, folks. We got Tag showing off a little pacer here, doing the C-up slide beside two of the closest boulders I've ever seen. That That's like one of the worst boulder RNG patterns you could get that is still possible to make it through. <laughs> that's a way to go ahead and come back from caster break. I'm Electro, joined in the booth by Meter. And uh, this is, Tag is certainly been showing the consistency today. Like, just over and over, getting to this point in the game on about this same pace, just like clockwork almost, it seems. Yeah, I mean, but you, you come to expect that from these guys. Um, you know, you got his 1501 very recently. So uh, it's not... Uh, it's not unheard of when these guys are that practice and continuing to improve. You're going to see them be consistent by getting around the times they're getting here. And then once in a while, they're going to get something crazy. And uh, hopefully it's within the next few hours. Exactly. And uh, like, like, like you said, once you get to these like really, really big milestone PBs, like Tag is just knocking on the door of a 14. And like, like a time like a 14 forms such a mental block that like if you have a PB of a 1501, you are absolutely 14 capable. Like there's no doubt in anyone's mind. The only thing is you'd have to prove it to yourself at that point and like get over the nerves in a run to be able to like finish it out through the end. And like that's the monumentally hard part, right? But, like, like, since the last uh, Double Down event, like, Tag has been sitting on, like, a really, really close to 14 PB. I think at that event is where he got this 1501. And so, like, staying practiced since that PB, like, like he's... We could see the first 14 at this event. Who knows? And especially with a 1009 HMC exit, like, this is a pretty notable pacer for him. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of his pacers today have been, like, a, a 1014 HMC exit, 1015, which is certainly nothing to scoff at, but... 10.09, as you can see from the best possible, that still gives you some room to get the 14. And beautiful MIP split there. So we're going to have a 10.50 best, or sorry, 14.50 best possible. Tag did not just find a new skip to the end of the game. And the ship clip coming out here. And it's good. Let's see the bat chest in chat there. Tag is Tag wants the 14, I feel. I, I feel like Tag isn't seeing event PB right now. Tag is seeing 14 in his eyes. Because th there is no reason you would want to go for chip clip. When, when you're sitting at a 15-14 for your event PB, and you're, you've got a 10-44 MIP split, like, play it safe. No chip clip. But I, I really think Tag wants this 14 today. And barely getting that front sub. That was so, so close. That was, uh... A little, a little heartbreaking on that, but still in the green. Like, you lost a couple of seconds, but still really good. Now, the chip clip, all of a sudden, <laughs> means a heck of a lot more. Made up for, for that tiny, tiny mistake. Oh, and the ground pound is going to kill ultimate cycle, but early is still on the table. It's just going to make all the timing a little bit weird. Going to have to go for pole glitch here. Does get pole glitch, so early is still on the table. Needs early Ellie's for sure. We'll see if it's able to come out. Oh, get the punch instead of the jump dive! The A not coming out on the same frame! But still manages to get early cycles, so this is still... This is still at least a good event PB. Don't think the 14 is quite on the table. It's gonna need a heck of an ending in order to 14, but... This is still quite a run to go ahead and get through, especially after, uh, like, like Tag has had, uh, just... Some issues with this, like, mid to late game section on, uh, like, slightly less pacers. Like, like this is the sort of thing you need to kind of get over those mental blocks. Like, now he's able to tell himself, like, I've got a really good pace out of HMC that I, I got through MIPS on. I got through DDD. That was a nice uh, run through and then the comeback pace in the other direction. Got to pick up his tail there. I hadn't, I hadn't seen that before. Well, yeah, that, that glitchy grab, uh... Zeus and I were, were talking about that earlier. It, it gets you a little bit closer to the bomb, and that's kind of what makes some of these, like, really, really fast throws possible. Since you only have, like, three quarters of a rotation to get up enough speed for Bowser to hit the bomb, like, like just doing that glitchy grab to get him closer to the bomb really does make that difference. Because, like, like, you're already having to spin the control stick like you're playing Mario Party or something. Like, <laughs> there's a reason players switch controllers to not ruin their main controller on the throws. Yeah. And I mean that's totally fair. Um, is there is there risk there with switching those controllers to, uh, you know, potentially not getting it plugged in in time or having a bit knocking into the system? Oh, second wow. try there for Tag. This is a beautiful set of first BLJs. We'll go ahead and see what the second set looks like, but we could still certainly see 15 OX on the table here with these. That's a first catch, and 
beautiful stuff there. Built up a little bit too much speed, but then perfect accounting there. That is such a hard thing to react to because the way that all of that stuff sets up, you have to move the stick the moment you see Mario stand still like that. Because him standing still like that is him attempting to turn around, and the way you've got the control stick pointed at that moment, if you don't do anything, he'll flip backwards on you. So tag just beautiful accounting and then right into some perfect sky movement here. The right side coming out, beautiful stuff. No ultimate ending, but doesn't need it here. Perfect elevators despite. And we're gonna, barely missing the 14 pace, but is entering the fight on very comfy 15 OX pace here. We could potentially see the slip bop here. Sweetie bop a little bit out of the question, but slip bop with perfect throws here. Let's see it happen. Oh, misses the side flip there. It does go, go ahead and get that first throw. Gonna lose a couple seconds on the missed grab, but second throw, perfectly done. Let's see the third throw for the OX. That's gonna be good. Let's go ahead and see the final time there. I believe that's gonna be a 15.05. So gonna be tying slip potentially here. And here it is, 15.05 from Tag609, bumping nine seconds off that leaderboard, be leaderboard PB, and at the very least, securing that third place as close as he possibly can to second. GG's to Tag for a stellar finish there. Like, especially considering some of the shenanigans happening in Fire Sea and beyond, like, that is such a solid ending. It really is. So, so exceptional. This guy's getting sub-15 soon. Yeah, it's, it's happening. I mean, that, that I, I just cannot get over it. Like, in DDD, that front sub, he, he maybe was like a frame or two away from sliding back down the sub. I have never seen someone lose that much speed getting onto the sub and still make it. I've never seen it. Like, that, that's how close it was. Like, if you've been watching this game for a minute, you know I've watched way too much of this game myself. I've never seen that sketchy of a front sub still work. And then, like, to go from that into, like, ground pound first input in Fire Sea is a death sentence. And yet, Tag still got early cycle off that. Like, that that's the sort of stuff that it gets in your head instantly and, like, just in inevitably leads to another mistake. But, but Tag just brushed it off, got the pole glitch, got the early cycle, just perfect Fire Sea ending. And then the BLJs were pristine. And, like, like the way that the upper BLJs failed was like he perfectly accounted for it maybe lost a second to something that loses so many runners the entire attempt like just he really had such a level head through at the end of that attempt and it just goes to show how many of these cases he's had down there that's extremely true and you mentioned something there because i know you're not you're no slouch at this game either you know we're, we're talking about people with sub 15s but uh if my records are right you got what a 1645 uh, and then Noel BLJ is a 1645 as well, uh, which yeah. is top 100 in the world for Noel BLJ. Yeah, not to toot my own horn, but but yes, the uh, the 1645 with with the much easier route than this that doesn't involve the uh, the crazy trick at the start. Like, like the Noel BLJ route, like it it looks simpler just because it has like that it doesn't have that trick in it but it, it also doesn't have a lot of these like really really difficult stars in it like uh you you don't have to do a uh, triple box jump in hmc you don't have to do pillarless but what, what's really really insane after suiji got i think his first world record he actually started doing attempts of the noel blj category using all of these like ludicrous strats and ended up getting the world record in the noel blj category the same night by like 15 seconds or like some insane amount of time. Like it, it's a ridiculous split record if you go look at the category extensions leaderboard. Cause it's like, I think second place for at the time was like a, a 15 five X or something. And then out of nowhere, he gets like a 15 three X in this category. And I think by now he's pushed it to like a 15 two X or something. Like it, it's even the category that once was known as like the, the more comfy version of 16 star, like Sweetie just said, nope. Well, let me make it as hard as possible. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I noted that earlier, that his his records are insane. That he can hold both the 16 star and the Noah BLJ 16 star. And has held 16 star three different times. Um, it, just exceptional. Four times 16 star Noel BLJ world record holder. Um, if you include other platforms, like, incredible. Incredible job to continue to push categories forward.
but we mentioned earlier about like when sometimes you can get into a groove of you make a mistake and then it gets in your head and you're on a good run and all of a sudden you you make two three four mistakes how do you break from that cycle um or the cycle of doing resets all the time because you keep messing up in small ways early on what, what, what do you personally do to, to break yourself out of a, a cycle of failure if you will so it, it certainly does depend on what it is uh, um Certainly practice can help. If you notice that there's one particular part of a strat or a star that, that keeps messing you up, like, like if you keep messing up one particular side flip over and over, you, you can go ahead and go into practice save state and, and really try to focus on like like just altering your muscle memory a little bit. But I, I think the much bigger thing that, that especially came into play for me is just like not letting yourself be too hard on yourself. Like, like whenever you tell yourself, I'm bad at the game, I really suck, I can't get out of womps today, like, you also hear yourself saying that. Like, like it, it sounds weird to say it that way, but, like, like, you start to believe when you hear yourself say, I'm bad at the game. And when you're able to tell yourself, like, I messed this thing up, but so what? Like, I'm still okay at the game, we'll, we'll do better next time. And, and you really try to brush off those mistakes, it really does get easier in the long run to do, and it, it does, like, start helping you play better the less hard you are on yourself. Like, as the, the old saying goes, like, you are your own worst critic, and, like, if you can make yourself not quite be so hard on yourself, like, it, it really will sometimes just, like, like, when you decompress just a little bit, you'll be able to focus better and, like, just kind of play better in, in, in the end. Like, I had a lot of trouble when I was grinding for my very first sub-17 time in this category. I, I had a lot of runs get to the end of the game on 16 pace, but I would always mess up throws. I'd always mess up something in Sky. And I, I would start to get it in my head, like, I'm always going to choke the ending of this game. Like, I'm, I'm just never going to do it right. And then, like, one day I was just like, even though it feels stupid, let me just stop telling myself that. And let me just start trying to be toxically positive. And, like, within a couple of days, I, I finally broke through that mental barrier just because I, I, I wasn't being so hard on myself anymore, saying, like, I can't do this, I can't do this. And at this level, it is really, really hard to break that sort of mental cycle because, like, you're trying to do things that are on the very limit of human possibility. Like, like I mean, tricks like pole glitch, like what Slippery Nip is practicing right now, you're trying to make Mario's head collide with the edge of a ceiling polygon. Not the ceiling polygon itself, but specifically its edge. Like, like you're having to do things that are beyond the level of precision that a human can reasonably expect to do 100% of the time. So you're just trying to do the same muscle memory thing and just kind of hope you get good results out of it. So there, there are going to be times that you're going to get like a 14 pace like through fire sea and then just yeah but uh <clears throat> it, it, it a lot of it does come down to mentality though and like just just being nice to yourself whenever the grind gets really hard it, it's the hardest thing to do but it also it does really help ease those mental blocks i found mm. well, I, I love that the, the being nice to yourself thing and uh i know Keeping track of, uh, especially in a tournament like this, how much time you have left is a big one. Um, especially if you, you got a late start, or you chose to practice out the out the gate, or uh, you know you, you want to take a breath. Uh, knowing that you have a little extra time might be nice, and we can do that for these guys if we're able to hit that 750 goal. We're only 250 away. Uh, it's really really close. So if everyone wants to get together on this one, give in a little bit uh, to to urban arts it would be hugely beneficial in a lot of different ways to yourself for getting to watch more uh speed running to these guys to get a little bit extra time and of course to to urban arts and the people that that they support um offering multi-year college prep programs they teach students both the arts and the technology of game design and their senior student teams make their own video games as their final project. So this is real world application of, uh, you know, maybe you have Durban Arts, they're able to support someone, get them through, uh, through what, they're what they do there with their training, and then they make the new Mario 65. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the next game that, that has like such a beautiful movement based speed run like this it's definitely going to be an indie game made by like a small team like that rather than like some like huge triple a team or something because like to be able to make a game that just has such fluid movement like, like you have to have people that are, are really like invested in care about like like what they're doing it's 
as like making just a fun game as their final product, not just like, you know, making an end quota or, or whatever else. And like these sorts of programs introduce people to game design that in a lot of situations may not otherwise have the sorts of opportunities to be able to explore that sort of passion. And so like it's it's really great that we're able to go ahead and uh, raise money and support them. And uh, like Meter said, like if you want your runners to have an extra hour, just uh, $250 more on the donation goal, and we'll go ahead and have that extra hour out of all. Trey is uh, 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 almost plus 30 on his splits here. At what point do you... Uh, call it and and cancel out and restart and at what point do you say i could use the practice i want to keep going uh or i could still turn this into something um is there a, a threshold for that so with trey's position like not having a run on the leaderboard i, I would say he's probably going to want to continue anything that's sub 16 pace just for the sake of it but there is that element of like once you know that the pace you're on you cannot pb with anymore there's this stress that you don't feel anymore that also causes the focus to be different. So if you went through the whole rest of the run from that point, it's just a no reset, it wouldn't feel the same on your hands as it would if you were on a PB pace trying to do all these stars in order. So it is decent practice, like if it's your first run of the day to go ahead and just go through a no reset, but at a certain point, it's going to be about the same to finish out a no reset as it would be to just practice the stars in the practice ROM. Because you don't really have the nervousness of being on pace to have to deal with. And that's really the struggle in a lot of cases. Like, a lot of the time, if you were to do, like, a basement RTA where you just start up a save file right after HMC and just go through the end of the game, like, these runners could probably get a 14 4x capable end game, like, a, a, a decent amount of the time. Like, it, it wouldn't be unheard of, you know? But it's the fact that you're having to... You get one shot at that after you've just played your heart out for, like, 10 minutes getting that good HMC time, and the nervousness that results from that pressure of, like, I have to do it right this time. And, like, learning to play in that environment. Like, there's nothing else that lets you practice that other than being on that kind of pace. So, like, like, once you start losing and hemorrhaging enough time on, against your PB, like, like, trying to continue it as a no reset, like, it sounds like a nice idea for the practice, but it just doesn't feel the same. Fair enough. I know a lot, I've heard the amount of times that I have watched a world record run, uh, and in the world record run, they have said, eh, I should reset, is I personally feel like it's more often than they don't say that. Like. It, it's staggering to me the amount of times that a run very easily could have been reset and they just decide to go through with it anyway and it ends up being at like a world record pace uh, by the end of it it's it's very interesting to me how that mindset can sometimes ruin what would otherwise be something really cool yeah absolutely and it's it's a phenomenon where like i don't think i've ever seen a world record where it was at any point in time before like the last few splits the best pace ever like any run any run that has ever been the best pace ever like from hmc for instance something always happens that like loses a lot of time before it gets to the end of the run but uh real quick we've got a 15 dollars donation from darth taxel first time viewer third time viewer just wanted to say hi from germany well hello from gsa first time third time viewer love it I love it pushing that forward closer and closer to that goal. Uh, I definitely think we can still get there. Uh, there's, there's a bit of time left, but... Just $135 left. Only a, a few more dollars than stars in a 120 run. Let's take a look here. Looks like Flixer's got a restart. She's is freaking out. Uh, uh, slip, <laughs> trying out a new route through Rainbow Ride. And uh, Trey looks like he's going to finish this run pretty much no matter what at this point. 13 second tricky triangles from slip side there that's that's a pretty good tricky triangles time i feel like slip is inevitably going to end up doing 70 star like he's been pulling out too many 70 specific strats recently <laughs> you think it's a hint and it, it might be it, it, it might be there interesting and we got trey border with a nice first set of blj's carrying the speed on over to the big stairs we get a second try catch on the endless beautiful ledge grab cancel there that's that that's something that like you used to only see people do when they were going for a 14 like like the top cream of the crop world record runners but like now that that seems to be just a thing for like the 15 1x and below range like 
something about like like Suiji getting to the top with the BLJs like it just made so many people decide to really revolutionize their BLJs and like I, I see so many people that have just elevated it to an art form like used to Aki's pretty consistent BLJs were considered god tier like like everyone wanted to have Aki's BLJs and now like Aki's BLJs are good but like compared to Suiji they would still like have something to be improved which I, I can't believe I'm hearing myself say something like that but <laughs> like it's just that's the sort of like, like some of these people started treating castle movement like it was its own star and like the, the results kind of speak for themselves before Aki a lot of people thought truly believe it's random whether you get yeah. it or not is random and Aki proved that's not the case and uh, I think that laid the groundwork for for these, these later on runners these newer runners now that are taking everything everyone has has ever done and adding polish to it to a point right. that there is it, it's bringing everything to a new level it's breaking through that threshold by putting it all together right and, and, and like see back like during aki's era where he had just insane blj's like tassers could tell you oh blj's aren't really random you just have to land precisely on the staircase and then jump on these specific frames but like like that was knowledge that no one was trying to take advantage of in rta because it was just how are you going to try to make yourself press A on, like, these very specific frames? But then, like, the other day I was watching Suiji practice BLJs on his stream, and he started talking about how, like, he'll purposely press the A button a specific way to try to get that frame window exact. Like, it, th that's what it takes, pretty much, is, like, runners taking that, like, task-level knowledge that, like, it, it's like, how do you even train yourself to press A, not press for two frames, press, unpress, press? Like, very act precision like that, where, where each frame is one thirtieth of a second. Like, how do you train your thumb to do that? Squeegee found a way somehow. Like Crazy powerful. We uh, we did get another donation here from Turtle Pong for $10. Less than three, they say. Um, right back at you. Thanks for the donation. Ten bucks goes a, a heck of a long way in the long run here. And so uh, Trey's first run there, just finishing up with a 16.20 that we're going to go ahead and put up on the board. But that I'm sure course. we're going to be seeing more from Trey in just a few minutes. But of course, speaking of donations, if you want to go ahead and see uh, an extra hour worth of Trey attempts, you know, make sure to get those extra donations in. $125 now, just separating us from that extra hour. I mean, Trey deserves that that extra extra hour there. Stuff outside of out of his control um, from my understanding Ouija's now experiencing something similar so um, getting these guys an extra hour would be really be a nice thing to kind of make up for the the natural issues that have popped up uh, for some of these runners and that's kind of the uh, detriment to having an online event is like even though you are in your own comfy little uh, run space where you know you've got all your amenities that you're used to during PB attempts like sometimes the internet just doesn't want to cooperate but i i'll tell you what i really like having once a month being able to to count on some 16 star from these guys right here from the, the world record circuit so uh, i would i would take spotty internet and mario over uh perfect internet and none exactly right it does make sense why Trey finished out that run. Uh, just get a time on the board, get something there that you can beat uh, and make, your, make yourself feel better about you know, going forward. Uh, that's usually how each day starts for these these tournaments, is do a no reset. And uh, that's how, how he started as well, was to get, uh, get that no reset going, get a time on the board. Let's improve. Yeah. And it's, like I was saying, like like the first run of the day, no reset, definitely just kind of to brush some of the, the rustiness off your fingers, you know, make sure you've got all the, the strats going the way you want them to. Like, like the no reset at the very beginning of attempts makes a lot of sense. Or like if you've just been stuck in the lobby forever and like the first attempt you get out, you mess up something pretty basic. The no resets can be helpful. Um, we'll see a uh, tag at, here. At this level and with a timeline on the tournament, it does not make sense to finish every single one. Exactly, exactly. Makes a lot of sense. We got Tag three seconds down off MIPS, but he's comparing now against Event PB, which, remember, this is the PB that has chip, but doesn't get the cleanest front sub in the world. 
which I, I just still cannot get over. Like, Mario decelerates every frame he's on a slope, right? I swear he had, like, one speed when he got onto the sub. Like, I, I have never seen a sketchier front sub in my life. Like, I, I have watched way too much of this game, and I just can't emphasize enough, like... Like, I, I, I've never seen something where I was like, oh, well, that, that's a rip. Wait, what? Like, look at the, even that, like, got a little bit of dust, but, like, you, you could tell he landed very cleanly onto the sub, like, no discrepancy at all. And, like, boom, two and a half seconds saved right there. Yeah, I mean, well done, because he missed the star and had a little bit sketchier, and then he ground pounded at the start here, and he punched going up on the backside. Um, and lost time there, so a lot of time to save here between uh, GDD and, and Fire State. And, and he's got the pull skip. Smart of him to keep going. Yeah, and like, th was this his first reset after that attempt, or has did he reset once or twice? Like, this is I, uh... really just a do-over of, of the previous run, just a little bit cleaner everywhere. Ultimate ending, like... This is Very this is well. pristine by comparison. This is still 14 pace. And it's I'm, gonna need I know, some I'm insane DLJs, I really hope that uh, that we see that right here. It would be the most hype to have tag pop out a, a 14 after all of the uh, the delay that he had, and then um, having his first run be pretty scuffed up in places. Except gorgeous three quarters spin there. Let's let's see it here. This is ooh, this is a pacer right here. Let's get the phrases in the chat. Yep, well, for sync on four other screens right now. All four of them about to come out of the pipe at the same time. Did you know the M on on the hat that stood for mayonnaise, not Mario? Really? I didn't know that. I'm just gonna uh, lose a little bit of time to the pause just for lag manipulation, you know. Get get the BLJ's first try. Five seconds. Wow. Deep green right there. Let's see what happens here. Most precise trick in the game. First try catch. Let's see it speed through the door. Here we go. It's the turn. Gonna lose a couple seconds, but I think we may still have a pacer on our hands. Wow. Perfect! <laughs> That's gonna be four ahead. I don't... It's gonna be real close, but... Let's see it. Manimo might still be possible. Lost a little bit of speed on the ascent. Yeah. Oh, jump dive for Manimo! Barely not gonna make it! Oh, he knew it was gonna take a jump dive to make it, but just barely miscalculated. And then... Oh, oh that's that gonna be it. Oh, but this this is the furthest he's gotten that pacer on so far. That's got to feel good. Yeah. Managed to get like, like right back off the previous run. Managed to fix all the mistakes in EDD, all the mistakes in Fire Seed. Managed to get even guy on this pace. Like, that's got to feel good. And with that, we're, we're going to go ahead and take a bit of a break of all the uh, other runners are in lobby for a sec. But what a pacer to leave it off on. Urban Arts helped prepare me for college by giving me a lot of experiences working both independently and collaboratively with other people to make really cool games and taught me how to put my all into creative projects and that helped me put together a very strong portfolio for college. The best part about being in the urban arts community is the people that you meet. A lot of the people here are have the same interests as me, so in the future, making friends here will benefit me and them and everyone around because we all benefit from each other by gaining skills that other people had that I may need. Urban arts helped me see myself differently by showing me that I can be a good leader. In the studio program, I was assigned the role as project manager, and fulfilling that role for the first time actually helped me realize that I have good leadership skills, and it really helped me to develop them.
All right, welcome back to the 16 star speedrun world record circuit uh, here at GSA, sponsored by Urban Arts. Uh, so, I'm Zeus VA, back at it, back in the booth again after about an hour break, and I'm here with Mita, my co-commentator. Hey, how's it going? You so, missed, missed from some... from what I understand, yeah, I missed quite a lot while I was gone. Uh, tag getting a 1505 and a 14 pacer into bits. Um, you know, I think, you know, with all of the paces that Tag's been having, I think he's going to need, he might need that extra hour of runs. So, yeah, if we could get some more donations in there for uh, for everyone, I think that'd be great. Because, I mean, with all the paces we've seen from Tag and Sweegee and Slippery Nip, I mean, the first 14 could come from uh, from your own decisions to add to that donation pool. That's true. And when you're on, uh, you're, you're getting pacers all the time like this, you want to keep playing and uh, doing it yeah, absolutely. here when everything's on the line. That's the way, way to do it. And if you're going to support, supporting Urban Arts at the same time is great. We're, what, 225 away from uh, yeah, we're that goal? That's, that's not 525 right now, or 526 right now even. Goal is $750. We're not far away. We got this. Uh, you guys can do it. As can Cheese, as he's in LLL, currently doing reds, just finishing up here. Yeah. We got uh, a lot of resets, a lot of runs starting. Suiji taking a nap. And, uh, mm. but Cheese pushing, pushing a run forward, which is nice to see. Yeah. And of course, I also see here that we've got, uh, we've had a bit of a switcheroo with Ouija and Trey Bordo. Seems that Ouija's have. had too much of the Bordo pack this time. <laughs> The, uh, the weather nowadays it's wild knocking out knocking out power and stuff so we'll we'll get the whole team back and no matter what we'll have them back tomorrow but an extra hours always uh, always helpful i'm going to apologize for this joke in advance but whether or not ouija comes back for the day uh you can't complain with a 1537 <laughs> <laughs> i mean you're right you're right I'm sorry, that was really, that was the most dad joke I've made, that was the biggest dad joke I've made in a week. <laughs> Just a week, huh? Yeah, only a week. Well, fair enough. Toad. I've been raised by people that make dad jokes every five seconds. A week is a streak at this point for me. Wean yourself down. <laughs> Just a little bit at a time. Uh, crisp. The joke is that Ouija's have Ouija's power went out due to weather issues, and Good I made a weather joke. joke. Yeah, a pun, uh, if you will. Head right on back into HMC. Yeah, no, it looks like a pretty decent run, even though he's red. Yeah. Keep in mind that this run was PB pace going into Bowser in the Sky. That's a so, very good point. Being green on this is big, is big, very very big. It works a lot like how. Uh, oh yeah, he did just switch to green. That is huge because we just saw that with tag. Uh, mm. Tag was red going into DDD, and then he knew he had makeup he could do in DDD and in Fire C, and did, and then was on a, a sub fifteen. So, except yeah, you never know. Ouija's maps, no, oh, not Ouija. I apologize. Uh, Cheese's maps. I mean, they're both they're both goats. Let's be real. But yeah, Cheese's Cheese's maps, a little a little on the slower end, but it works. He's not gonna complain. You know, this run is still very much alive. No chip clip from Cheese. Understandable. We haven't. Some people it. may be upset about that though. Is that a, a big sticking point for a lot of a lot of fans of SM64 top tier? Well, um, people people like seeing chip clip because it's um, it's a bit of a more precise trick, and it you know people like it because it saves time, and you know when you pair it with front sub, it's you know it's pretty cool. When you don't do it, it's like you're uh, you're playing safe. So when people get a little bit wild and wacky by doing the uh, 
by doing the chip clip, everyone gets excited. I see, I see. Adding a little bit of the uh, tension to it. Mm. Discovered by uh, one of the one of the high level runners in the community chip group, who is very good at 70 star and 120 star, and is a bit of a champion at DDD as well. I believe he has the single star record for DDD chests. I can't remember if he still holds that or not, but I believe he has it. Interesting. Hmm. And she's doing pretty well in Fire Sea for the most part. Not getting a, uh, not getting ultimate, but still having a very solid overall performance in the stage. Yeah, keeping... He's still he retained his green out of DDD, which is good. Yeah, it's exactly where, where I was going with it too. Cause that's that's a big one. And, uh, not a lot left, not a lot of execution left, but what Jesus mm. himself called... Oh, oh just thrown short. What, and yeah, yeah, at that point, yeah. That one's on When me. he lands like that, when he lands like that, there's really not much you can do. Because you could take the risk and try and grab his tail before he moves, but if you fail to get there on time, you're either diving off the edge, grabbing his tail off the edge, which is a down warp into a death, or, um... Or, you know, yeah, just you might just end up getting hit by him. Yep. That's, like, pretty much the worst case scenario, I would say. Like, if you at least if you miss the throw outright and he falls off the stage, you know, he's going to come right back up. In that situation, you just have to hope that he teleports. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise he's uh, basically got you stuck. That was was tragic for Slippery. He had a mm. gold split there and bonked into that uh, shy guy or that fly guy. Yeah. And, uh, so what happens? A reset. Brutal. Sweet. It is a brutal game and a brutal category. Four point four. That is uh, no long jump cannon list for Sweegee. Fair enough. <laughs> it's a ridiculous <laughs> strat. I mean, that's what you've come to come to expect, though, from from the man. Yeah, just about. I mean, you see, you'll see Ouija and Suiji both going for it. I don't even know if anyone else does. That was a very abnormal mistake for not just Suiji, but most runners at this stage wouldn't typically have that issue. Yeah. But, you know, random random mistakes happen out of nowhere. How many times do you give him to practice that one before he goes resets? Uh, <laughs> Just the one. Uh, who knows? Who knows? He'll prob oh, probably like maybe one or two more, and then he'd start practicing it. But I don't think uh, he'll do it again. That's a pretty abnormal tr uh, mistake to make. Yeah. I like that mentality, though, of uh, making a mistake and then making sure that you get it right mm. before taking the reset. Um, yeah, I feel like it's kind of like uh, making sure that what you leave on is a success, and that way you can replicate yeah. it in the future. You're not replicating the the failure over and over. Yeah, exactly. Or sometimes if you're just in a rush to get runs done and you're warming up, sometimes you might just uh, make sure you've got the movement that you struggle with the most done, and then whether or not you finish the star, you know that you've done that bit right, so you'll just leave it. That's what I do sometimes. That's smart. I mean, you mm. would know when it comes to, to running at top tier like this. You got, you got what, 13th? A 15, 36, 39 in 16 star on MU? Yeah. That's crazy. And you're 11th for 120 and 6th for 70 in one in, uh, em it's, in emulator? That's it, 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 it's it's kind of complicated with me because I am... Um... I, I'm what many would consider to be a sandbag. I can get times a lot better than I currently have, but I suck at finishing runs, so... I mean, yeah. I, you're top top 10 in 70 star and top 13 in both the others. And am I correct in saying that you got the 120 star uh, 11th place the same day as the 13th place for the 16 star? I don't remember, but I know that they were a couple of days apart, because I got, because the thing is, I've had two 1539s, I got a oh. .6 a few months ago, 
And then for the SM64 Community League that we were doing that just finished the other day, I got a 0.3 PB. Wow. And then you have an, an accolade I haven't been able to say to any of the other commentary partners yet. And that is you have, uh, you're beating Ouija in something. You oh yeah, the 10 times 10. canonless record. You have the record for 10x and Ouija is second. So you called yeah. in the GOAT earlier. What's that make you if you're better than the GOAT? The RAM. <laughs> Add it to his profile, everyone. No, I am. Um, I'm actually in the process of switching to N64 at the moment. Yeah. So there probably won't be any more emulator accolades from me, yeah, which is I mean, a shame because I very nearly got the 70 star emulator record the, uh, a couple days ago. But yeah, I again I suck at finishing runs. I mean, you're, <laughs> play you're playing at top tier, so when you are are given commentary about these games you know exactly what these guys are experiencing you you can see yeah. it from first hand um, yeah i know what i'm on about i know what they're up i know how they feel i know what's going on i've been there yeah like a lot of these things a lot of these strats and a lot of this movement is stuff that these guys all have put hundreds if not thousands of hours of practice into yeah Lord knows I can attest to that. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, you'll see, like, you know, Slippery Nip, Sweegee, Cheese, they've been, I mean, they've they've put so much practice into this game. And Cheese, especially, has been around for years. Like, oh, man. I can't even... Like, I can't even think off the top of my head when he started, but I think it was around, I want to say 2014. I'm probably a couple of years off on that one, but like, I, he's I been around for a long time. I do believe you're correct. Um, at least in, I know he got his first uh, 120 star world record off of uh, Nero back in 2015. Mm. Um, right after Punkation, insane run. That oh man, that guy in this community is incredible. Punkay is his accolades for 120 are in insane or 70 star especially are insane. Yeah, I think the thing the thing with each runner is that I find fascinating is that although there isn't really any difference in there isn't really much difference in movement, there is difference in play styles. You'll find some you'll find some runners who pop to play as consistently as they possibly can. Case and, and the key point uh, the key two runners I can think of off the top of my head that are like that are uh, Punke and Armada, who came to the game from uh, Smash Melee as one of the great considered to be one of the greatest melee players of all time. And he's uh, he actually just today I think got a 47 and 70 star. Um but like, you've got Punke, who is considered to be one of, if not the most consistent runners ever. Yeah. And then you've got, but then you'll have other runners like Ouija, who is the textbook, he's the textbook runner for someone that will apply every hard strat that he can, that he can find. And ju just to save little, little fractions of time. And yeah, you don't find a lot of runners that do that. I, I've been a little bit guilty of that myself, actually. And that kind of play style is very hard. Very, very hard to, uh, to stick with. Because it warrants ten times more resets than most other runners will have. And then you have people more in the middle, like Cheese, who... I mean, Cheese... When he got his world record at the start of last year, as I recall, he hadn't quite updated all of his strats and movement at that stage. And so he um and so he'd been working really hard on updating everything and I mean, the we've seen the fruits of his labor. He got a, he got the world record again with a 13750 and he's been on world record pace more than multiple times since. And then Beyond that, there's Liam, who is, like, <laughs> basically the best of both worlds in the most literal sense possible. He does so many hard strats in 120 star, and is consistent at pretty much all of them. Like, I couldn't point out a single strat that he does that he's inconsistent at. 
And, I mean, the result of that is, like, we've seen him on 136 paces. Like, no one's done that. Not even Cheese himself, the world record holder, the, the certified GOAT of Mario 64. Yeah, especially at the at the 120 level. Um, mm. it, absolutely incredible. 17 time 120 star world record holder. 17. It's, it's insane. It, that, it's ridiculous. And I mean, to, to Punk Hey, I pulled a stat last night when I was looking at, at some stuff that he, eight times 70 star world record holder. Um, he was the only one from 2014 to 2016 with a record. He took 45 mm. seconds off the record by himself in that time. Mm. And his first time being on the leaderboard for 70 star was in July 2013. He was in third place, first time ever being on the board, second place by October that year, and had world record by May. And since then, never once since 2013 has he dropped below seventh. Yeah, that's that, honestly ridiculous. That's the like, single I think most insane stat I can think of is is that the only person I can think of that has a remotely like even a remotely close insane stat like that is Benny, who from from what I remember got uh, I think he got into the top ten before Punke even started playing I think, and he never and once he entered the top ten he never dropped out. It's, it's and he's sitting incredible. in ninth at the moment, I believe. So he's like about as close as possible as you could possibly imagine to dropping out of the uh, out of the top ten in years, literally years. And like, it, I mean, the top ten in seventy is never. I don't think it's ever been quite as close as this. I mean, you've got a three-way tie. I think it was for sixth. I'll double check that, but I'm right. pretty sure it's now, a three-way yeah. tie with 47-23. Yep. Punky Zoofy Cheese. Yep. Yeah, Punky Zoofy, Punky Zoofy Cheese. It's, like, yeah. and yeah. then you've got Benny with his 26, and then, uh, and then, or was it 27? Um, 27. And then you've also got Gold Rush with his 26. Actually, no, Benny's 10th. Benny's 10th. To get top 10, you have to run a mid 47 2x in 70 star yeah, no which idea. is insane like even now with armada getting finally getting his 47 not even even the top 20 still isn't all 47s like now we've got 20th is deku dude actually i think it's simply now i think simply got a 4804 mm. but um I think, yeah, I think it's simply with like a 4804 or something. And then you've got Deku Dude with 4806. And then everyone past that, everyone faster than that has a 47 now. Whereas if you went back to last year, I think there were, tw I want to say 12 people with a 47. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. And we're, you know, to be, to be fair, um, you know, we're talking mostly about, about Western players here. Uh, mm. We're not even mentioning Akira, Zaya, uh, like some Marlene. Of the, yeah, some of the best like players having uh, Akira has 110 months in the top uh, in the top ten. Like that's insane. The most mm. number one, uh, the most months in the number one position is Zaya with 33 months, and then 21 in second. Like. That's over 50 months in the one or two spot. It's incredible. Uh, the, yeah. the amount of skill that the top tier have and have been able to build up is uh, really, really impressive. Um, and we'll, we'll just always, I, I think it's really important to remember a lot of the people who, who paved the way there and then yeah. we'll watch some really good play like we watch here from the people who are now pushing the limits beyond what we even thought possible at a time. Sweetie, Absolutely. I see some green, and I just want to call that out. Oh yes, you do see some green. That is a green good down, sign. Green downstairs is time to take notice. I think. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've seen a lot of early. Speaking game of gear downstairs lines. as well, we've got Flixer and HMC only plus one point five out of LLL. Yeah, and he's looking to to take anything off of his time right now, even one second to to 
guarantee that we don't even need to take a look at retiming moves. He's he's ahead of cheese. Mm. Course, yeah, no like one, no one's playing to take off one second right now. So maybe no, not at all. Green Suiji. <laughs> well, I don't know if Green Suiji. Oh no! Well, there's that. Oh, Suiji, no. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know if Suiji wants to cut just one second. He might, he might, like, he might cringe. He might cringe himself out of the competition if he got a one second improvement. To, uh, to the chat on this there, yeah, we did just have a 16 star tournament pretty much. These are the same people. This is the, um, world record, uh, tournament here. It is a, it's the a circuit. circuit. So once a month we're running, running these cash prizes sometimes they're in person sometimes they're from the comfort of the player's own homes um, but regardless it's it's to the benefit of all of us watching and uh urban arts um who's really really cool in being able to uh offer multi-year college prep programs to underprivileged students in new york teaching them the arts technology of video games uh, and letting them design to prepare for college and careers in tech gaming and uh, more than 90% of the students come from low-income neighborhoods. Uh, more than 90% are uh, BIPOC. And 100% of our students uh, graduate and go to college, compared to roughly 50% graduating from the peers. So massive, massive uh, kudos to them and what they do. Really great cause. And any donations go to that. And most also, importantly, goes towards the goal we can extend the stream. Right now it goes until 8 Eastern, uh, so another hour 40 or so. Uh, and we can add another hour to that. Give uh, get Ouija and Trey, who have missed some time, a little bit extra time to get in some runs. So if you want to donate, exclamation point donate. And, uh, you know, even even one, two bucks goes a long way with the amount of people in here. We get a $1 dono train going. We can hit that in five minutes. Yeah, honestly, it like being able to support being able to support urban arts like this is really cool because we get to support we get to support the top runners that we all wanna that we all wanna see succeed, and we get to support other people who definitely deserve to succeed through urban arts and our donations. Uh, Joker, uh, I I apologize, my pronunciation might have been a little scuffed. Uh, B Bravo I P O C. It's uh, black, indigenous, and people of color. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's important that it's important that these people get more um, get more opportunities because yeah. yeah, again, they're underprivileged a lot of the time, and it is unfortunate in this in the in this world that that has that happens. But you know, urban arts is an incredible group for being able to give these these same people who are equally talented to everyone else uh, these opportunities that they deserve talking about about talent elixir oh yeah out the negative getting the green split hit through ddd this is exciting he's got this is uh, very much pb pace for flexa actually i believe i was in in a voice call with Flexa when he got his personal best in 16 star. I remember, I believe, yeah, as I recall, yeah, I was, in a, I was in a voice call with Flexa when he got it uh, and a couple of others, and his timer stopped working. So he didn't know what the time was until after he finished the run when he retimed it. Isn't that interesting? Mm. And so I remember we were watching it, and we, we, we all said that has to have been a 15-2x. Flexa comes back from retiming and says, I got a 15-21. And I remember all of us going berserk over that, because that, that was like, you know, you never expect to see that on an off-the-cuff off run. No. And a voice call. Good, quick... Uh... BLJ there. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit on the slower end, being unable to get an instant clip, but 
Oh, yeah, Unfortunately, that endless staircase giving him issues. Ah, oh, come on, Flixer, you got it. Now at this point, are you, there we go. are you finishing this run pretty much no matter what? You have to. He can still he can still improve his time and separate himself from Cheese. Love it. Outright. It's just unfortunate that he lost all that time on BLJs. Ah, oh, it's unfortunate. But yeah, no, he he absolutely was on huge personal best pace. Again, personal best for Flexer, 1521. He was without question on pace for a 15-1x going into BLJs. And, but and unfortunately, the game is cruel. Is a cruel mistress and <laughs> will not hesitate to tear you down at any moment of potential weakness. It's true. It's, uh, all, it's all it takes is, at this level is just one small slip and uh, you're, you're off the side of bits and back to the lobby. Yeah. Don't know what Trey Bordo's doing down there. He seems to have phased out of the universe. And is in he he is really he, he really is following that that joke that my friends keep talking about of I'm in your walls. I uh I'm not familiar with that one. Yeah, I don't really understand it much either, but my friends keep saying it and it's I don't I don't get it, but yeah, I don't know. And then we've got Tag, who's just come out of LLL. Certainly not one of his better runs that he's had yet, but I mean, he's been very consistent. Very, very consistent. Yeah, and I mean, I any mean, of he... these guys, the, the nice thing, even when, you know, you're, you're messing up a rub that's on PB pace, uh, it means you're close to PB. It means you're that, just that far away, and it's coming. Mm. Stick with it, it's coming. Um, yeah, that's that's what's really exciting. Is one of these guys tag's gonna get a, a sub fifteen? I, I have oh, absolutely yeah. no doubt. It is coming very fast. Oh yeah, absolutely. He's going to get a fourteen any day now. Hopefully, he gets it at this event because I think that'd be a very very epic moment seeing tag get a fourteen live at a GSA speedrun world record circuit competition. I fully we'll agree. just have to wait and see. Shout out to if you, uh, if you guys if you guys uh, donate some and get us to that goal of seven hundred and fifty dollars, then that extra hour might be what he needs while he's on a roll today. That's true. You could be the reason the world record happens today. Uh, just quick shout out to to Benny and Chat. Um, guy is a, also a, a legend. 2015 mm. he was on the 16 star leaderboard he's got a 1528 outstanding time on uh, his 70 star he's 10th in the world uh, he's absolute legend in in the mario community the next live event yes it is uh it's glitch regen september 23rd through 25th three thousand dollar prize pool uh, in maryland and it will be a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Tournament there as well. Um, but we'll also be taking uh, the World Circuit there. Absolutely. It's going to be a very exciting time being able to switch between some prime Super Mario 64 gameplay followed um, alongside some really high-level Ultimate gameplay as well. Yeah. And it, it's always so exciting to see... Uh, to see any high-level game, um, but both games, uh, you, you know, you can you can see some Mario. Mm. Very nice chip clip from Tag. I believe my understanding as well in relation to, to schedule there is there is also another one of these 16-star um, SWRC, the the World Record Circuits, happening like this one remote before that event at the end of September. So uh, keep your eyes peeled and hit that follow button now so you know when we're going live. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to miss it. We've seen 
back at Double Down, we had uh, we had the winner of that event, Suiji, coming away two seconds off of the world record. I mean, his own world, yeah. and then today, yeah, <laughs> off his own world record, and then today, we've had Tag very nearly pull out the his first 14 in the event, which he also almost did last time as well at Double Down. We've so some there's here. too yeah. much. There's too much. You can't miss it. You cannot miss it. We've had some pacing here too that had potential for world record, several of mm. them, and. Uh, we also uh, have seen, uh, I know I doubled down, two people, two of these people got uh, got their PBs. So, yeah, Cheese and Trey Bordo. Exactly. Constantly. And Cheese did it twice. He did. The run was so nice, he had to do it twice. That's, it's very Cheese. Wait till, wait till day three and then drop a PB after you've already done legendary things. Very mm -hmm. Cheese. Yeah, I won't be surprised if at the end of tomorrow he somehow pulls out a 1420. Just breaks the lo breaks all logic, defies all all RTA believability, and just somehow ends up getting the world record by a significant margin, only for it to never be touched again. You can never count Cheese out. He he very well could win this event with a 14. You never know. She is. Uh, I, I think he has taken the record away from himself more than anybody else has taken it from him or uh, he's taken from anybody. I think it's 11 times he has beat his own record to push things forward. It, it's just what he does. He says, I'm a And on top of that, on top of that, most of his world records, from what I recall, were also minute barriers that were first broken by him. It's true. It's very, very true. One of the few that weren't the case were, um, was um, the 137 barrier, which got broken by Liam instead. Yes, true. Right, and uh, yeah, well, right now we've got Tag in uh, bits, unfortunately dying, but again, you guys can give him a, another hour of attempts uh, with more donations. And he's going to need it, and he's going to want it, because that 14 is coming up fast. It is. Very fast. I mean, that's, what, his third? Yeah. I, I, that's like his third or fourth, I think, into bits. I believe but, um, it's Yeah, third, after yeah. that run, yeah, after that run, we're going to go to a quick, uh, quick word from our sponsor, quick break, and we'll be back soon. Ladies and gentlemen.
All right, welcome back to the Speedrun World Record Circuit for the 16-star event here, sponsored by Urban Arts. I am one of the casters here, Zeus VA, and with me is Mida. And, oh, I mean, we've had some, had some insane turnouts today. We have. There's uh, one, two, three, four players right now in the green. Well, three players right now in the green. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, Trey is as well, so... She's all the way in HMC in green. Yeah, and then when you look at the actual leaderboard here, we've got second and third, both with 1505 in Slippery Nip and Tag. And then on fourth and fifth, you've got Flixer and Cheese, both on 1532. Yeah, the, the level Just of competition insane. here is incredible. And you have three mm. seconds separating first to third. Like, that's... And two sets of people tied. That's really, yeah. really good. And uh, it shows how, how close these guys all are in their, their skill level. And that's not to take away from Ouija and Trey Bordo, who are kind of tailing the pack at the moment, as Trey, at the start of the... For pretty much about, I want to say, around half of the... Mm -hmm. Half of day one today has been unable to do runs. And Ouija, shortly after Trey came back, had a power outage and hasn't quite been able to fix it. So, you know, both of these guys have had less time to do runs than everyone else, but they've still had some very solid performances. Very much so. I mean, I, I know, I wish I had a, a 1620. Um, mm. So, it's a... Uh, anything sub 16 would be amazing but one of these guys and, and my money right now is on tag but you know any of these guys at any moment could sub 15 and uh all of a sudden it's a completely different game yeah absolutely right now i think the two favorites at the current moment for getting a 14 in this event do seem to be suiji and tag both of them have shown that they were able to uh, have been capable of it Tags entered Bowser in the sky on 14 pace, maybe three times. One of them being very comfortably on 14 pace. Suiji is Suiji, so he's probably going to figure it out. <laughs> He'll probably just pull out like a 1450 again at some point. And, but uh, chat yeah. says, chat's, chat's putting a bet on slip, and I don't think that's a, a bad bet either. We've seen he's second in the world he's or third right now uh no he's second Luigi's third no, he's second yeah 1450 he's held, he's held the title twice um and is 2020 2021 the next number makes sense 2022 being the world record holder again i think it's mm. uh i think it's a very reasonable ex expectation there at some point this year um and cheese is cheese well, that's what he does is he just breaks records over and over so I fully expect I. It wouldn't be extremely surprising to me if you oh, walked away. Oh man! Oh jeez, um, cheese and slippery nip. Both of them were on some very green runs. Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, they've no, both I mean, just lost very nice pace at paces. Cheese is still going, but yeah, yeah unfortunately, what, slippery nip so unable to continue that run. Is that a minus seven on that split? That he, I he can't quite on? tell. I think it is, mm. but unfortunately, unable to, unable to pull out the, uh, the fast, the faster cycle for um, for fire scene or reds. One, two, three, four people in a row predict Suiji, uh, and I think it's a that's a, a very very good guess. I don't think there's any wrong guesses here though. Anybody here mm. can do it at any time. It's, it's definitely going to happen. And I think everybody Absolutely. here will, will PB um, if they keep they keep playing within these tournaments. They're definitely going to. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's really ridiculous good. how good these guys are. And I mean, I think another, another person that's kind of been a little bit more on the quiet side in terms of their consistency today, but Flixer... I mean, he hasn't even got a 14 minute, some of best, but he went into BLJ's earlier with a 15.09 best possible time, only about eight seconds off of his some of best, which is insane consistency. Mm, she's making it through, had to fight a little bit, build up that speed. Mm. Oh my God. He gets in real quick Still. here. 
So you very much against, capable. Oh, he dropped <laughs> oh, it. No. Oh. It's okay. He's still very much capable of improving on his 1549. Oh, I did it again. Oh, wait, no, he's only a 32 now. My bad. I forget. We're off right there, but get through bits. At least give it a run. Yeah, he's uh, not going to be able to get the. Uh, he's not going to be able to get the improvement. But um, he can still possibly gold if he really wants to push it. True. And at minimum, it's never bad to practice bits. No, never. I think all of these runners could use a little bit of Bowser in the Sky practice. He said to himself uh, previously, he feels this uh, bits no reds is the hardest stage in, uh, in all of Mario 64. I think Tag might be able to attest to that after <laughs> how poorly Bits has been treating him today. Fair. I mean, I don't think we can forget that 1456 best possible time and him just being bullied by the first elevator. No. Takedo saying they missed the event. No, we got more tomorrow and... We're able to hit that 750 here today by 8 o'clock. We'll go for another hour. We'll go all the way to 9. Great throws. Yeah. Very, very nice throws. Only per only th only throws I've ever seen that are better are Kano's throws, and he's like his own monster. It looked like a 1536 from Cheese. Did me as well. But regardless, it's still... Not what he was hoping for. Went into this with, uh, mm. with a good time and a little disappointed going out of it, especially on that uh, eternal staircase there. Yeah, I think if those BLJs had gone a bit cleaner, that's not even factoring in the fire sea. You know, that that absolutely would have been that that could have very well been a 150x the rest of that with the rest of that run. Mm. Ooh, mm, Trey Bordo unfortunately hard. dying. In HMC, one of the stages that sometimes can be a little bit embarrassing to die in, since it's typically not ha something that happens. But I think I'd rather die in HMC than I would in Warps. That'll I think that's fair to say. Dying in Warps is probably the most embarrassing place to die in, because there's only one star you'd realistically die on, that being Wild Blue with a poor angle on the tree. Color me embarrassed then, because uh, I've died there plenty of times. Oh, so have I. <laughs> <laughs> We've all done it at least once. And if you haven't, you're lying. Or maybe or you haven't wrong. played the game. There you go. <laughs> all right. Back into wants. Yeah. Reset, reset, reset. Couple in walks and uh, mm. she's not too much going on at the minute. She's just changed slightly. He looks different with a shirt on. <laughs> agreed, agreed. He grew facial hair from the from the shirt. We've got tag going into SSL. And the uh, he Womps was very good to him. Hmm. Absolutely. His green, even if he can, can, if he can hold that green, we might see something special from him. Who knows? There. Maybe he'll finally get that fourteen. He's been we, super close. We know it's coming at some point. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Again, there are a couple of people capable of a 14 at the moment. You've got, obviously, obviously Tag. And then you've got Tomka, Gamero, and uh, GTM. Who, from my understanding, GTM... So GTM got a personal best a couple days ago. And since then, from the sounds of things and from his posts on Twitter, he's been getting 14 paces pretty much every day wow. which is ridiculous and of course we've seen here today as well tag is not much different that's true and you know we've seen bigger jumps in uh in times 
picked up, I, I I fully agree. I don't I don't count Trey out at all cutting some time off of his current. Absolutely. I'm of the personal belief though that GTM is in fact uh, 14 2x capable, and no one can convince me otherwise. <laughs> well, then I will not try. Exactly. You can't. You can't convince me. G GTM is going to get a 1427.69, and it's going to be the greatest, the the greatest run that will ever exist in Mario. Wow. You know, on uh, virtual in console, 2037, <laughs> on, on virtual console, Tag's got a uh, got second place. Yeah, he does. In 15. Then pretty much immediately after he got that, I believe he switched. In very very good. And yeah, just shot down the leaderboards on. Uh, sh just ab completely shot down the leaderboards on N64. You'd think he. You'd think he'd been grinding for months on here. <laughs> Just waiting before he could get the good times and explode on the leaderboard. Not too different to what Suiji did, but of course, Tag has that long history on Virtual Console. A lot of these guys, and, and we've seen it from Suiji even here today, don't like to even submit a time until they're in the top mm. three. They say, I, I'm not good enough yet to compete at that level. I want to come in with a bang and then make my mark. And yeah, we've seen we've seen it work. We saw it work even today when uh, Green Suiji took two hours to practice and then came in and very quickly was uh, number one on the leaderboard. Mm. You know, you've got. I mean, these guys are all incredible runners. Again, like Flexer might technically be this. You know, Flexer might be the slowest one in this group, but by no means is he slow. Like. I mean, even even at du Double Down, he was on PB Pace. Today, he's been on PB Pace multiple times. Like, you can never count these guys out. Like, Flixer, you know, again, Flixer might have the slowest PB, but he could just as easily get top three in this event with the right run. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. I think uh, there's a lot of grinding that these guys put in, and if they keep doing that, it's inevitable that they're going to continue to get better. Hmm. And you know, Flixer... Flixer as well. And Flixer as well, you know, he, um... He's, yeah, you know, he doesn't play that much in comparison to everyone else, but he's still keeping up. Like, it, it's, it's quite ridiculous. Yeah, I, all these guys top 20, that's, uh, I exceptional. Mm, absolutely. We, uh, we're looking at 526 on the, the amount raised here out of 750, so we're like 200 bucks short right now and we have an hour to do it to get an extra hour uh so if everyone wants to to put in one two dollars uh whatever you can can afford in that uh it goes a huge huge way to helping uh extend this run and uh to helping urban arts uh, continue to provide for people uh in serve students build game to help them build games do game design programming and I mean, mm. their statistics are wild. 100% of graduating senior seniors earning college acceptance. That's incredible. It's it's uh, it's unbelievable, honestly. Yeah, we've only got a we've only got around about an hour left, uh, unless we can get that goal. So, if you guys want one more hour of these guys just crushing this game and pushing ever closer to the fabled 14 then uh yeah you might want to get those donations in otherwise it'll be waiting till tomorrow that is uh that's a long long wait and uh yeah. especially when today we're seeing people on crazy pace i mean tags on a pretty decent pace right now yeah there's no guarantee they'll get runs like these tomorrow so you absolutely want to capitalize while they while they're currently having them. Hit up that uh, exclamation point donate link. It's on screen right now a couple of times. And... Mm. Pop something in there. Give us a note too. 
Yeah. I, uh, I want to know what what everybody's uh, favorite stage in Mario 64 is. Doesn't even have to be in the 16 star run, but Ooh. I'm super interested which one people like to play the most, um, just in general. What do you think your favorite stage is? Uh, I I mean, it's awful to save a bomb battlefield. Um, I know I <laughs> I know I spent so much time in that both learning the speed run and as a kid. Um, it just mm. feels really comfy. It kind of feels like home. It feels like Mario 64 to me. And I just, I like that feeling that it gives me. Um, mm. might not be the most exciting stage, but it is, it's a comfort stage for me, you know? Yeah, I understand that. I've been, um, I've been touted as having very, uh, interesting, okay, bad takes, uh, in terms of my favorite stages, because I am personally a huge lover of, uh, Tiny Huge Island. Ah, <laughs> I like that stage. And, That's a cool one. And Big Boo's Haunt. I'm, those are, like, my two favorite stages, and every time I bring it up, uh, all of a sudden... Everyone in chat starts uh, hitting me with the four weirds and the cringes, and suddenly I'm like the least favorite caster in history because I like it, because I like those uh, stages. But um, got a five dollar donation from WoofGG saying 16 star Monga W. Thank you for the donation, and from uh, uh, and then a ten dollar donation from Hara X Ho. I uh, hope I didn't butcher that. Uh, with nothing else to say, uh, anonymous three dollars. Thank you. And another anonymous one dollar with another less than three. Thank you very much for the donations. It's going to a good cause. Those, uh, you know, five, ten, three, one. Those are great donation amounts. Um, makes it makes it easy to spare on the side. Um, and then at the same time, it it drives this goal. We have enough people watching here. We would hit the goal in an instant uh, with with donation sizes of one and two dollars. Um, mm. if, a, if a bunch of us pitch in and that, I got that was a lot more BBH love than I expected. I'm I'm gonna be honest. Um, a lot of people did actually like uh, BBH for for the casual there. Um, mm. Only one or two people left because I said that. <laughs> And uh, just just kind of uh, bringing it back to this run, we've got Ooh. Tag with another 1456 entry into Bowser in the Sky. Is this the run? I think this run, the, the gameplay I'm here is I'm scared to speak. I'm yeah, scared to speak. That's what I was going to say, is it kind of speaks for itself in that regard. Give it some breathing room. All I can say is prages in the chat for tag and this potential 14. But so far, dare I say it, we are looking good. Tempting fate, 14, 17 into the pipe. We have the potential for quite possibly a 14 right here if all of the throws are clean. That's one. Two throws. Oh my goodness. That's oh three! My goodness, are you kidding me? Tag with the 14! This is absurdly He's been pushing for so long! We said it was coming! It was coming! We said it! Get that star high! 58 from tag 609 My putting him goodness. in first day oh one my. oh my another five people in the world have sub 15 correction six tag 609 putting themselves in the top echelon of players for super mario 64 yet again Wow, that is impressive and very, very well earned. Wow. This yeah, is Yeah, if you want if you guys want to see more, if you guys want to see more runs like this, you got to get those donations in cuz you never know. We could get another run like this from someone else. We could see Suiji getting another 14. Who knows? How often You're only going to you find out if you get that extra hour. How often do you see people bop their own score? When you're playing like this, guys, don't let him stop playing now. 
He's on a tear. Let him keep playing. Show him that we're here to support him. Let's get those yeah. donations going. We are really, really close. Because look at those BLJs. I mean, that's a that's a forty-eight. He can do better than that. Wow, I he am. He can so absolutely impressed. do better than that. We could potentially get another fourteen from Tag. Who knows? Unless you want to hang. Unless he wants to hang it up here. I don't know if he will. I wouldn't blame him if he does. But. You know, we've still got Sweegee and we've still got Slippery Nip. Those guys can both absolutely pull out a 14. Yeah, no no doubt at all. I'm, I'm excited to uh, see the leaderboards updated and see that bad boy get retimed. I missed, I missed uh, Tags 15.05 and I also missed uh, Grey Bordo coming back, but I'm glad that I got to be here for, uh, for Tags first 14. So, uh, yeah, following that incredible run, I'm going to do another word from our sponsors and head off to a break. This will be it for me in the commentary booth today. So I'll be back tomorrow. Um, I'll be replaced by Warning Track. Let's get some, so have a good get one, guys. Hype. Get some donos get going, Get some guys. hype for these runs. Urban Arts helped prepare me for college by giving me a lot of experiences working both independently and collaboratively with other people to make really cool games and taught me how to put my all into creative projects and that helped me put together a very strong portfolio for college. The best part about being in the urban arts community is the people that you meet. A lot of the people here are have the same interests as me, so in the future, making friends here will benefit me and them and everyone around because we all benefit from each other by gaining skills that other people had that I may need. Urban arts helped me see myself differently by showing me that I can be a good leader. In the studio program, I was assigned the role as project manager, and fulfilling that role for the first time actually helped me realize that I have good leadership skills, and it really helped me to develop them.
Hello and welcome back to the GSA Speedrun World Record Circuit, of course, SM64 16 Star Edition. I am Morning Track, and I'm joined by Meter, and uh, boy, we really should have joined like 10 minutes earlier, huh? I mean, I was here, and I am still buzzing. My heart is fluttering for him, and I was sitting here on my butt while he was making that Mario move in a way only five other people can say they've ever done in the world. Yeah, uh, vicarious uh, nervousness certainly yeah. is a real thing. And in some ways it can be worse because we don't have any control over it. We're at the mercy of whatever the runner decides to do. And boy, just what a what a great moment for TAG. We did one of these events uh, about three and a half weeks ago. It was live in Vegas, I believe. And uh, yeah. the whole time we were saying, is TAG going to be the seventh person ever to join that group? And I, if I recall right, he did set a personal best that day, yes. uh, but did not break 15, fell just a few seconds short. And here, just a few weeks later, his upward trajectory continues. And normally, when I say we're going to get a retime, that's because we're not sure if someone is in first or second or third or, you know, it's a fraction of a second. In this case, we're going to need the retime to see whether he didn't just become the seventh, but if he actually bopped Aki at sixth, because I think he might have gotten just below him uh, with a 1458. And I just just real quick, I'll call it the uh, minus, minus six, the, a lot of green on slip, Slippery's side, but... I mean, anytime you can be in the same breath as Aki, like, that is an honor, so uh, that's a good job. Well earned by Tag. Uh, we, we saw it coming. We knew if he kept putting in the time, it was going to happen, and that's what happened. So good on him. I'm really glad that that, that happened for him here today. Yeah, and this is all for a great cause. I want to remind everyone uh, that this is for Urban Arts, uh, which teaches underprivileged students the art and science of game design. And we do have a few more donations. Uh, $50 from Anonymous. Boy, Anonymous is giving a lot of money. Ooh. You think that's all the same person? Or, no, probably not. Probably not. <laughs> uh, $10 from Got Crypto says the cheese. Yes, yes, indeed. And a $1 dono from, huh, this is interesting, from you. Oh. you wanna, do you want to read your own message? Because then it'll be in your own voice, right? <laughs> For sure. Uh, I, I'm calling $1 Dono Train for sub-15 tag hype. I want to read nice. out these congratulations live. Uh, we knew it was going to happen. He put in the work, reaped the rewards. Um, and we are so close to adding that extra hour and, and giving these guys a chance. Tag is on a roll. Slippery is close. Everyone's calling for the sub-15 for Slippery. We saw one. Another's going to happen. We just need a little more time. Yeah, we do need a little more time. If we hit $750 today and uh, we are over 600, we will extend this by another hour and give the runners another hour. I see we've already hit the make runners go shirtless goal, which is a slightly <laughs> less worthy cause uh, on yeah. several fronts, but uh, it, it's catching on, right? Is this the new meta? Oh, it definitely is. I mean, that was a, a, a $1 donation incentive and we hit that one pretty quick. I think she's <laughs> personally put the dollar in. <laughs> Yep, I mean, Cheese is famous for it, but I guess it's catching on. People are saying, you know, Cheese does pretty well at these. <laughs> Tends to clutch it out. Uh, maybe he's on to something. Maybe these shirts are holding us back. I think uh, I know Flexer's been shirtless most of the day as well. And earlier when we were talking about it, people in chat uh, and bo both of us in the booth were, we think Simply was the first person we saw doing it. Doesn't necessarily yeah. mean he invented it, but may have been the one to popularize it more than anything. And uh, really, just a, just a cool little fun thing to do it'll Plus be really hot. funny yeah it'll be it is hot uh, and it'll be really funny if slippery nip the guy named slippery nip is the only person not shirtless by the I end mean, of maybe, this maybe he is to to two delicious's point oh okay you think it's like a potty hair thing and possibly yeah. i mean hey no judgment no, no judgment no he does have a hell of a head of hair on him for sure a hell of a run going exactly you read my mind <laughs> right Sorry, through with the glitch oh man all your transition <laughs> it's okay no you took it first it's rightfully yours and uh slippery nip is absolutely flying through lava here this is great it really is this is exceptional to see and uh we've we've seen him be on pace several times and it's happening again i mean that's the way he plays right it's just really sure. consistent uh a little less frantic uh, than say like a Ouija, uh, for example, <laughs> but he has a good run going so often late in this. And I think it's almost like the law of averages. He just figures eventually everything's gonna line up. I'm just gonna be brutally consistent. Eventually things are gonna line up and then I'm gonna put together, you know, a 14X, which he's of course done before. Yeah, I mean, that's putting in the grind. That's the same thing we just we just saw come to fruition for Tag, putting in all of, those, all of that grind and then walking away with uh, a PB and uh, if he gets PB, if Slippery gets PB, you know, we're pushing towards oh. WR. And that's a, that's another set of letters that's kind of a bigger deal. 
Yeah, if Slippery Nip gets a PB, uh, there's only about uh, a two-second gap for him to do that without setting a world record. So uh, <laughs> it could be both of those, certainly. But yes, a tag with a PB and the EB so far, but this is not over yet. Is at least an hour left. There could be two if those donations keep coming in. We're getting very close. And there is another one here, $10 from Insert Pie. Excellent job, Tag. That was so exciting to watch live. Here's to hoping that we see even more 14s tomorrow or today. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Yes. Yes, could be today. Like uh, like the previous casters were saying, you know, some of these runners seem to be hitting their stride. It would be a real real shame to kind of cut that off early. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I want to get Tag back in here playing. Slippery is a beast. Uh, green Suiji right now has a very green run. That looks like a double-digit green run. Oh my God. Um, and so does Cheese. Like this is, everybody is playing top tier. They must have heard Tag got, got sub and now they're, it's going to push him. That's yeah. Runners are a competitive bunch. I, I feel like when, uh, when when one of your competitors, you know, breaks your world record or uh, has the top time, you know, in an event like this, maybe there's a moment where you kind of go, ah, damn, you know, but then, you know what you do? You get right back on the horse. These guys are used to falling off, used to getting back on, used to grinding. That is the name of the game. So I'm not surprised to see that several of them are maybe looking at making a run at this event best just minutes after we see it. I mean, this is, right now is a, is a run at that and a PV and... Uh... A, a tie so oh my god i'm uh i'm gonna kind of let this talk talk for itself here because this is incredible well the silence makes me uncomfortable so i don't think i can follow <laughs> suit slippery with a 1420 entry here just looking to throw you could not tell by looking at him by the way that he was even awake let alone looking at such a great time here come the throws and it's focus just got it that's one that's two Oh my god, we're so oh close. Oh my goodness. Oh, that dis- Oh, the reset. Oh. Oh. Wow. Wow, I mean, I don't blame him, but... Wow. This is the inverse reaction to how, how I felt just moments ago for Tag. You know, normally when something like that happens, I'd be screaming my head off, but it just happened so quick, I was speechless. Just, that's all it takes. You can grind all day, you can have such a great run, and then one little miss, and just like that, it's over. And you have to, you have to reset, literally, and you have to reset emotionally. That's well stated. Oh. This is a heck of a run, huh? Yeah. Fourteen thirty pace. It's an embarrassment of riches that we can move from a run like that, you know, getting spoiled there on the throws, right over to Green Sweegee doing the same sort of thing. The the talent on display here is ridiculous. This is the best of the best. I will say there is one notable absence. Several of you have been asking about it. Where is Ouija? Unfortunately, I'm hearing power outage. Um, it's a real shame that Electric isn't casting because he might be able to help things out, but uh, maybe t later today or tomorrow, and then that won't be a problem. Yeah, it'll be good to get him back for sure. It adds adds another layer to uh, to what's already really hot com competition. Um, so we'll we'll be excited to see him back. Uh, and we said the same about missing tag missing Trey earlier on, and now we have him in. It's, it's it's nice when we have all of all of our competitors here. These guys are all so so good. Yes. Uh, as much as I love those lovely logos, I would love to give up uh, just a little bit of that space uh, for, for Ouija on there because he is so, so fun to watch. The word cracked is usually thrown around, uh, and that is really the only word for it when you watch him because the movement doesn't really make sense. Even next to the other best runners in the world, there's a little something different about it, and there's sort of, like I said, a franticness, a kineticness to it uh, that is just really fun and nerve-wracking to watch. And, I mean, when you... Uh, chat's talking about it right now minus 16 and you're the world record holder what is that yeah what is that how do you beat yourself that much even potentially like can you imagine if your tag this hasn't happened yet there's a lot a lot can go wrong god we know that but can you imagine if your tag right now maybe you don't even win this event with, with like the sixth best time that's ever happened that's actually like are you entirely mad? possible can you even be sad I at mean, that point pretty fair point too I mean, yeah. Yes, um, but also, you, you got to hats off. You're playing at the, at the top tier. And that's I what, mean, that's yeah, that's right. You're up against the big boys now. So, like, you can't be mad. You knew this could happen. You know what all these runners are capable of. Plus, how long has he been thinking about sub-15, uh, yeah. uh, 14 5X, and now he has it. Like, that's yeah. going to carry for a long time. 
Right. Maybe the last, you know, sub mark that will ever be done in this game, unless someone discovers something really crazy, right? You know, um, so joining that club after all this time, after all those grinds, after coming so close just a few weeks ago, I think you're right. I think while he really wants to win, and I'm sure it would be a disappointment to lose with that time, getting over that hurdle, you know, that he's been staring at for all these months, yeah. it's this is a win for him, whatever happens. Warning track, he's getting faster. <laughs> it doesn't he, make sense. People are asking, is, is sub-10 HMC like a real thing? And oh apparently, God. three seconds under 10 is, is the best uh, that, that's been seen. And uh, 9.59 right now, and still improving. I want everyone to know that I'm not ignoring this run. I'm just afraid to look directly at it for too long. <laughs> it's like the sun. It's just, we'll talk about this in a minute when we have to. But for now, I'm going to talk <laughs> about the other runners and pay no attention to that man on the large screen right now. Yeah. I Everybody mean, look away in solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> this, it's it's so great to be here. Uh, to be here watching this. Oh, goodness. New uh, new donations here. Oh, all yours if you want them. I, I can't even look at any screen right now. Uh, we have Into the Woods with $10 saying, Rip, Nip, Get them Tag. And uh, I think we can add on to that one about Suiji. Let's make it happen. Yep, we are $124 away from extending this stream by an hour. And again, several of the runners have been... Oh, no! A oh, my God! Just a little bonk! And oh that's my God. that's all it takes! It's over so quick! Oh, my goodness. Which of you in chat looked at it? Who was looking at the screen? Someone. Someone broke ranks, and it's all over. <laughs> Keep your eyes on the warning track, and you won't hit the wall. <laughs> Oh, God. That is, you know what? Here's the sad thing. Half the chat has no idea what that means. Fair you you made the bold decision to reference non-esports, actual oh. sports. I mean, <laughs> yes, it is a baseball term. <laughs> There's baseball video games. There are. Yeah, it's a good point. It's a good point. But you don't need the warning track in those. You got that nice top-down view. You know, it's just yeah, okay. for aesthetics. Boy, uh, look, we're kidding because we're heartbroken. It's the only That's reaction true. you can have. The real thing that gets me, and this is something you saw with Nip and with Green Sweezy right there, it was immediate. It was one tiny mistake, hard reset. Didn't think about it. Didn't play through it for a couple seconds. It was just no. Look at the times. Any mistake at that point, I'm done. He was what sub sixteen point eight, like. Man, did the I I did miss the the end of the bonk? Like, did he? I don't fall think he should have reset. No, I, I I think it was I think that was just you know reflexive. I, I mean I think he should have at least kept running for a few more seconds there. I think. Yeah, I, yeah, I I'm not sure of the exact time possible at that point, um, but it seemed a little hasty to me. Mm. Here and he he might have failed the cycle, but yeah. I mean regardless, I, sure, I can't. I, mean, I don't know how sure you can be. It, it was just it was so quick, right? It was like a half a second. Yeah, Ugh. it's it's brutal. It's it's hard. I know uh, we we used to see a lot of people do the angry pause buffer um, when they would mess something up and and hurt their times during events when you didn't have resets. Yeah, uh, with the 16 star tournament uh, or the uh, season season one back in 2019. People would do that all the time and end up wasting a full minute over the course of a run to pauses. Ooh, void out by Flixer. It's me, Mario. Wow. Yeah, I mean, as as good as all those runs were, they pretty much all end in tragedy now. They're all resetting. Here's the thing, though. You know, he 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 reset it. Let's say he could have uh, gotten PB. Um, still, he still could have broken world record or at minimum event PB. He's, it, it's Green Suiji, man. He's going to do it again. He's going to get a, a, a 30x, like a 3x. I, I have no doubt of that. It's just, it's the grind. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And uh, that attitude, however much we can critique it in the moment, and let's be clear, it's easy for us to critique it hmm. from comfort here, right? As opposed to being that man in the arena, you know, reacting in the moment. But um, in the moment, it's very tough, and the attitude, the kind of perfectionism that you have to have in your head is the kind, is the same thing that makes you make that split-second decision. There's Nip with a bonk, stop, scratches himself, and says, yeah, okay, <laughs> done with this one, too. I've uh, I've done that exact same <laughs> sequence of being <laughs> like, all right, I'm going to tell you, I'm up, just pause and stop moving and, and give myself a second because I'm frustrated with myself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even if we can question the decision, uh, the attitude that produces the decision has produced, you know, remarkable yeah. results. So I definitely can't question that. He is, sure. he is exceptional in every way. 
That's true. Wow. Most months in first place for 16 star of uh, anybody in this competition. That's that's bananas. It is eight I, eight months he's held. Um, my God, that's incredible. Not, I mean, for uh, one of the most competitive categories, right? In one of the most yeah. run speed run games. Yep. And uh, he hasn't. It's been over the course of just since uh, what November 2021. Yeah. His first his first I think record. So. I think so. That sounds incredible. about right. That is incredible. Oh boy! Wait, do we get a big donation here? Look at this. DSP420 says $123.84 says cheese is the best, ASMR is top tier, and that puts us at exact, in case you're wondering what that amount is, it gets us to exactly $750, so the stream will be extended another hour, and thank God, because these runners uh, need a little more time, as it turns out. They're close, but they're not quite there yet. Slippery nip, almost on, uh, almost got it himself, in bits, lost it, we just saw it from Green Suiji, almost uh, 10 seconds off of world record uh tag already pb'd sub 15 everybody is doing amazing right now and keeping this running is the right call so glad to see green suiji back in and uh good work everyone for hitting that goal here today and extending this an extra hour uh, everybody reaping the benefits for this yeah, absolutely. And, you know, everyone kind of rising or falling with the stream here. We talked about that kind of vicarious excitement. Yeah. Uh, 1,200 viewers in chat, but tens and thousands of butterflies. Uh, that is a line I lifted from the late, great Vin Scully. Uh, for those of you who don't know, here's another baseball reference. Yeah, he died yesterday. <laughs> uh, some say the greatest sportscaster to ever live. And I know this is a crowd that maybe doesn't know that much about Vin Scully, but here's the thing. He was so great that even if you don't know who he is, he has affected the way you talk, the way I talk, the way you listen to sportscasts uh, in general. So... Rest in peace, uh, Vin Scully. Uh, we uh, we honor your memory today with, admittedly, a very different type of sport, a very different type of casting, but <laughs> but still the same spirit. No, I love that. That is a, a touching tribute. That is, this is the first I'm hearing, so I'm I'm glad I heard I heard in this way. It's that uh, it was a very nice action. Yeah. Hey, after you guys are done with this, go plug in Vin Scully into YouTube and listen to some of his great calls. Uh, I know I do, just for fun sometimes. And that's why uh, that's why you're one of the one of the best at doing this. Oh, you're too sweet. You know, I tell you what, baseball, uh, maybe not the most similar sport to this particular esport, <laughs> to speed running. There's a lot of downtime in baseball and not as much here. Although there is right now. When, the, when you do get three hard resets like that in, uh, in quick succession, you do sort of have what we have now, right? Where a lot of people are early in the runs and they're resetting uh, after small mistakes and things like that. You can see there's Flixer with a reset, uh, both Cheese and Slippery Nip actually at almost the same point in their runs as well. So you do get a little bit of downtime, but it doesn't last very long on 16 star. Maybe 120, a little more baseball-like. Mm. No, that's that's fair. That's a that's a longer one, and that's really the test uh, when it comes to being able to do all of the stars and movement and execution over the course of over an hour. Uh, that's that's a hardcore run for sure. Yeah, really is. There's Nip with another reset, and the funny thing is, he looks the same now as he did when he reset that run, and he looked the same then as he did before he had to reset that run. The man is implacable. Yeah, I mean the. The amount of the uh, excitement, I, I feel like he, he emotes in a very different way. And because of that, there's a lot of power and focus to his emotes. So you see him give any expression, it's a lot more powerful in that regard and makes you really, uh, oh, wow, he's he's feeling very intensely if we're seeing it. Yeah, no, that, that lip curled a little bit. He's uh, showing a lot of emotion. It's basically the equivalent of a stand up and fist, uh, fist pump for him. Yeah. I think I once <laughs> saw him get an event best and his eyebrow went up. And everyone Ooh. lost their minds. Yeah, that's uh, clippable right there. It, it was. It was clipped almost immediately, and it was gift the next morning. I think it was Electric who did it. Uh, no, it was Markinator. Markinator 99. I remember. I said, "You better, you better clip that for me." And he did. And God bless him. I, I look at it sometimes. And that's basically kind of the most you're going to see out of him. But then you see other runners, and I, I say this every event we do. I just love that these different types of people come together to compete at the same general level because you see, geez, right? exact opposite ripping off shirts talking openly during the run right talking about the cycles how frustrated he is or how happy he is just a totally different human being and yet here they are next to each other on the stage yeah and and both of them very much earn the spots they're in it's it's exceptional um how it takes all kinds very yeah. well exemplified in that way yeah no it absolutely does um they have a lot more variation than us we just talk and criticize <laughs> but uh they are all over the place and, and i love it i love watching it Here's Nip at exactly the same spot where he bonked before. Uh, it's just, you don't normally see runs end here, 
but when you've been running for six, seven hours, something like that, you know, that's when those sorts of mistakes, those kind of routine things can start to fall apart. Yeah, and I think there's uh, there's definitely something to getting a certain distance into the run before accepting any mistakes when you're used to being on paces that are, you know, the 14 3x. Yeah, kind of sets the standard for yourself. Right, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, as the event goes on, maybe we get less excited by certain runs, they get less excited by certain runs. Now that the bar has been set, you know, they have to kind of react accordingly. I mean, it's very plausible. Like last time, I don't think we had, uh, we didn't have anything this low in the event in Vegas a few weeks ago. Um, and it's very plausible that someone could win this with a low 15 or with a 14X, and you don't really know. And the difference between I have to beat 1458 versus I have to beat 1506 or whatever it could have been, very plausibly, um, is whether or not you reset more or less aggressively around the margins. Like those bonks, yeah. right? If the high right now were 1505, right? What Nip has in third or what, uh, or even what Flixer has, although that seems implausible, they wouldn't have reset there probably. That's a fair point. Uh, double that, the, the July event, Green Suiji won that bad boy with a 1450. That's uh, right. That's, and oh, then that's right. I forgot. The next closest was a 15 flat by Ouija. So. Uh, everybody was within, you know, seven seconds of their their PB. Uh, Slippery had plus 27 off his PB, but um, you know, here he's not. He's uh, he's been pacing in a way that is making people take notice, and I, I think it is very highly possible that we see oh, uh, not only PBs from more people uh, today and into tomorrow, but world record is entirely possible at any moment. Yep. Uh, Stay with us. We're going to go to a short break. We will explain to latecomers where Ouija is, and uh, we'll see more from Slippery Nip in just a minute. Ladies and gentlemen.
Hello and welcome back once again to the GSA Speedrun World Record Circuit. This is, as you can plainly see, Super Mario 64 16 Star Edition. I am still Warning Track, I am still with Meter, and Slippery Nip is still trying to get the kind of run going that he almost clutched out about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, I mean, there's there's something to be said there about when you've, you've set up standard for yourself. I know I can hit this, and then you're, you're failing out in uh, Dark World. Something you've done a, a thousand, thousand times. Uh, it can definitely be frustrating, but we're going to see him get out of that in the next uh, next little bit here and get on a tear again. I, I have no doubt about that. Yeah, I maybe this is me, you know, psychoanalyzing too much or just describing how I would be thinking about it. But I, I can imagine that when you get that kind of adrenaline rush, and I know Slippery Nip doesn't look like he has an adrenaline rush ever, but you got to imagine it's there because he's a human being, we think. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> that the adrenaline rush at that late run that falls apart, if it's maybe, maybe the mistakes happen earlier in the next run because it's, it's hard to get excited about this part. There's a bonk, there it is. And it just it's becomes harder. Spot. Yeah, like just the focus, you know, this is supposed to be the boring routine thing. You're not going to save any big time here, really. You could only mess it up. Uh, if you do mess it up, you're going to reset pretty much. I was going to say immediately, but nah, he's going with this one. Yeah, and uh, I don't blame him. I love, uh, and I said this earlier, I love the idea that if you screw something up, if you feel like you're stuck in a spot, like just finish it out, just get the victory on it. And then even if you reset after, that's fine. At least you have, have conquered it now. And then next time you can emulate the win and not emulate the loss. And I think that there's a lot of mentality to that as well. I think you're right. It's all about, you know, muscle memory. And if one of the last things you remember, especially in those late stages, is failure. And, uh, you know, the next time you see that moment where you made a mistake, the next time you get to those throws uh, is when you're on another similarly important run. I think that's a big risk. You know, I think you'll definitely see this from certain runners. They'll they'll play a run out sometimes that has very little hope because I think they don't want the first time they do throws in an event or the first time in two hours or whatever uh, to be on that perfect run, you know, they want it. They want it to feel routine if it can. Uh, look, can we talk about the big bonk that Slippery had, and he's still green? Yeah, <laughs> it is pretty wild. I mean, it only cost him a couple seconds, but I just figured at this point, you know, given how aggressive he's been about these, and given that 14:58, by the way, from Tag is now the time to beat. You know, I just figured he's only going to get more aggressive from here. But eh, I don't know. Maybe he's watching the donos. Maybe he saw that extra hour and realizes he's got a little more time. Maybe, maybe he didn't reset there because of you, dear viewer and dear donator. Yeah, it's a lot of power in the community, and uh, really, really impressive to, to hit that 750 in the, the short time we casted today. So I'm really excited to get to see an extra hour of uh, 16 stuff. Yeah, I mean, they've just been so close, and it would be a real shame. And we've seen it so often in these events where the big run happens in the extra hour. You know, I... That's true. I mean, look, on some level, we talk about certain runners as being particularly clutch. You know, we say, geez, is, is clutch. Well, that's what we mean. We don't just mean clutch. We mean really clutch because kind of all these guys are clutch or they wouldn't be here, right? Because they have yeah. been in that moment where everything needs to be perfect. And it was, you know, and they got some low 15 or, or they got their 14x. So they have that in them already. And that means that when they know the time is running low, when they know they're in that last hour, uh, sometimes that's when you see the best runs. And these guys are so competitive. Some of them use the competition with against themselves to drive them. I know that we've seen that from Cheese uh, uncontested for years at certain uh, certain world records and continues to push the category forward or against each other. And we know that because every time we get these guys together for the, the circuit, they're pushing each other's times down. We get PBs every single time. It's amazing to watch. Yeah, and I like what you said about, you know, Cheese kind of driving his own record lower. I mean, I don't know if this is true or who, I don't remember who said this, but something like the person who's beaten Cheese's record the most times is Cheese. It is. Yeah, 11 times he's beaten himself for a world record. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's speed running in a nutshell, right? I mean... It's basically just a little version of those little kind of ghost runs in Mario Kart that I saw when I was a kid. I remember thinking, this is so weird. Why would you want this? And then I discovered speedrunning and I went, oh, now it makes sense. It's basically <laughs> that, but times a thousand. Yeah, I mean, the honestly, the first thing I fell in love with with speedrunning a long time ago was the community more than anything. Uh, just seeing everybody supporting each other. They're doing it always for a good cause. Um, and it's it's not about me versus you, even though sometimes it is. Uh, at the end of the day, you're happy when you see somebody else win. Every person here, though mad that they're losing the tag, guarantee you they are happy he got his sub-15. Um, and they want that for themselves if they don't have it yet as well. 
I completely agree. It's it's mostly you to you today versus you yesterday. You know, yeah. it's a self improvement thing. It's a discipline thing, and that's why I'm so glad we had that live event in Vegas a few weeks ago because they were all in the same room together. And when some of them got on a run, um, I think uh, it might have been Tag. I think no, Trey Bordeaux. I think set a personal best there. Um, yep. It wasn't a 14x, but it was a personal best, and uh, and you could see the other runners behind him cheering for him, patting him on the back. You know, it's a very supportive, inclusive community like that, and it is that it really walks that line where it is competitive. They do want to beat each other, but they also want to drive the time lower together, and that that's by necessity because when someone discovers something, a strategy, a tech, a glitch, whatever, everyone else is going to find out about it anyway. So it's a collaborative effort to see what time is possible, just from the very nature of the thing. Yeah, I mean, at that event, yeah, it was Trey Bordo. He, he beat his PB by one second live uh, in uh, in Las Vegas. But so did Cheese. Cheese beat his old record by 16 seconds. <laughs> yeah. And then later, another day, he beat it by 10 more seconds. He shaved off 26 seconds over the course of that event. That's that's incredible. It, it is. Um, now, some people would say, well, hang on. You know, there was, there was plenty of improvement there because he doesn't normally run 16 star, and that's yeah. fair. But it's also true that he does it's because he doesn't run 16 star you know it's not yeah. like he was grinding for six months and kind of became a 16 star expert he really just mm -hmm. kind of sidled on over to this category and i know your people are probably thinking it's the same game how different could it be well at this level it is pretty different you know there's a lot there's a heavy amount of specialization you do see names across several of these leaderboards but there aren't that many you know that are on two or three or more or near the top of several that's that's very exceptional and only a couple of runners can do it because the level of specialization we're at is just so intense yeah, and specialization and just like the perfectionism because anytime the, the, the level you have to be at in getting a near perfect run for whatever the current meta is, is exceptional. And to do that on top of like in any one category is hard enough. It's going to take so many attempts and then to do it again in another category is completely different fish. You have to double the amount of time you're doing and uh, it's, it's a lot. So. Hats off to, to people who can do multiple. Uh, but Cheese has been running, you know, 16 star since, I know, 2019. I always, I bring it back to that, uh, that first season of 16 star um, when everybody played against each other. And Cheese ended up walking away with the victory against Aki live. And he won the whole thing against people who all they did was 16 star. They had world records. Cheese never had a world record in 16 star. And walked away with the victory. Well, you said the key word there, live. That's why it happened. And you're right. Hats off, shirts there's off. The, Hopefully it the stops clutch. there, though. Yeah, there's the clutch gene coming through. Uh, checking his phone. See, this is kind of what I mentioned earlier, you know, the emotion, the kind of talking on stream about what's happening, even complaining about, like, you know, RNG or whatever. And here it is. It's resetting, and he's just like, yeah, let's 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 check Twitter. By sure. my record, yeah. Jesus never even had a top 10 time in the 16th. I think that's right. I mean, I don't have uh, the, the scoreboard from way back, but I don't remember seeing it, at least. The, I, I piled some data going back to the beginning of that we have on a month-to-month -month basis, and I got a zero there, but I got 41 months spent in the top 25 and 16 mm. stars. So he's uh, he's on the board, but it's not the one that he, he's really grinding for. Just enough to say, yeah, I can do it. Yeah. And I'm one of the best in the world. Sure. Yeah. I'm cheese. <laughs> I'm cheese. And and look, I mean, even though I don't want to undercut what we're saying about specialization, at the same time, speed running, obviously there's individual games, individual skill, but more than anything, it is a mentality. It's a certain personality type, a certain willingness to put yourself through that grinder that ultimately is what makes you a great speed runner. So that that part is transferable to every game and every category. We wanna do we wanna talk about it? We're in SSL right now. We're downstairs. And uh, we're big greens again. It's happening. Uh, yeah, well, I guess now we have to. <laughs> at, at some <laughs> point. point. Yeah, at, fair enough. We'll, like, we, we'll, we won't look directly at this front. Instead, we'll look around it and say, given the level of play we have seen from Green Suiji in the last, uh, you know, in the, eight, the seven hours today, um, or the, the eight will go on, it's happening at some point. Like, I, I think it's without question. We're going to see a world record from, from Green Suiji, unless someone else snags it first. But his time's going to go down. I have no doubt. It's just a matter of when. Could it be yeah. tonight is the real question. Could it be in the next hour and a half or so? Thanks again to the donators for extending this by an hour. Look, we don't have to look directly at it. Let's just all side-eye the stream. <laughs> just enough. Again. You know, you can see in your peripheral, like, that looks green to me still. So we'll go with that. But yeah, look, at a certain point, you can't take your eyes off it. That's the whole idea. 
Suiji flying through. Green, 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 green. It's his name, it's his times, it's everything. Yeah, I mean, we got four people down at the beginning of the uh, beginning of the stage here. Going to start there. Hit pre-splits pre for the lack of two skips. So, a couple of things to look at there. Wow. See who's, uh, who's starting off. Yeah, look at this. Five runners going, four of them starting early here. Only Green Suiji with a late run, and it is a heck of a run so far. So, uh, unfortunately, at this point, there's nothing else to look at. We have to stare directly at it. I mean, we could have four super hype, super close sinks. We could. That would be cool in its own right. That would be cool in its own right. In a couple of minutes, that might be really cool. But in the meantime, unfortunately, we have to <laughs> risk the curse. We have to look at the, at the actual run as it's going. And it is, it is a pleasure to watch. Uh, I just might not say too much. Fair enough. And I mean, maybe we, maybe we got it all wrong, right? Maybe we're, we're spending too long tiptoeing around a thing that you look right at it and you, you just hope and you put all your, your heart into it. Maybe yeah. that's what it means. I mean, there are some enemies in Mario where they come at you when you're not looking, yeah, right? Sure. And then you turn and look. It's one of the boos. I forget which one. Um, yeah. It's kind of like that. So maybe I do have it inverted here. I don't know. It didn't work last time. So I'm willing to try anything. <laughs> Fair enough. There. Stare the new Prage. Wow. We got there. We go. three seconds save. Incredible. This is wild. And, you know, I, I wonder if he even gets nervous at this point because he's so often on a run like this. I, it, may, does it transcend? Does it change from nervous at a certain point where you know, you're no longer nervous? It's like a different type of nervous. There, there has to be a better word for it that is escaping yeah. me. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, anxious is probably right. You know, it's funny. My, uh, I, I talk about this when I think about my dog sometimes. You know, I've often asked people, like, what do you think? When a dog gets excited, are they afraid? Are they happy? And the answer is, no, they're just excited. That is the dog emotion, right? It's mm. all those emotions kind of lumped into one. And yes, I'm comparing the runners to dogs in that regard. I think there's, like, excitement, there's fear, but it's also alertness. It's adrenaline. I think that at this point, emotions get kind of blurred. You know, it's just, just do the thing, right? There's no way to kind of parse out where one ends and where one begins. I've heard some really, some people who are just excellent. Just the, they are the word excellent uh, at what they do. And they've said there's a focus sometimes around situations like this where most people, you know, you should be nervous. Uh, you know, you should have that fear or that that anxiety. But instead, it's just a hyper focus that borders on confidence where you're like, I'm doing it. And that's yeah. what it is. It's a fact. It's not even a question. Nice dodge. Oh, very nice. I mean, I keep waiting for the mistake and it hasn't happened yet. He is just. What can you say? What can you say? The superlatives. We've run out. Move that Mario. Saving more time. My goodness. This is not a particularly risky time. Okay, there we go. Ugh. I mean, look, the top runners... Nip's not usually a big problem there. Usually. Usually. I mean, we've seen some pretty good runners on some pretty good runs get ruined by it, but yeah. I don't know. We're at the point where that's not usually how something like this ends, thank God. Yeah. Not, not anymore. Two years ago, tons of runs were lost to, to MIPS and uh, BLJs, although a lot of times that still is a is a factor there. But yeah, uh, Owlis, a lot of different tricks that now, nothing. They're nothing. Yep. Chip, no problem there. I mean, it's it doesn't even feel special, you know, in these events <laughs> when I mean I know I know Nip doesn't normally like to do it, for example, but yep. a lot of the runners do and they just nail it every time. And I barely even I don't even necessarily mention it anymore every time. That's how consistent it is. But yeah, I mean, there just aren't that many things that trip them up reliably. In fact, I'd say more than, you know, BLJs or more than throws, maybe. It's just some random bonk. Yeah, it's true. Or some tiny little thing that uh, that, that slips it all up. Yeah. Well, another time save. Heading into Fire Sea now. Green Suiji just tearing it up. I am, whatever that dog emotion is, I think I'm starting to get it. Here we go. <laughs> Bull glitch, nice and clean. Again, barely worth mentioning. Hits it almost every time. But this is actually the part I'm nervous about, the part that they look best at, the free-flowing movement. This is where the little bonks happen. This is where the little platforming happens. I like that. I don't think that was quite perfect, for example, right there. Oh, that was a tiny little belly slide for a little too long. Is this not where the issues happened last time? It was, it was right before this point, yeah. He's 
past it now. But there's still a lot that can go wrong. There's so many things that can go wrong. Each one of them by themselves, not that risky. But when you have to do several dozen things in a row right, uh, suddenly that looks a lot more daunting. It's true. Mario looking gassed. Heading through that fire sea. Pretty, probably pretty warm there, too. I would think so. Almost as warm as New Hampshire, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, nothing yet. Nothing. Yet. That's that's all we're reporting on. Has anything happened yet? Has there been any disaster? You're gonna know when it happens. If we don't say anything, if we're not yelling, if we're not crying, if we haven't gone totally silent, you know the run is still preserved. I am keeping my eye on the others. I've got some practice going from Flixer. Um, that's that's always good to see. Get that means to me prepping for big things to close out here you know you're you're heading towards the last hour quickly you want to be ready and you want to make something happen before the end of uh end of the day today going into another day tomorrow yep you all affected that there's no way to be practicing if it were only 15 minutes left there's an hour and 15 thanks to those donations here are the blj's they don't they don't pose a problem for him very often but you never know and there it is that's why he's green Sweegee. Barely worth mentioning, whereas it's the, the major crucible for so many other runners trying to reach that elite level. It's true. Ooh, Here's another. Little, tiny pause, but even still. There it is. And I mean, you're right. Well, what, what can you say about them? Sub-perfect, right? Yeah. Just slightly sub-perfect. It's not an immediate perfect catch. It's just a half second extra. But a half second sometimes, sometimes that's all it takes. And I'll remind you that event, that uh, per PB... And WR, as you put it, are the same thing for this man on the big screen right now. True. I believe best possible time showing up. Oh, oh, showing up. Right there. 52 anyway. Um, the most unlikely place to lose a few seconds. And there it is. The hard stuff is easy. The easy stuff is hard. Finishing out is, I think, is the, the right thing to do, especially this is the second time you've been on such a monster pace. Yes. Uh, last time, you know, chat and some of us as well uh, questioned his decision to, to cancel <laughs> out there. and Just because um, he had such a huge lead at that point. Even if he lost 10 seconds, that might have been worth uh, running out. But, oh, I mean, that could be it. It was just a few seconds there. And it, again, when do you see a run get lost there, right? Basically never. Three, twice now. In the last hour, he has been on insane pace. Like, it's happening soon, guys. It's, there's no doubt. We said it about Tag when we saw the same thing. All three throws perfect. He's yep. there. He is He is one run away in any one of his runs. 10 PB and will at some point. I have no doubt about that. He's going to just miss the event best. And uh, I don't know if that little falls the difference, but I think it looks almost exactly. It was a few seconds, right? So that is almost exactly the difference, certainly between uh, this and a 14X and maybe between bopping tag for first place. And it happened at the very end, just running up that little hill. Something we weren't even talking about. We weren't bracing ourselves. We weren't saying, here come the BLJs, right? We weren't saying, here comes the little hill he has to run up. We weren't even talking about it as a potential choke point or a potential place where you could lose the run. But when you only have that kind of margin, the little two, three second thing, every place is a place where you could lose the run. Very true. And I mean, oh. I, I think he was, you know, he quit out very, very quickly, went into practice mode, but he beat his time. <laughs> <laughs> right, he did lower. He, what by a, a second? I think 15, it was 1501 now, and he's two seconds off a of sub four, of sub 15. Like the guys in and when you're when you're so good, <laughs> one of the top three times in the world is frustrating. <laughs> Man, that is a place to be. That's a place to be. To be mad at a 1501, can you even imagine? And some Kate Bush references. There we go. Stranger, hey. Stranger Things, man. There we go. I do love the little revivals we get every time uh, something <laughs> like that gets uh, picked up by a modern show and a whole new generation discovers some great song. Agreed. Yeah. It is, uh, it is unfortunate. Melancholy for several different reasons, then. <laughs> I mean, again, but like, I, you've probably been casting this game a little longer than I have, but I just. That's not a place I think about. It's not a place I set up as a caster. I don't say, here comes, you know, the big moment. Here comes the throws. Let's count the throws. Let's check out the BLGs. I don't think about it that way. I think they're just going to run up this hill, and they almost always do. But as I mentioned earlier, it's not that any one of these things are hard. It's that you have to do the not very hard thing perfectly 50 straight times. Yeah. Yeah. Nonstop. Uh, and all the while, you have people breathing down your neck. They want it. They're doing it, too. It's... uh. 
it's a heck of a... Th that's why it's arguable about whether it's a sport or not. You know, a lot of people who, who don't know, who aren't paying attention, are like, it, how could it be? I mean, think about it. The level of, the level of play they got to be at, they have to be top tier. They have to be fine-tuned. And that's, that's what athletes do. Yeah, and like, I know people sometimes, you know, laugh at this sort of thing, talking about the physical aspect of it, because they're sitting down pretty much the entire time. But if you've ever done anything that makes you tense for a couple of hours, you know, sometimes you'll stand up and you're sweating, you're tired, you're not sure why. Um, when your body is tense, doing anything, even if it's not, you know, physically exerting, uh, that takes its toll. And, uh, you know, let's be honest, your average, you know, pro sport game, three hours, you know, less yeah. for soccer. Uh, they can do this for seven or eight sometimes. So, look, it's still not terribly physically demanding. We'll all agree with that. Uh, but there is a physical component to it. There is a fatigue component to it, uh, a stamina thing, a real world physical stamina thing that does come into it. And I mean, there's seven pushing towards eight billion people in this world. If you're the best in the world at something, that's something to hang your hat on. That is a big deal. And most, if not all of these guys up here can say at some point they have been the best in the world, even if it was for only a couple months. That's something. That is a really big deal yeah and, and that's why a... yeah that's why tag is going to be happy like we were saying earlier one way or the other because now he's part of this group you know no one can take that away from him in the same way being the best in the world for even a brief period of time like you were just saying no one can take that away from you either true let's see he's uh what the seventh person to ever do it mm -hmm. yep the next person will be the eighth nobody else is gonna gonna take that seven away that will stay there for forever that's incredible well, and I think the first to join in, it was like at least half a year, uh, something like, I think maybe even longer. So it's been a little while, too. That club has been static for quite a while, and it could be a while longer, uh, although the way things are going, I, I wouldn't bet on it. Um, yeah, look, it's a very exclusive club. And hey, you guys in chat, you were all here for it. Cheese is hyped up right now. <laughs> heading into the, uh, heading rapidly towards that final hour, he is, he's going to get on to something. I'm telling you, we're going to see something crazy out of Cheese here in the last hour. I mean, he usually does, uh, certainly. Um, I mean, what's he going to do at this point? The shirt's already off. He's going to tear his hair out? Uh, it's possible. Maybe that's just a flesh-colored shirt. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not Cheese. That's all I'm saying. So if you're, keeping track, if you're keeping track, we think Cheese might have a shirt on and Slippery Nip might not, despite what the images seem to show. Yes, that is what... That's that right. We're saying what I'm asserting. The man in the top right, we're saying he might not have a shirt. The man in the bottom no. right, maybe he does. We can't yes. tell. Yes. We don't know. You don't know until he actually breaks the record, and then he just goes and rips a shirt that isn't there, and could be painful, but it'll definitely be entertaining. Flixer's on a decent little pace here. Uh, nothing we're getting too crazy excited about just yet, but let's keep in mind, you can see here, there's this tier at the bottom there, uh, all within seven seconds of each other from first to third, and then there's a whole second tier from fourth to sixth, and Flixer's at the top of that one, certainly, so a marginal improvement won't do much for Flixer because he's already gotten as high as he can in that tier. Uh, he's only interested in this point at maybe making that leap into a really low 15x. Yeah, that is, that's a pretty big gap here when you're looking at at the scores, but all of these guys here could at some point get sub 15. I, I do truly believe that, um, Flixer included. Uh, I, I have heard people uh, kind of mums that, uh, but uh, a 1521 PB, uh, any top 20 time can become a one um, pretty quickly if you're on a tear, if you're feeling it and you do everything right, it can happen. Yeah, all right, look, runners try to grind for years sometimes before finally breaking through. I know the concerning thing for Flixer is that their PB is about eight months old, right? So you don't have, like we were talking about with Tag, where it's just like they've been getting better every week, every month, right? Their their best time is so recent. In this case, it's about an hour and a half old. <laughs> so, you know, very, very recent. So there's that upward trajectory. There's that constant improvement. So when your PB is, you know, six, eight months old, something like that, that's a little concerning. You might have plateaued for a little bit, but, you know, they would hardly be the first runner to plateau for a little while, grind a little more, and then something sort of clicks. Yeah, I mean, that's totally true. Sometimes people uh, people take a little break too and pop into another category, grind there. Um, we've, we've seen it time and time again from a lot of different runners and a lot of those are the best in the world. 
Yeah, speaking of popping into another category, the fact that Cheese is doing multiple 16-star runs within <laughs> one month definitely has got to make some of these other competitors a little nervous. They're like, are you sure you don't want to keep trying to lower the 120 over there? No, we're good over here. We don't need Cheese to contend with. It's hard enough as it is. I mean, Cheese is, is uh, at least on his stream yesterday, practicing 70 and 120. Oh, boy. Um, I know uh, Pace. That's massive, massive uh, event going to happen there where the literal goats, <laughs> uh, the, some of the, the fathers of, of the, the 120 star are going to be going against each other and kind of a callback there. It's, it's going to be really intense and a really fun race. I'm super pumped for pace for that. Yeah, uh, almost exactly three months from now in Laurel, Maryland. Uh, you're going to want to check it out. We've been obviously showing you ads for it. We're going to show you another one in uh, not too long, I'm sure. But you're going to want to check out Pace at uh, Xanadu Games in Maryland. I've been there myself. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a great uh, venue for this kind of thing. And all these runners going to be running like that. And yeah, Cheese getting into game shape for it. I mean, I guess when you've done all the Cheese has done in 120 star, it's like, what else do you do but move into the other categories? Well, normally Cheese fights his own time down. Let's yeah. Be real. That's normally what Cheese does. But how long can you do that? It's so low now, right? Like at a certain point, maybe even Cheese has to go, okay, that's it. Yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't know that Cheese has that in him. Maybe he does. Maybe, maybe he jumps for a while and it's going to take something to kind of pull him back. But regardless, I mean, on this, uh, in this event, in the, the uh, world record circuit for 16 star, you have the top, the top three runners, one in each category is, is in first place. Like, that's incredible that... The, the best of the best can play against each other in the same category and be so, so close. There's that picture going around of, of the three of them standing next to each other, and it's it's really something special uh, to see, you know, Cheese, Ouija, Green Suiji all standing next to each other. Yeah, just, just so much greatness in one picture. And it exemplifies what we were saying earlier about the community, too, right? Like, these are, these are bitter rivals. There's a lot of rivals in other sports, other esports even, who they wouldn't pose for a photo like that. It wouldn't feel <laughs> right to them. So there's, there can be some genuine bad blood, but but not here, not with most speed running, certainly not in this category, certainly not with uh, this group. That's very true. Trey trying to get his bits on here. Give this bad boy a run and finish it out. I definitely, I, I love the idea of finishing bits. I know a lot of people that you fall in bits, it's easy to hit reset, I've done it myself. But uh, finishing it out, I think you can always use more bits practice. Might as well. Yeah, and they do have a full hour left. Again, thanks to the donators. And I do want to remind you, we have hit the goal, but this is still for a great cause. It's Urban Arts, the School of Interactive Arts. It's their pre-college program that teaches underrepresented students the art and science of video game development. And I love how pragmatic it is. They, It's not just like general stuff, right? They have them actually, as a group for their final project, make a game, you know, from start to finish. They all take on real game dev roles. and. You know, we talk a lot about games being samey, right? You play a game and you're like, I've played this game before. Uh, this is just like last year's or whatever. You want different games. You want new games. You want the game that you don't even know you want yet. Well, this is how you get it. You help uh, teach and fund the next generation of developers. And you get different people making games from all different walks of life. And uh, that's what the Urban Arts does. And it might not pay off immediately, but... It's going to pay off. You know, one one day you're going to hear about one of these students that went on to make some game that you love, and you're going to think, I was part of that. Yeah, that's very, very true. And we're bringing in new voices. That's a, a huge thing. Bring in new voices who previously were, were either silenced or unable to, to to speak for whatever reason. And uh, we're, they're helping do that. So it's huge. It's wonderful. Well said, well said. We're going to go to a quick break. Uh, we've got another hour, thanks to you all. When we come right back, we are in the stretch run. Don't go anywhere. Here we go! Urban Arts helped prepare me for college by giving me a lot of experiences working both independently and collaboratively with other people to make really cool games and taught me how to put my all into creative projects and that helped me put together a very strong portfolio for college. The best part about being in the urban arts community is the people that you meet. A lot of the people here are have the same interests as me, so in the future, making friends here will benefit me and them and everyone around because we all benefit from each other by gaining skills that other people had that I may need. 
Urban Arts helped me see myself differently by showing me that I can be a good leader. In the studio program, I was assigned the role as project manager, and fulfilling that role for the first time actually helped me realize that I have good leadership skills, and it really helped me to develop them. And welcome to the bonus hour, folks. It's Electric in the booth with West Dog now, and your donations have yielded yet one more hour of attempts for these runners. And we've already had some pretty great magic from today, ranging from Tag getting his first 14 minute time ever at an, any sort of event, uh, or at all, period, with a 1458 landing him at the top of the leaderboard. We got Green Sweetie and Slippery Nip with a 15 OX, and yet again, a Cheese and Flixer tie at the 1532. Now, Wes, like, like, what are you thinking is going to happen going into this final hour of attempts? Like, because it's not that much time, but it is a lot of 16 star. You can get a few resets in. Uh, honestly, it's 16 star. You never know what's going to happen. I just find it hilarious that uh, history has seemed to repeat itself with Tag coming out on day one, getting the most amount of... Uh, on the most amount of high caliber runs and she's in flixer yet again meeting up in another tie i don't even know how he could possibly get this close one thing i could say that i would like to see here is if ouija's going to be doing any more runs to improve upon the uh 1537 because we know ouija tends to be a little bit of a perfectionist so 1537 i mean 
we all know what Kiwiji is really capable of. I'm hoping if he's got any more left in him, he's able to come out here and get a low 15, maybe a 14, make it interesting for us. Exactly, yeah, and like you said, Ouija's one of those runners, just like Green Suiji, where, like, th there are a lot of resets going on, but once he does finally continue something, it's typically on a really impressive pacer, and, like, like Suiji getting some, like, really, really impressive runs, like, I, I think this 1501 is a slight improvement, or it might just be a retime of, uh, the PB earlier, like, it, it was, like, the first run that he did out of practice, which, like, Suiji just demonstrated that, like, if you put the practice time in on all the stars individually before a session, it, it'll pay dividends. You, you tend to get really good runs once you just put your hands on everything. And speaking of, she's actually on a pretty tight pacer right now. 10-10? That is not a time to stop at. Especially when you're looking at a leaderboard PB of 15-32. We need to all go right. ahead and keep our eyes open for this one. The, the funny bunny always gets up to... All right, looks just diving like, for it. Looks like we're actually being told that Ouija will not be joining us uh, for the rest of the day today as a power outage has uh, claimed his ability to Mao, unfortunately. And that's that's an unfortunate limitation of the console. We have not reached perpetual energy yet, and so uh, we were still relying on the power grid to power our obsession with moving the Red Hat Man. It's a darn shame that with a... Uh that with uh, Mario moving as quickly as he does, he's not able to generate enough friction to be able to get ele to get electricity to power up the Nintendo 64 console. We just we haven't discovered the secret the secrets of high octane speed yet. Yeah, and and unfortunately, even if you did power the console itself, you, you got to power the TV too. Then you got to power the the internet connection. Then you got to hope that your internet connection still works, even though your ISP doesn't have power. There's just just so many little variables there getting in the way of uh, us and enjoying that Luigi performance in Mal, but in any event, oh, she's just a little bit too far right for the front sub approach. But honestly, still a decent attempt here. Up, uh, diving right under the star, commentator's curse. It's gonna be a tad behind, but this is still within a leaderboard PV range at the very least. We move on into fire sea here and I'm at least you also think too with, with mario moving through so many lava stages they, they could get like geothermal electricity in luigi's house but i, I doubt i'm also glad to see that trey Bordo was at least able to come out and uh, get some runs in today because earlier he unfortunately was not able to uh compete due to some technical issues on his end so at least we got a day's worth out of trey Bordo. I, uh, oh. looks like he, it looks like he's gone back to the lab in order to practice it out, so maybe we can get a, uh, a complete s sweep of 15s from all competitors as Cheese unfortunately loses his run in Fire C. Yeah, an unfortunate ending there. Going ahead and, uh, messing around with the BLJ just for the meme, but, uh, going a little bit too fast, actually. As we got Slip going on in with attempt still. Slip getting that nice 15.05 PB earlier. There's like, also, the, yeah. also taking a, what might be the, the last break of the evening. There's also something I'd uh, like to see out of Slip, too, is of all the Lifetime Attack 16 star events we've seen him compete in, I've yet to see Slip get a 14. So, of course, this is coming from a little bit of bias here. I'm a Slip Renef fan, so would also like to see Slip pull out a potential 14 here. I wonder if it is going to happen. I certainly think it could be possible, you know, it, it, it's, it's the sort of thing where, like, it, it really just kind of depends on the day with Slope, you, you know, so, sometimes he's able to get a lot of attempts really, really deep into the run, just reliably, but, but some days it, it just kind of, you know, he's not quite able to get those, uh, like, you know, nice 14 5x paces going, um, but I, I, I feel like, especially with how he's been playing today, like, that four, that 15.05 run had a lot of room for improvement right in the late game. It, it was one of those testaments to, like, just brushing off small mistakes. Like, just little time losses throughout the last few splits, but it was all stuff that, like, very easily could just wreck your mentality, and he still just powered through. So I, I feel like we've got a good chance at seeing it during this event, for sure. Because as we saw with Tag, like, Tag's previous PB before that 1458 also just had some late-game mistakes despite being, like, very clean 14 pace right up until the end. There we go. We had been wondering for a while who was going to be the next one to get the 14 in the community, whether it be Gamiro, GTM, or Tag. But it looks like Tag is the one next person to claim the 14, and 
I now gotta wonder how many people have a look there, unless you know at the top of your head electric. Oh, I, I don't happen to know. I, I, think, I think the number is still in the single digits. I think it's like eight or nine at this point. Um, and I you gotta remember to count uh, Finny on VC, and I'm, I'm not sure if there are any other uh, VC or enemy 14s. So, counting for Finny on virtual console, we now have eight. Tag is now the eighth person to get a 14. You know, which is just that, like, that, that's a real testament to just how difficult it is, but also, like, how much the community's progressed since, like, Aki's singular 14 of, year, like, years prior. Like, that, I, I just remember that, that being such a statement time, where, like, 1459, and it was like, okay, no one else is running this category again. <laughs> like, you're, you're telling me I have to go for OG to get this time? No, thank you. And then, of course, Salt and Ginger coming out with Salt Plus all of a sudden made a lot more people motivated to start running it again, and, uh... Here we are now with eight fourteens. Like, like that's just such a crazy milestone. That's the one thing I kind of miss about uh, Aki being the singular fourteen. I kind of wondered if anybody would ever be crazy enough to just go for OG uh, for for the memes, for the laughs, just to keep it going in a run. Unfortunately, I don't think anybody's willing to accept that kind of a risk. Yeah, but of course nowadays you have people just going for long jump cannibals, which is like, you know, we, we had the revolution with salt class and then people were like, you know what, uh, consistency is overrated, let me, let me get that time save. <laughs> oh, slip unfortunately just a little bit short on the bomb throw. And that's, that's the uh, risk of doing these like really, really optimal Bowser throws, you're, you're doing such tight rotations that if you're not spinning the stick like at a smoking pace, like you're going to end up and, uh, coming a little bit short. Mario. All right, so now we've come to our favorite portion of one of these kind of events, is where everybody is either in the early game or in practice. Actually, so many more practice ROMs that I think I'm used to seeing at once. So it looks like the only people actually attempting runs right now are Cheese and Slippery Nip. Practice at the very end. I wonder if this is all gonna. Wonder. Well, I wonder if Tag honestly might be done for the day, just because they got the four. They've got the fourteen. They're now just uh, slipping and sliding, having fun at HMC. I don't know if they're willing to uh, go for any more attempts or, uh, and just bask in the glory of being the next part of the 14 club. Yeah, uh, honestly, like, I, I wouldn't do any more attempts today. Like, I mean, th there certainly is the potential to get another PB. Like, once you break that huge mental barrier, I remember, like, uh, Cryptic, another member of the community, like, he was grinding for a 49 and 70 star forever. And, like, the night after he got his first 49, he did a no reset run and PB'd again. And so, like, I, I can see that happening if, if Tag potentially tries to do some more runs. Like, maybe just having that mental block out of the way will suddenly lead to, like, a 10.05 HMC exit and then just, like, clears through the late game. But th that's certainly wishful thinking, I, I, I gotta admit. Like, it if you achieve a milestone like that, that a singular digit number of people have ever achieved, period. Like, Tag is one of eight people to see a 14 on live split at, at the end of a run like th that's where you just go ahead and take a bit of a break you know have your favorite like uh, beverage and food and just just really just take a night off go ahead and rewatch the run in private and just like you know give yourself the golf claps every time you pull off a strat absolutely he's definitely deserved it that's for sure oh, no doubt like, like, you really just can't understate, like, how big of a time that is. Like, how pristinely you have to play at this game for an extended period of time, honestly. Like, you, you might think, it's just a 15-minute run. Like, so what? But, like, how perfectly you have to play during that 15 minutes to get it under 15 minutes. Like, it, it, you can't understate what sort of demand that is on a person. The better oh yeah, I also got a 1451 but forgot to record. Thanks chat for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, I hate when that happens too. Yeah, there's so many instances there. There's actually uh, somebody, I've seen a couple of Mario chats named Box Meal, who says that they were actually the first person to record a 1445, but they lost the they lost the VOD, so unfortunately it's just kind of up in the ether. Oh, of, uh, well, you know what they say, awesome. you know, uh, no vid, no did, so I mean... Mm -hmm. Can't get around that. Rip. We got cheese on a pretty decent pacer here through uh, SSL. And cheese yeah. looking, cheese looking like he's channeling his inner uh, Mario speedrunner god powers here. We have uh, seen the likes of Simply and Kano in events in years past compete without a shirt on. 
just uh you know the t the tightness of the fabric constrains your full ability to be able to maneuver mario so it looks like that for the final hour here cheese is uh trying to go shirtless to see if he's able to unleash that full run as yes he gets through pillarless on the opposite side and i don't know what he's trying to tell us there with the the finger up in the air maybe he's singing i don't know but we'll just have to, to uh give wait. some sort of message to the camera we'll, we'll go ahead and have our backroom teams uh try to decode that could potentially be a, a you know a cry for help uh mario's got him trapped or something But it's something about the, the shirtless gameplay, like, it, it really seems to bring out the, the extra focus level, because I know Simply got, like, at least a PB, if not a world record shirtless, Kano got world record shirtless, like, it, it's been such a thing in the community that there's something to it, I, I don't know what it is, but there's something to it, it seems though that you have to be on camera for, for that power to come out, like, if you're not on camera, it just, it doesn't mean anything. It's absolutely true. Or, you know, he could just be t t taking it off just because he's gotten so many runs into a shifting, uh, shifting sand land and lethal lava land. You just can't take the heat, so you just got to cool off in every way possible. You know, you, you know, they do say that, like, uh, being exposed to red light can make you feel like you're in a warmer climate. And, uh, you know, definitely a lot of reds and oranges in those two stages, especially LOL. It's always fun to see a player with the lights off in their room. Oh, she's not quite getting the ending there to lava boost. It's always fun to see a player with their lights off in their room, and they get to LOL and just red all over, them, like their wall on their face, like just. It, it, I feel like it's the most apparent color like that. Like when you get to the swimming stages, like the room gets a little blue, but once you get to the fire stages, it's it's just all red, all on the camera. I think you're onto something because with the uh, blue color lights on in the background, you've been alluding to red and orange, which are of course the warm primary colors, and he's got the blue light going on in the background, trying to be a cool color, trying to cool himself off. Yeah, just just really trying to manifest that uh, that cool energy. And just uh, if if you're a veteran to watching Sixteen Star, this is certainly part of the experience. Like you you have to get through that intro a lot of times. I I remember it doubled down, Slippery Nip's attempt counter showed, and I think Slip had probably the most attempts out of any of the runners there, with like 60,000 some odd attempts. And I, I feel like it's kind of a rite of passage. Anyone that watches Mario for long enough, you either see or you ask yourself, how long have you spent watching the intro? And so, like, I, I kind of wonder what, like, 60,000 minute long intros would, would end up adding up to. Years, many, many years. Why else do you think he has such a long, <laughs> luscious beard? He's seen so much. Yeah, he told himself, I'll, I'll shave whenever I get the 14 4x, or I'll shave when I get the perfect run, and he's still waiting. You know what we might also be waiting on, Electric, is possibly more donations for the Urban Arts Foundation. Guys, this is the last hour. We reached our goal, but... Has anyone thought about going above and beyond for further helping out the kids here of the Urban Arts Foundation? Urban Arts is a pre-college program to help teach the art of video game development to the underrepresented students of the community. Every single student who's ever walked into the doors of the Urban Arts Foundation has gone on to a higher level of education. And, uh, and this is video game development here. You never know what projects are... are created at urban arts perhaps the next big the next one of the next games to come out of urban arts could be the next big speed run of tomorrow so exclamation point donate in the chat if you'd like to donate to the cause exclamation point ua if you'd like to learn more about the urban arts foundation and like i feel like game design like a lot of kids kind of have a dream of getting into game design but it, it does take a lot of resources to invest like in computers software like the uh, teaching resources etc and there are a lot of kids that just simply don't have access to a lot of those resources or don't realize that, like, they have access in certain uh, respects to their community. And so, like, having a program that specifically caters to underrepresented and marginalized students like Urban Arts is hugely important in some cases. Like, like sometimes these students may only have this opportunity to be exposed to, like, a game design teaching program like this. So uh, organi or organizations like this fulfill, like, a, a huge need within the community. We've got Cheese still singing on camera here. 
just trying to pass the time in the intro whichever way he can. I, I feel like, especially with Cheese, as many different categories as he's run, like, as many times as you've seen the intro, you got to do something to entertain yourself during this 55 seconds. Trying to tune into Cheese's audio here a little bit. I can't tell what, I cannot tell what he is singing. It sounds like uh, Spanish music, and unfortunately, no Abro Espanol bien. So, uh, he is just in his own little world right now. And she's not getting the long jump there for lack of two skip. Just another reset added onto the pile. I, I like to imagine that, that each Mario on each reset is his own individual Mario. And so whenever you have to reset on the intro, that was literally just like a Mario being pulled out of cold storage, thrown out of the pipe, gets to do a couple of jumps, and then, oh, didn't cross the bridge right. Next. One Mario in an endless Mario ocean. Oh, you know what? Actually, I came to find out... Uh... It was the acoustic version of I Won't Give Up by Jason Mraz. Perhaps Cheese trying to uh, drop some poetry here on the stream. And he may be in fourth or fifth place right now, but you know what? He won't give up on runs, even if the sky gets rough. <laughs> hey, there, there was some buildup, but it, it was worth it. it. It was worth it, I gotta say. <laughs> You know, there's actually some good questions there in the chat. Uh, for every reset that occurs, Electric, what do you think happens to that Mario? Are they just a, uh, a Mario that gets sent to their doom, never to be spoken of again, lost in the void of the multiverse, or...? Well, I mean, I, I feel like it's the same as asking, like, what happens to each of us after we die? You know, nobody knows. I mean, it, it's, you know, I, I'm sure the Mario does not want to be sent to the fate of death, but I mean... He shouldn't have been slow. He should have allowed Lakitu skip to go through. Or it's, kind of, it's, it's not blood on our hands. Or I kind of wonder if this is... Uh, I don't know if you ever saw that movie, Edge of Tomorrow, with Tom Cruise and Emily. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> where it's, it, this is indeed the same Mario over and over again. He's just endlessly living until he finds that perfect run. Right, until he just finally gets it all right throughout the day. Come <laughs> <laughs> on. That was, I, that, that's such a weird movie for me because I watched it like in passing on a charter bus, which I feel like given the topic of that movie, like just transient consciousness, like it's, it, it's like the perfect environment to see it in. We're like, I, I always forget about it until someone else brings it up. And I'm like, oh yeah, that weird movie. <laughs> like it halfway doesn't even feel like a real movie for me to have watched either. I don't know. Just passing through on a bus, honestly, it may, it may not even have been real, it just probably blended in with the environment. Right. And here we go, Cheese on LBLJ, Slip and Intro, a bunch of other players in their respective practice runs. A lot of Sky practice. Which, I mean, for, for someone like Tag, I, it certainly kind of makes sense. You know, your future runs, that's certain. Like, now that you've got the 14 milestone down, that's going to be a, a big point of focus, I feel like, is you know, trying to max out stages like Sky that when you're going for a huge milestone PB, like a 14 minute time, you, you want to play it a little safe in some of these late game stages. But once you've got that mental barrier gone, it's like, how low can you go, you know? And I, I feel like we're going to be seeing Tag put some time into ultimate ending in Sky potentially. Yeah, now with the 14 5x cross stop, I think it is time to make that next step. I don't know if he even went for the, uh, which I don't even know what to call it, the Kano long jump, I suppose, in the long jump approach in bits, or if, oh, she's getting Goomba. Oh, the Goomba. That is, for, for people who are not aware, this game does actually have RNG, and the Goombas are part of that RNG. So Goombas have a spawn radius that they can spawn in, but they don't have a specific spawn spot. So anytime you get into Dark World, those two Goombas right on the end, they'll be around there, but their position is never guaranteed. So sometimes they're going to be right in your way. Sometimes they'll be right out of your way. And she's just not really getting lucky this time around. And same thing with like the three Goombas that Slip is approaching right now. Like th their positions are also completely random. And you see one of them just wanted to go ahead and get an autograph from Mario. And so ended up getting a dive to the face instead. And the other two just, they, they know to mind their own business, you know, keep away from Mario. Unfortunately, that other Goomba also just pushed Mario a little bit out of the way and caused him to miss the long jump through the rope. And just un unfortunately not being able to break the laws of physics, and we're going to have to see yet another reset. Yeah. 
And it, it's it's kind of odd because like when you think about it in that way, the Bowser stages are actually some of the most RNG heavy within 16 Star, since the Amps and the Goombas are the, like this is about the only place where they're really going to make a difference. Uh, especially like you look at Fire Sea and like the bullies can be really really in the way for like an ultimate cycle attempt. Oh, all right. It looks like we've got Trey Bordo back uh, to back to starting up runs. So we might see some action out of the Trey Bordo sector. Hoping, hoping he might be able to get an entire. I was gonna say an entire row of 15s, but I suppose with that 14 now from Tech, it's no longer possible. So at least just everybody with a sub 16 time today would be incredible. Yeah, there you go. And as Trey Bordo embarks his Edge of Tomorrow Mario on his first attempt. I kind of like that mental mo model better than an infinite sea of Mario's. Just the, the same one trying his best over and over, but... I mean, we're, we're asking so much of Mario in this run, you know? Like, like everything just has to be pristinely perfect. It, it's no wonder it takes so many attempts. I think I've seen it done for uh, the first Super Mario Bros, where you see how all of the Marios end uh, for every single world record. I'd almost like to see like that infinite stream of Mar of Marios from Dark World onwards, just through every world record run, just to see how it all uh, paid off, just like on the slight differences in movement and whatnot. Right, right. Because, like, with Super Mario Bros, that run where, uh... I, I remember seeing once where someone had gotten, like, all of Andrew G's world record attempts going for, like, some time and, like, put them all over each other. And, like, the Fast Forward app 2, for instance, like, almost every attempt just died right there. But, like, since that run is so well synced, I'd be really curious how this run would kind of go if you did that. Where you'd have, like, especially after Dark World, like, every run would be, like, a second or two out of sync with each other. Yep, the glories of 3D movement. We're able to just alter everything by just ever so much, thanks to the additional axis. And, and then, of course, like, you got to consider with this game, like, minute differences in, like, what frame you press a button on can have drastic differences in, like, what angle you'll end up getting on a jump. Like, Mario doesn't turn instantly in this game, so, like, if you jump dive right in, like, the first frame that you land, you're going to get a different angle than if you jump dive, like, three frames later, just holding the same angle on the stick. And so, like, there are a lot of times where, like, you, you'll do a jump dive or a, a long jump or some other kind of move, and your angle will just be a little bit off, and, like, you'll be able to kind of, you know, strafe Mario into place, but that loses time. You're, you're losing momentum by doing that. And so, like, like, these runners, part of what they're having to do to get these insanely optimized times is to really try to make sure that every single jump is with the perfect angle. They're, they're maintaining the stick position to maintain momentum all the way throughout, and it just so so demanding whenever like mistiming a jump by just ever so slightly gives you just such a wrong result all right and as everybody's here in the beginning of the game we're gonna go ahead and take our uh one of our final if not our final ad break here of day one here today guys so here's a quick word from our sponsors don't go away more mario action coming soon ladies and gentlemen
and welcome back, folks, as we're closing up this last hour of the uh, 16-star live time attack event. I am Electric, paired in the booth with West Dog, and we're seeing a lot of lobby times here, but, I, I mean, after the strong showing we've seen today from so many different runners, tag with the first 14, multiple 15-0-Xs, the cheese flicks are tie, like, I, I don't really feel like being stuck in the lobby for so long at, at the end of the day is, is quite such a bad thing. Uh, do you? Of course not, no. Lobby is so great. Lobby is fun. <laughs> I love lobby. Everybody knows that we all speed run this game because we want to be a part of the lobby. Come Why join the lobby, everybody. In here? Everybody come join the lobby. We have fresh amounts of copium. <laughs> <sighs> fresh copium tanks just by, by the dozen. <laughs> Exclamation point lobby. Just like Paper Mario has that We Love Prologue emote, like, we need a We Love Lobby emote that just shows something about Womps, like... I know we've reached our goal, but I wonder if I can still incentivize, uh, impressions for... for donations. Tootie, let's just come in here with the Lobby's bad! Okay. We got Trey on recent run here, going ahead and uh, getting a nice plus here, here to get things started. And is comparing against his personal best split, so this is still very much a decent event PB pace. Mental Mediocrity, welcome in to the stream. You're watching the 16-star Lifetime Attack Tournament, part of the Speedrun World Record Circuit. You are watching seven of the fastest speedrunners in Mario 64 16-star categories, starring Trey Bordo, Cheese, Slippery Nip, Green Sweegee, Flixer 64, Tag 609, and Ouija. Speaking of Trey, continuing on this nice pacer through SSL here. Nice cheese goes ahead and advances on into Womps. I think this is the first attempt into Womps in a little bit. Had slip without an attempt to get into SSL just a minute ago, but cheese has uh, kind of been suffering through the Dark World resets for a moment now. We got Trey maintaining pace just a few seconds behind his real PB here of a 1510. So if he can keep this pace going, he could potentially see himself all the way up in fourth place even. And meanwhile, let's not forget Green Sweegee looks like he's on the pace for the 27-star world record. He's in Bowser in the Sky right now, just about to cross that 47-minute threshold. I don't think I've ever seen a 27-star time faster than this. As he's getting the ultimate bits moving, let's see if he's going to close this out with some throws. And a beautiful ending there. That, that no, it's a lie. It's a lie! It's a lie. <laughs> that that dive rollout for like that last bit of movement before the pipe entry, like I, I feel like that's just that that's such a power move, like one of the last bits of movement that you do to save just a little bit of extra time puts you precariously close to death there. Because if you don't roll out properly on that banister, like you're just sliding right off and, and just falling straight to the bottom. And so it, it's just such a power move to do that, even though like you know it, it doesn't save that much time. It does make the ending movement a little bit more comfy, but. Like, just at this level, you can't really play safe with anything. I don't think uh, anybody even knows what safe is, and uh, we're getting some very colorful uh, word selection in Jesus Chat. I don't know if you can see that they're electric, but uh, love to see it when the, uh, when, the uh, when the sticks are flying. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, uh, it, it adds color to the screen, and I, I feel like that's all that matters at the end of the day, you know? That's what you meant when you said colorful words, right? Like, I don't think sticks is th that bad of a word. I don't think so either, but, uh, you know, it's rather to be safe than sorry. I've already al I've, I've already almost gotten myself canceled today uh, talking about how old the game was and then chat deciding to talk about how old they were in a joking sense, so I don't want to do anything. I've already, I'm already on thin ice with speedrun. It's frankly a miracle that Milo hasn't already banned me from uh, the commentary booth, so I'm just going to try to keep it as PG as possible. Well, keep it PG with Cheese getting that fly guy was just super, super clean, not even having to do any sort of backup movement there, just really, really pristine. It's 
it's been insane seeing all the different strats he's picked up. Like, as someone that mainly mains longer categories, it's been really crazy seeing him just pick up the hyper-optimized stuff specific to this. Because, like, you would never see Fly Guyless in 120. It just doesn't make sense. But, like, here in this category, if you're wanting a 14, it's kind of necessary. I think we've even uh, slightly seen people trying to adapt it for the 70-star run, but you're right, in a category like 120-star, when you just have way too much run to worry about, oh my goodness, Trey Bordo committing an act of toad violence, potentially. And see, this is where you really gotta wonder if, like, is, is the toad the same toad every time, or is it, like, a different individual toad, just like the Mario could be a new Mario every time? Hmm... And, like, if so, you know, does it really matter if you punch one of an infinite series of toads where, like, the next toad isn't even going to be aware that the previous toad was punched? I did read, uh, something on Reddit, so take it for what you will, but people theorize, what if the reason why we flinch out of nowhere is because something happened to us in an alternate universe? See, that, that just, I, I, I feel like that's just, like, 2016-level Mandela Effect science fiction, like, I... I don't know, that, that's a little too basic for my refined palate at this point. I wasn't so sure, with a name like Electric, it sounded like you might have been short-circuiting there for a second there. Might be a little too much to comprehend. I know it is for me, but I'm, <laughs> I'm just a simple dog. I mean, somewhere in my wardrobe there's a Shazam t-shirt from a movie that allegedly doesn't exist in this timeline, but... Oh, is that the is that the Sinbad movie? Yeah, that, that's that's the Sinbad movie everyone claims was made because they can't remember that Kazam exists. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I, I bought the uh, internet comment etiquette T-shirt with Will Smith as the genie. <laughs> beautiful. Oh my gosh, yeah, we already had uh, we already had Kazam. We don't need any more uh, Zams going on. Wait, oh, Trey oh, Bordo getting punch. getting the punch clip through the door. Let's go. Oh I my! I swear, every time someone gets the door frame punch, they never quite get the. Oh, and still getting the text box even, just hemorrhaging time. But but still, within ten seconds of real PB. So I mean, this is certainly still solid event PB pace. So something very small. Wait, let's see if Trey gets chip clip. Oh yeah, he knew he didn't have a good lineup, so rather than going for it, just is immediately gonna swim. Still losing a couple of seconds, just having to adjust himself. But it could have been worse. But going back to the door clip for a second, there's so that is something that is not RTA viable or frankly practicable. You have to hit. The you have to have the perfect angle with the absolute pi pixel perfect movement in order to make that happen. And I'd say that is incredibly rare electric is there even any way to quantify that like how much like percentage wise of the time do you ever see anybody getting that that door clip? It, see it's the sort of thing that it i i do see it semi-frequently but it, it's something that no runner ever goes for because it, it's really like the, the the problem with it is that the range where mario will punch the door frame and the range where mario grabs mips again barely overlap and so it, it's really a consequence of like runners will try to go for an angle that grabs mips that edges towards punching the door frame and so they'll just sometimes hit the door frame and sometimes they won't because it's like if you think about it if you went any further with your angle natural human inconsistency would then make you sometimes punch out the door and then sometimes not punch out the door and so it's just kind of like since it saves so little time and it risks like losing the entire run if you punch out the door it just kind of makes sense in most runners opinion to just go ahead and mainly just go for the mips grab but just go for it so far to the right that the door frame punch will just kind of sometimes happen on its own so it, if i had to estimate like probably one of those like 10 to 20 percent things like i i feel like certain runners like slip i see it a little more often from but i, I as far as i'm aware no one like actually goes for it goes for it just because like well, with all the other myriad ways you can lose your run after getting 15 stars that's not in for when you want to add to the pile for like half a second of time save I do know Slip definitely goes for it if possible, because that was, uh, I believe, one of the bigger con contributors to his uh, 1456 world record was after losing about five or six seconds in Hazy Maze Cave, he got the, the door punch clip and was able to gold his MIPS slash DDD split, so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's just one of the rare things, but when it happens, it's definitely something to... Uh, celebrate as we're potentially celebrating trey bordo getting on an event pv pace here going upstairs let's let's see if he gets these blj's and meanwhile we got she's on an all right pacer here uh, grabbing this with a dive here 
Yeah, I wonder if Cheese is going to be able to break free of the Flixer time, perhaps uh, solely put himself in fourth place. Come on, Trey. Come on, Trey. Yes! Fourth try catch. Speed's getting through the door. He's going to bleed a little bit of time there, but 15 definitely still on the table. Just a 15 for Trey is all we need. And a third try catch there with the ledge grab cancel. That's a beautiful bit entry. Let's go ahead and see what Trey pulls out. I think Trey was... Okay, Trey's not going to be going for pass long run this time. Nah, this close to the end of the event. Oh wow, yeah, we've only got 17 minutes left, so we're coming up on the uh, we're coming up on the time frame now, where runners are probably going to have time for only one, maybe two more top quality runs. As Trey just can't get the skip over the ramp there. Yeah, he had like one frame for the speed kick on that oh. attempt, and yet again just cannot make himself take the, the little bit of extra time to do the single jump instead. There we go, the speed kick clearing that time. Now, that's really like kind of the consequence there is like a speed kick is a lot harder to do than a single jump but you can do it a little bit faster from landing and so if you want to maintain a lot of speed into that triple jump up the slope it, it, you do kind of have to use that speed kick there but as you can see with trey there like it, it just it's such a tight little maneuver there that sometimes it just doesn't want to come out Right, which is three throws here from Trey. Might be able to clutch out the final 15 of any of the runners here. She's oh, now... Miss Angle re -grab. Now, Electric, I know you're big into uh, camera angles in uh, the fire seat section. She's electing to go for side cam there instead of... Oh, Trey missing the throw. I think that's There's the... an off angle, me. unfortunately. What do you think about she's using the side angle there as opposed to uh, going in for uh, front cam? See, for, for line production, I, I can support it. It's just, in my opinion, the depth perception for side cam just makes it way much more of a hassle than it's really worth. I, I'm personally a backwards cam person, but, uh, like, I, I can understand side cam. If you put the practice in on it, you can get it kind of consistent, but I like with backwards cam that you have just a, a better sense of, like, where Mario's actually going to land on the rail. All right, well, Trey Bordo does clock in a new event PB with a 1605.3. Unfortunately... Not improving his position on the leaderboard, but at least improving his time. So that's what you like to see here. Baby steps, guys. Just remember, the tr sometimes the journey of a thousand steps begins with it. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Exactly right. I mean, Tag showing us that first hand throughout both Double Down and this event. Like, Tag got so, so many paces that were 14 capable in both of these events. And yet, like, you know, it just, like, like you said, you have to just keep taking the baby steps there. And like, at, at this event, even like going ahead and getting like a 1505 and then having that, that next run that was 14 pace all the way into Sky. And then finally, like this, this run just pulling out the 14, like, um, you know, with all of these runners, really watching them do so many attempts for this long you can actually start to see the little bits of incremental improvement and it's just so so hype to see as we got cheese I'm, i don't think an event pb is quite on the table anymore but still a pretty decent finish for this one. we'll have to wait and see if cheese is able to clutch this one out oh, oh no. that's gonna be it all right. Well, we are coming up into the final 15 minutes, so we are uh, we are basically reaching the final countdown. These runners are able to are only able to get off one, maybe two good quality runs. So let's see if they're able to come together and give us one final dazzler of performance. We got train, dark world, slip, and take a quick reset, and then she's also just putting there. I mean, anything can certainly happen. The 16 star, like, you never really know when the run is going to come. Like, sometimes if you're Suiji and you've practiced for three hours already, you'll just get a 1501 just right off the bat. But a lot of the time, you're just deep in a session of attempts. And it, it's kind of, I, I really think part of what leads to some really good runs is once you get deep enough into a session, right? Like, like you just kind of start to, your mind wanders. Like, you've done so many attempts that you start letting the muscle memory just kind of take over. And, like, that's when you just, you know, really start seeing these runners get deep into the run and it's almost like they just kind of don't even realize the pace that they're on just because they're in the mode of just playing the game and like their mind is kind of elsewhere the same way like if you took a night drive or something and you're not really focused on driving at a point like you're just kind of your mind is thinking about something else 
Yeah, imagine if instead of driving, you were playing one of the most precise platforming games known to man. Man, I wish getting a 15 in this game was as simple as uh, putting your mind on autopilot for a nighttime drive. That sounds amazing oh, right about now. It, it, there'd be so many 14s, like, geez. We got trailed a pretty good Dark World's time here. I mean, pulling a 251 moving into Womps. Uh, slip, unfortunately, not able to connect on lobby. Backwards long jump. Wait, oh, I thought he was going to go into BOB. He might just be running around the lobby doing some uh, parkour. Maybe trying to see if he uh, can reenact. Nope. I know Slip the other day found out there was a little uh, pocket on the ceiling there where if you jump Mario with the right angle, Mario just gets suspended completely in midair. Oh, there, there's so many of those little spots with, with the bonks that just... I, I know there's like another one on one of those poles right next to the main doorway where like, like if you bonk just right and just... <laughs> continuously. Like just bonking back and forth. There's nothing you can do about it due to the like bonk animation. Trey Board unfortunately not connecting on Candlest. Tried to go for the backup, not able to connect. So now, ah, yes, three runs in the final, in the, not final, in the first minute of the game. Love to see it. What's your favorite thing about the uh, lobby or the courtyard here, Electric? Um, I, I definitely think the star statue, uh, it's always been like a pretty cool feature to me. Like, both because like any, anything you try to do platforming on it, like since it's just so many angled slopes, it, it, Mario just slides right off in really wild ways. But just, just the Boo Courtyard is really cool in general. Like I, something about that, it's kind of a liminal space, you know, like it's quaint. Like even though it's full of ghosts, like, I feel like I'd want to just, you know, pull up with a, a, a cup of tea and read a book or something. I'm uh, I'm lost in the category extension sauce, and I've just come to appreciate the amount of trees we have here in the front yard. Mario always guaranteed to get that breath of fresh air before going into the absolute uh, muckiness that is the castle, especially Bowser in the Dark World. So, just as we see cheese now uh, swerving around with lack of two camp. Ah, yes, guys, look at all the trees. What a scenic view here. Like, like, imagine, like, it's such a simple intro now, but, like, imagine what this would have been like for a kid to boot up back in 1996, like, and it, you just get these big sweeping views of the courtyard, like, like, it's, it's, it's effective for what it is. And I, I also gotta sit here and wonder, so, like, I, I'm no expert in 90s history, right, but, like, apparently the, the Michael Jackson halftime Super Bowl show was like really famous and whenever you go and watch it the very beginning of it is Michael Jackson popping out of like a hole in the arena and I don't know which predated which but I swear one of like the intro to this game with Mario hopping out of the pipe or that intro to that halftime show like one of those has to have influenced the other idea wise so, just cause uh, like you look at the two side by side and they're just a little bit too similar to think that they just happened independently I know that Super Bowl occurred in 1993 it was a couple of years after his album uh after his album Black or White dropped and it reached made it reach chart so I gotta wonder maybe perhaps Nintendo took a page out of uh the book of Michael Jackson Right? Like, like they, they, they just saw, like, how cool it looked for someone to just pop out of nothing, pretty much. And they were just like, you know what, that, that's a good intro to our game. Although I wish they, uh, maybe it wouldn't be fun for speedrunning purposes, but Michael Jackson, after he popped out of the hole in the ground, he stood there, uh, <laughs> like a minute for, straight. Yeah, just like, completely The biggest power the move possible, like, you just do nothing with the biggest stage in entertainment. Mm -hmm. Just let everybody know who you are, and yep, this is me. If only Mario could stick around there for a little bit, but nope, we've got to get those 14s. Yeah, you got to get moving, just instantly. We can't even wait for the text boxes. That, that's probably the saddest reset. If you end up, like, misscrolling the text boxes and you got to go ahead and reset, like... Hmm. I don't think I've ever personally experienced a misscrolling reset before. Oh, uh... Yeah, it looks like, speaking of resets, just slip and cheese have reset, but Trey Bordo is in Womp's Fortress. And we do have Assault come out from our Trey here, so we'll be continuing on with this run. Alright, we're coming down to the final seven to eight minutes now. 
Uh, definitely, I definitely don't want to get attached there. It's 16 star. No one should ever get attached until Bowser hits that bomb, the third bomb in Bowser in the Sky. Unfortunately, uh, I'm just looking for, uh, just looking to see if Trey Border might be able to pull out one clutch sub-16 here. Yeah, and I, I feel like that there's some decent potential for it, especially, like, he, he's getting some runs through the, the early game slog, and that that's... That's the first obstacle, you know. It's the first step you gotta take in the, the journey, thousand miles. It passed lack to intro. I'm attached. It's like getting attached to a six, to a 120 star run in JRB or something. Oh my God! He just hit frame wall cannonless. Or yeah. Or it's like getting it attached to a 136 Mario. incoming. Or is getting attached to an SMB1 run the moment you start hearing the intro music. Right. <laughs> or like getting attached to a zero star run the moment you hit a DDD skip. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I think it was uh, Alaris that said like, there's nothing more satisfying or, or like nothing more cathartic than seeing runners just completely lose their ability to play the game once they hit DDD skip. Like, you just get so nervous in Fire Sea that, like, you just can't play right anymore. Uh, part, probably was some of the reason I honestly fear ever wanting to go near the, uh, zero star categories, because when that time inevitably comes, you get SBLJ first or second to try, then all of a sudden you forget how to completely swim or go through Fire Sea. Right, and like I, I proudly had the worst one star run until someone purposely beat it. But I, I was trying, all the way up until it took me like three hours to hit SBLJ. But I, I after that run, I, I vowed never to touch that category again, and I, I've held to it. I, I've, I've never tried running it again. Four hours and fourteen minutes or something. I don't remember where. Right. I do know a uh, small ant uh, ended up making a video out of it. I think it took him four or five hours to hit SBLJ. So, yep, he went out of his way to uh, unboff you. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's a sort of trick. Like I have mad respect for people that run that category because it, it's it's another level of hyper optimized compared to this. But like, it's just it, it, it's too much for me personally. Like I, I'd like to see more of the game than just do dark old no reds over and over personally. All right, and Trey Bordo, unfortunately, having a little bit of struggles with Pillarless there in SSL, but is still keeping the run going for now. Bold decision. We do only have five minutes left here now before runs are over. Just in case this hasn't been made uh, clear yet, guys, in the live time attack format, runners are given an allotted amount of time to get runs going, and once the clock is done, the final run before the end of regulation is the final run, and whoever gets the, I guess just your best time then is your best, your best time of the day will be your best time of the day. Trey Bordo here, still continuing this run, we'll have to wait and see where this comes. Or yeah, goes. and meanwhile, Slip going ahead and resetting, had a nice 243 Dark World, but Salt Plus just not cooperating. I guess while we are waiting for some time to kill here in uh, Lethal Lava Land, Electric, I don't know if you heard, I became aware today apparently that Liam signed off his stream a few nights ago saying that it was going to be his last stream and that we will never see him again. Uh, everybody have a good, fun rest of your lives. And I think some people might be partially taking that serious just because we know Liam has the ability to vanish off the face of the earth and... Uh, like a ghost. So, what do you think? Is Liam actually done, or is he just uh, toying with everybody's heartstrings there? Well, I don't know, but I, I mean, whenever he pulled out his cartridge on camera and like took a sledgehammer to it and said, "I never want to touch this stupid thing again for the rest of my life," and then proceeded to throw his console and controller out a window, I mean, it, it did oh feel God. a little bit personal. But I, I also felt like it might have just been a bit of a joke, you know. But like, like, like he, it might have just been a bit, like, like it was a fake console or something. I, I'm not exactly sure. But then when he also said that, like, I, I regret all the time I've spent running this game. I mean, it, it did feel a little genuine, but it, 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 it's just jokes. That's just a sense of humor, you know? Very unique sense of humor, I will say that much. 
All right. You got cheese. Cheese. Yet another fly guy list. Just perfect consistency at fly guy list here. Like two for two with these attempts that we've been seeing here. Mm -hmm. Why would a commentator ever lie about something that a Mario runner did? Commentators are never wrong about anything, especially not on purpose. Commentators never lie. When's a commentator ever been known to lie or spread misinformation? Couldn't be me. <laughs> yeah, I've never said anything incorrect on the mic, ever. His nose grew 17 feet that day. <laughs> Of course, this commentator is surely never uh, mistakenly called the Bob bomb the bomb bomb I Something feel like that, that's one there. of the more forgivable mistakes. Oh no, apparently I got trolled hard every time because I just wasn't being corrected, so chat had a field day. I, I, I do feel like bomb bomb like kind of... I, I, something about that just doesn't quite sit right with me, like I, I, I prefer just saying bomb bomb I mean, that's even more accurate because, of, uh, of course, uh, we all know Bowser said that in the infamous Super Mario Brothers movie. That, that, that is true. That, that, that is true. Trey Bordo, 14 stars in HMC here. Gonna be a few seconds behind, but the sub-16 is still alive. As Cheese not connecting on side hop, uh, going for... The jump dive, that is a, yeah, oh, I don't yeah, know that what is a angle. All right, we got two minutes left. Two minutes left, so it's looking like this is... Well, the timer's not going, so is Cheese potentially done for the day? Nope, all right. Yep, we're in the final minute now. 60 seconds left on the clock. This is likely the last run attempt here for Cheese, because by the time we reach the end of regulation, he'll be getting into the castle. Narrowly missing that amp in Dark World. The Amp's also uh, one of the many enemies on an RNG cycle here. A slip going for Salt Flip on the last run here. All right. Ooh, ooh breaking out all the strats possible. And double firsties to boot. I, I just still can't believe we're in the era where people reset to not getting double firsties now. Like, that, that, to, to just not getting two frame perfect wall kicks. Like,. Gee, and I mean, I, the speed increase is pretty substantial. Like, you do actually manage to save, like, a second and a half with it or something pretty tight, but it, it still is just, like, to complete all this difficult movement to get Suki Cycle, and then just, nope, I, I don't want the run because it didn't have that small time save. Like, that, that's just another level of the hyper-optimal. All right, and at the final moment possible, Trey Bordo electing to get out of that run and go for the final reset. This is it, folks. We've now reached the top of the hour. No more resets. It looks like Cheese, Trey, and Slip will be our final three runners closing it out for the day. Slip got the farthest run so far going into Womp's Fortress. Cheese, unfortunately, at a moment's notice, just loses the run to a faulty LBLJ ledge grabbing the pillar. So, GG's to Cheese. We'll have to wait and see on the retime who takes the lead for fourth or fifth place. I don't know uh, what would happen there. And Trey Bordo just getting the door. Yeah, and we'll see as Slip enters Cannonless here. This run is going to be continuing, or if we're going to beat... Oh, this is... That's going to be it for the night for Slip as well. And with that, Trey Bordo is going to be the last one standing. All right, it all comes down to Trey. I'm trying to figure out how to turn this into an uh, NBA basketball-like joke, because you were always looking for that final Trey at the buzzer beater to uh, come in the clutch and help your team win the game. Oh, oh, no, oh no, and that's gonna oh. be it for Trey too. That's such a costly mistake. That's 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 gonna be it for the resets today. All right. Wow, that has got to be the quickest finish to overtime I think I've seen in one of these events so far. Unfor how unfortunate. It, it is what it is, unfortunately. But we did at least have that that full hour of overtime thanks to your donations. Thank you so much for raising seven hundred and fifty dollars for Urban Arts today. Like, such an amazing organization to benefit and such an amazing turnout of donations to uh, help benefit them. And so thank you so much. We had so many Pacers today, like tag with the first 14 ever from him. Like that that's such an impressive milestone. I'm sure he's going to be sleeping well tonight. 
knowing that he's got that under his belt. And Green Sweegee and Slippery Knit, both with a 15 x Of course, can't forget Flixer and Cheese with that tie. And then Ouija waiting in the wings with a 1537 right now. But we know tomorrow we're going to be seeing some just ludicrously low pacers from him. And hopefully we'll be seeing that one uh, improve pretty substantially. And then, of course, Trey Bordeaux having that late start with a 1605 for now. Yeah, I remember somebody in the chat earlier today saying something uh, for in regards to Green Sweegee. His first run out of practice, getting the 1501, saying, imagine doing just one, one run and winning the whole tournament. Well, thankfully, we had the magic of the Tag 609 PB to not only take the lead in the event, but to become yet the newest member of the 14 club. So Gigi's to, ta to Tag quite says today's MVP. Folks, we have... This is only day one of two here on twitch.tv slash speedrun. Be back tomorrow at the same time. We're starting at 1 o'clock Eastern time for a guaranteed seven hours of lifetime attack speedrunning. Uh, if we do reach a donation goal tomorrow, we will extend for yet another hour. So I know uh, we've got one more day full of action. I can't wait to see what's coming up here. We can only... Uh, dream of the hype together so uh on that note electric you got any closing words before we head out um not much for me uh other than it's been a pleasure to co-commentate with everyone today yourself included wes and um thank you so much chat and um peace out we'll see you all tomorrow yep for all of us here at speed run have a good rest of your night guys